There are two types of hotels, five-star hotels and non-five-star hotels. All others are third-rate. The kitchen at the Joria Hotel, which is ranked 100th among hotels in the country, is hard at work. The assistant cook, Kang Sun Ong, wearily exhales as he slices vegetables. A chef standing nearby asks our protagonist to go to a cooking seminar in his place and mark him as absent. A disgruntled Sunan asks why him again, to which the interlocutor wonders if he thinks that they, the Khans, should go there. He adds that since Sun Hong is the youngest, he should go. Our protagonist laughs feignedly, agreeing with the older man, while at the same time thinking that he's been joining the hotel for four years, but can't believe he's still being treated as a junior. One of the cooks asks Sun Hun if he has cleaned the garbage can, and when he gets a negative answer, he resents that he should have done it first. The trash can, officially called the grease trap, it's the tank that holds the oil. Sun Hun can barely begin to carry the dumpster. Suddenly he sees the chef, Du Kinsok, yelling at one of the workers that everything is burnt because he was looking after it. And still in a raised tone, he asks not to make such elementary mistakes. The chef apologizes, and Sun Hoon thinks it's captain, a total of 17 chefs work in the kitchen. Du Kinsok is the responsible head chef. Our protagonist has it in his mind that Jin Sok is always angry when he looks at how his younger ones are cooking, but he always says the right things so he can be understood. Jin Sok suddenly looks sharply at Sun Hong, and he quickly continues his task. Once again immersed in discouraging thoughts, our assistant asks himself if the day will surely come when he will be recognized by the captain. Our hero's thoughts are taken out of his mind by the janitor, who shouts how he can bring a trash can here. Sun Hong is awkwardly surprised, to which the cleaner explains that she has just thrown everything away. The assistant apologizes to his aunt, explaining that Hyung told him to throw everything away. So, the aunt sighs sympathetically, asking how long they will treat our hero as a junior, whether they are going to hire new cooks. Still somewhat awkwardly, Sun Moon replies that the Hangs have to resign first, because he's still a cook at the moment. The cleaning lady asks if he's a cook, to which Sun Hoon corrects himself by saying that he's an assistant cook. He goes on to add that he used to be just a dishwasher, so he's better now after all. The aunt says that he needs to get up faster, and tells him to leave that trash can and go away. The assistant doubts whether everything will be all right, but the janitor assures him that she will be here later anyway so he can go to his job. Sun Hong, already in his business suit, adjusts his tie and looks at the time of the seminar on his phone, suddenly realizing with horror that he is going to be late. He runs to the office as fast as he can. He flies into the seminar room and, out of breath, is glad to have finally arrived. Still reeling from his long run, he looks around the hall, seeing that all the seats are taken. He looks at the table with the form and thinks there's not much he can do, but it's worth registering first. Another young man in a suit enters the hall, surprised to see our hero. He asks Kang Soon Hong admiringly if it's him. Soon Hun turns around amazed, recognizing Go Jongte and the guy and saying what a coincidence it is. Chante agrees that it's been a long time. Going back in time, you can see that Go Jongte is Sun Hong's fellow cook who won first place in the Soldier Chef Mass Feeding Contest. They live in the same room for eight weeks, so they know each other well. They even had a debate about mass feeding. Already in the present tense, Sun Hong thinks that Lieutenant Kim chan -hee, commander of the Transportation Support Battalion, has always stopped him from trying something, although our hero could have made something better. But since it is a mass-produced meal, the dish should be easy to make and also cheap. Sun Hoon lets go of bad thoughts. He is glad that his comrade also became a chef. Chante confirms that he has indeed become a chef at the Hilton Hotel. Sun Hong again admires Go chong for becoming a chef and says he's good. Chante waves off that it's no big deal and wonders where Sun Hun is working now. Confused, our hero replies that he works at a small hotel called the Jolria. Chante does not know this hotel, so he wonders if it is some kind of foreign hotel. Sun Hung denies it and says the CEO is Korean, who runs a medium-sized convenience store and other things. Chante sincerely suggests that he just leave because there's nothing to learn. He asks what rank Sun Hun has there. In response, he hears that our protagonist is still on probation. Then Zhang Tae again asks why Sun Hoon hasn't contacted him and offers his business card for him to call sometime. He says he knows a lot of Hyungs and it would be easier for Sun Hoon if he introduced him to them. A disgruntled Sun Hun accepts the card, thanking him for it. Zhang Tae offers to go into the hall, to which Sun Hun is surprised because there are no more seats. The guy replies that it's okay, the head chefs couldn't make it today 
so there must be seats available. They see empty chairs, and Chante decides they can sit in them. In any case, he is the only one present at the seminar today. He also asks Sun Hoon if he will just check in and go home. Soon Hun chuckles awkwardly. A voice behind the stage conducts a microphone test, and then informs everyone taking part in the seminar that it starts in five minutes, and those who choose to visit the restroom should be back by that time. Sun Hoon warns Chante that he will go to the restroom, to which he replies that they will see each other again. Sun Hoon is washing his hands in the restroom when he notices a man in the reflection of the mirror, who says angrily and mockingly that he and Kang Sun Hoon haven't seen each other in a long time. Sun Hoon looks at the man through the mirror in horror. Chapter 2 Sun Hoon is washing her hands in the restroom when she notices a man in the reflection of the mirror, who says angrily and mockingly that she and Kang Sun Hoon haven't seen each other in a long time. Our hero looks at the man through the mirror in horror. Sun Hoon recalls that this aggressive man's name is Jong Il Woo. A flashback eight years ago shows the kitchen of the Mutant Hotel, where our protagonist works. Two angry male chefs discuss him, saying he was brought in by Ji Avi. One of the men, Jung Il Woo, who is also a sniper, offers Sun Bae to train our hero, not boding well. Sun Bae asks if it's worth it, since Il Woo is about to leave for duty. But he replies that this is exactly why Sun Hoon should be trained properly. Sun Bae says that if he gets caught, it will be bad. But Il Woo doesn't listen telling Chief Kang not to worry, as he'll have everything ready before he leaves. It is deep into the night. Our hero has peeled a huge mountain of onions and asks what he should do now. Ilwu menacingly asks if he hasn't heard and says he needs to chop all the onions before tomorrow's breakfast. Sun Han wonders if he has to do it alone. Ilwu only asks if he needs to repeat the task. Sun Hong awkwardly looks after the cook. In the morning in the same kitchen, Sun Hong punches Il Wu in the chest with all his might, indignantly asking what he told him to do. Our hero, falling to his knees, bends in pain and exhales painfully. Chief Kang smirks, watching what is happening. Il Wu continues to angrily yell that he said to chop everything up for breakfast, and doesn't understand why there's still so much left. Already on his feet, Sun Hong just as angrily says that he should not do all this alone, because at least four people are doing this. Ilwu takes Sun Hong by the collar of his work uniform and aggressively wonders if he and the chief should have helped him. Our hero is again stabbed in the chest, this time with his foot, to the cry that he could have stayed and made it through the night. Chef Kang says with a wicked smirk to make things right, because just because Sun Hong got into the kitchen through connections doesn't mean he knows everything. Sun Hun shrieks indignantly, asking what exactly he is doing wrong. Ilwu continues to kick our hero with all this fury. It was then that our character began to have difficulties. He was punished for every little mistake, and gradually the punishments became more and more pointless. After three months of bullying, Sun Hong lost his enthusiasm and resigned from the Mutin Hotel, promising himself to forget about his career as chief, which lasted until his father died. Returning from memory to the present, you can see that nothing has changed. Il Wu, creating an increasingly gloomy aura around himself, asks why Sun Hong has so much acrimony in his gaze, whether he, an arrogant prick, is still pretending to be the chief. Sun Hong silently continues to sizzle his interlocutor with his gaze. Continuing to mock, Il Wu asks if Sun Hong works at some third-rate hotel and says he's sure he doesn't even recognize it by its name. A humiliated Sun Hun bites his lip furiously as Chante appears in the restroom doorway, saying enough is enough. Il Wu freezes in surprise, then turns aggressively toward the voice. Zhang Ti asks how things are going at the Miodong Hotel, to which Il Wu keeps quiet, smirks maliciously, and then walks away, hurting Zhang Ti for which he fake apologizes. Zhang Ti looks at Il Wu and then anxiously approaches Stun Hoon, asking if he's okay. The seminar was coming to an end and our hero didn't show up, so Zhang Ti got worried and came over. Embarrassed, Sun Hun says it's okay, and when asked to it is he waves off that it's no big deal, it's nothing. Our characters return to the seminar and already seated in their seats, begin to listen to the announcer, who thanks them for their time and invites them to move on to the main topic. The main theme of the seminar is that the Michael and Guide began to be published in Korea. The host pronounces that he is sorry to hear that this has happened. But Korea will be influenced by a foreign culinary magazine rather than his own, due to the fact that hotels will now be evaluated based on the Korean food they offer. Chante rhetorically asks what kind of evaluation we're talking about and says he thought they were just going to introduce some new rule, and that's it. Sumant doesn't answer, 
Horrified, Chante turns to Sunhoon, saying that it doesn't look like they're joking. Our hero agrees and assumes that all the chiefs will start going crazy. The main character begins to have thoughts that the travel promotion agency has already evaluated the hotel where he works, and now it means that even the cuisine will be evaluated. The announcer continues his speech, explaining that in order to avoid doubts about the fairness of the system, the process will be broadcast on the KBC channel, as well as the results. There is an even more oppressive atmosphere around the already gloomy Sunan, because he realizes that if the hotel's kitchens are evaluated on television, it means an unspoken cooking competition. Toward the end of the seminar, when everyone has dispersed, Chante reads a booklet stating that only the top 20 will be included, and that the rest will not be included, and that participating chefs must have at least 10 years of experience. Afterwards, already thinking out loud, he reflects on the fact that only judges he knows will be ranked, and that although he has only been chief for eight years, he has more experience, so he counts. And turning his attention back to his companion, he asks if Sunhan is going to participate. Our hero is surprised by the question, pondering that he can't take part, because no one would let an assistant chef participate in the competition. Chante is genuinely upset, because he thought they would cook together again. At the exit of the building, our heroes say goodbye until the next meeting, as Chante has to report everything to the chief. Still happy to meet his old friend, Sun Han walks down the corridor and suddenly remembers something. He starts making phone calls, but no one picks up. Then he wonders if the person he is calling is busy. A few minutes later, the cook in the kitchen where he works picks up the phone and immediately starts shouting, asking where Sun Hong has been and why he only called now. Sun Hong excuses himself that the seminar has just ended, but the cook does not listen to him, saying that so many Chinese tourists have arrived that they are almost rioting. Without interrupting the roasting of vegetables, he says in an aggressive tone that some ingredients are missing and asks to go to a merchant. Sun Hun awkwardly resents why not order delivery and why he should go himself, to which he receives the answer that the ingredients are his responsibility. Accepting, Sun Hong agrees with a sigh and says he will soon. The head chef asks the chef, with whom there was a phone conversation, what the younger one said, to which he receives the answer that Sun Hong is on his way back and that he will buy the ingredients on the way. The head chief agrees that it's a good job, but thinks that Sun Hong must have already found out about the KVS program. With a cheeky grin, the chief repeats the name of our hero to himself once more. Chapter 3 The Kitchen continues its work day under the supervision of the head chef. He yells at the workers, saying they are losing speed. Zhou Zhongmin, the line cook who communicated with Sun Han on the phone, is indignant, not stopping to work of a sweat, that if Junior had returned early from the seminar, the cooks would not have been so busy. With an angry but nevertheless awkward look on his face, Zhongmin turns to the head chef. The chef responds and is asked why he entrusts Samong to buy the ingredients, as he did it himself before he came. Chief Du Jinsuk sternly asks if Zhang Man really still doesn't know the reason, to which he receives an awkward no, and he sighs wearily, saying that he's far from it yet. Far from it, he repeats, turning and walking away, leaving Zhang Man bewildered. There are three bright pink fish on the board. Jinsuk, for some unknown reason, looks at them thoughtfully, which is what the chief de party, Ohemin, asked him about. The head chef responds by asking what Hemin thinks it is, a wild fish or a farm-raised one. Not understanding why he is being asked this, the chef de party replies that it looks like a wild fish because it has a bright pink hue and blue diamonds in its bow. Also, it is over 50 centimeters and maintains its color. With a condescending sigh, Jinsok explains that this is a common method of evaluation, but experts classify fish in a different way. He asks for attention to the fish's nostril which is divided into two parts, and pronounces that it shouldn't be that way. Hemin agrees and learns from the head chief that Kang Sunhun brought them all in separately, which really, in a good way, surprises him. Jin Sook joyfully exclaims, mentally referring to Sunhun, that this is a big catch. At this time, our main character is already in the Garrick market. He approaches one of the saleswomen, whom he calls his aunt, saying that he has come. His aunt genuinely wonders what he is doing in the market at this hour. Sun Hong smiles with the phrase that he has come to see her, and also finds out if the goods for tomorrow have arrived. The saleswoman agrees and points to two boxes of apples, Chumju apples and Sanju apples. Sun Hun still keeps the smile on his face and asks his aunt to wait a minute, then touches the apple. The apple, along with the hand holding it, is covered with a blue fringe of light. 
Soonan finds himself in a vision of an apple tree standing in the pouring rain. Our hero speaks to the saleswoman, saying that the apples don't seem to have enough sugar. The aunt, a little perturbed by this statement, asks what he's talking about, because these are Chungju apples, the most delicious apples in Korea. Now with a touch of embarrassment, Sunong explains that this is not the case, but that if you touch the apple, you can feel that it has rained hard. He offers the woman a taste of the apple if she doesn't believe him. She doesn't understand anything, because in all her long work in this business, she has never seen anything like this. She peels and slices an apple, tasting it, suddenly coming to her horror. Sunhom clarifies if he is right. The woman confirms it, saying that yesterday's were good. Our hero says that apparently they were from a different batch, and offers to return these apples, for they are more suitable for juice, joking that if she sells them to the chiefs, she will be cursed. Auntie begins to wail that it is really necessary to return them as soon as possible, and thanks Sunhan, if it were not for him. She would have been in trouble. However, she wonders how he knew about the rains just by touching an apple. Sunhan chuckles and replies that he knows one method, translating the subject and saying that the other apples are okay. He also asks that three of their boxes be sent to the hotel. Our hero looks at his phone to see what he needs to buy next on his list. He goes to Mansu's fish shop, addressing Mansu Hyung from the threshold. Mansu, a grown man with stubble, asks what Sun Hong is doing here at this hour. Our assistant chef chuckles again and asks if many were sold today. Mansu answers affirmatively, explaining that Sun Hong usually comes in the mornings. The guy looks at a couple of red and orange crabs and realizes that today the assortment is pretty scarce. He asks if all the blue crabs are sold out, because that's what he needs to buy. The man asks to wait, and then calls someone on the phone. Satisfied as the dialogue ends, he turns to the young man and tells him to stop by the store nearby, because they have the morning catch in stock. Soon-hun thankfully makes a bow and verbally thanks Young. At a nearby shop, Soon-hun sees the crabs he already wants and asks if they were really caught in the morning. He is told that the crabs were still in the sea in the morning. Sun Hong touches the seafood. There is a crab on the sandy bottom. A net is thrown on it, after taking it out to the ship. All crabs are stacked in large yellow containers and delivered to the shore, after falling into the hands of a satisfied vendor. The blue-blue glow of Sun Hong grins, confirming that the crabs are indeed fresh. The smiling salesman pronounces that they do not cheat customers. Sun Hun takes his business card for the future and asks him to deliver the seafood to the Jewelria Hotel. Our hero leaves the market only when the sun is already setting over the horizon. His phone starts vibrating almost immediately. Sun Hoon stares at the phone screen in horror. A message from Seoul Hospital reminds him of a debt of 23,235,451. The guy exhales with a ruined mood. Chapter 4 Sun Hun returns to the hotel and changes into a special chef's uniform. As he enters the kitchen, he sees that everyone is working in the sweat of their brow. Suddenly, Jaman notices our hero and immediately turns around completely, aggressively shouting that if Sun Hong has finished changing, then let him hurry up and go help. Our assistant cook doesn't mind, and the turmoil begins. Sun Hong is called to bring sausages or boiled ducks, or to replace the gas cylinder or something else. Our hero does everything quickly and unquestioningly. Jaman looks sneeringly after our assistant. He is immediately punished by another chef who asks why Jongmin's hands have stopped, because we have to hurry up. Jo Jongmin immediately continues his work. Night is falling outside, which means the kitchen can wrap up the day's work and clean up. Sun Hong exhales tiredly, because at last he can take a break. But he doesn't get much rest anyway. One of the kitchen staff calls out to him, suggesting that he clean up. Several of the cooks are standing in washing dishes. Among them is Jongmin, who looks back at everyone unhappily. He also thinks at this point about when things turned into this, because when he was younger, he was in charge of cleaning and washing the dishes himself. Jongmin calls Sun Hong lucky, and is jealous that it happened right after he was no longer junior. He also thinks it is wrong for the older ones to help the younger one clean up. Dispersing Jongmin's thoughts, another kitchen worker approaches, holding a stack of plates, and asks why he hasn't wiped them down yet. Jongmin realizes he's wrong again, and says he'll do it now. Finally, the kitchen begins to shine with cleanliness and order. Soon is arranging the plates in their places when he is called again. It turns out to be Jongmin, who, as usual, is aggressive toward our hero. He says that he just asked to go to the seminar and check in for him, and he doesn't understand why Sun Hong sat through the whole thing, 
causing him to return to work so late and causing trouble for everyone because of the overload. The assistant cook apologizes, but that doesn't interrupt Zhou Zhongman's tirade, who is still screaming about how the seniors should help him clean, just because Kang Songun can't do his own chores, because when Zhongman himself was a junior he had to stay up until 12 at night and clean by himself. The cook speaks so loudly that the head chef notices his indignation. He stands behind Zhongman waiting to see what else he has to say, for so far his words are already enough to make Jin Sok angry and indignant. The chef doesn't make him wait long, pronouncing that if Sun Hong is a junior, he should at least do the cleaning, and if Jongmin himself had behaved like this in his time, the seniors would have been. Soon Hun, unbending from his apologetic posture, interrupts Sun Ba, for which he immediately apologizes and asks to speak more softly. The cook becomes enraged, asking again what he said. He calls our hero a jerk and swings for a punch. The chef's hand is intercepted, something Jongmin himself clearly did not expect. He turns around stunned to see the head chef. Jin Suk starts yelling at the cook himself, asking if he knows what he's doing. He asks if Jongmin was taught that. He bows ashamedly to the chief, denying it. The chief chief asks why he then tried to hit Sun Gun. The cook begins to make excuses that Sun Hong is four years younger, and that he was just trying to teach him because he was sluggish and numb at work. Jin Suk continues to stare at Jongmin in displeasure and anger. Suddenly Sun Hong interrupts their dialogue and says that it is really his fault, because if he had worked faster, then the elders would not have been so busy today, and the cleaning would have been finished much earlier. He repeats that it was his fault and apologizes to the chief. Zhang Min still cautiously, but already with a slightly jubilant look, looks at the chef, who is not the least bit pleased that the younger one is covering for the cook. Seeing this, Zhang Min gives in to our hero, saying that this is true. After coming to terms with the scene, Jin Sook exhales, uttering that he understands. But after a couple of seconds, he does reprimand Jongmin, saying that even though he is older than Sun Hong, it is forbidden to raise a hand to him in the kitchen. Jongmin recoils in horror from the hand outstretched in his direction with his index finger outstretched and says he's really sorry. The head chef exclaims, asking if he really calls himself a chef. After calming down a bit, Jin Sok says to wipe down everything in the kitchen, and that's it for the day. Both young men agree. Afterwards, the chef adds that there will be a cooking test tomorrow and asks them to come at eight. He also adds that Sun Hoon will not have to go to the store early in the morning and can just get to work in the morning. Jongmin and Sun Hong take note of the information. In the locker room, Sun Hong had already changed into his business suit, getting ready to go home, when he received another message on his phone. He opens a chat room and sees messages from Jai Hai, who writes that they need to talk and suggests a place to meet a cafe at the exit near Konkuk University, and mentally wonders why she contacted him at this hour. He unhappily puts the phone in his pocket and thinks there is no way he's going to the meeting. At this point, Chongmin calls out to him, rhetorically asking where Sun Hong is going. He continues to talk to him in the same tone as he did in the kitchen, furiously and angrily. Namely, he asks who Sun Hong is in the first place, and why the head chef cherishes him so much, and why he has to take the test tomorrow. Our hero tries to smooth things over by saying that this is not the case, but Jongmin does not listen to him, saying that he does not need it. He again asks what the reason is then, since Jin Suk even allowed him not to go to the store. Sun Hong, unwilling to create conflict, ignores the accusations, explaining that during the seminar he heard that KBS was going to hold a program called Best Chef, and that they would participate. Jin Suk still doesn't understand what Sun Hoon is getting at, so our hero goes on to say that only a chef with less than 10 years of experience could participate. He says that even though Jin Sok told him to come, he's sure to pick Jongmin. Jongmin smirks wickedly pleased but still doubting why Sun Hong was even called in the first place. Our hero assumes it is to ask him to take over Jongmin's job. After the assistant cook tells Sun Bei that he has some business to attend to and asks him to finally leave, he gets a positive response. Sun Hong rushes through the city running for a very long time, eventually starting to choke from the action. When he reaches his goal, he stops for a while, bending down to catch his breath. Lifting his head, he sees a coffee shop in front of him. He straightens up, adjusting his jacket, and goes inside, wondering if Jahai has arrived yet. At the table, looking at the phone, sits a pretty girl. There is already a mug of coffee on the table in front of her. Feeling a shadow on her, she raises her head, sees Sun Hoon unkindly in front of her sarcastically wonders if he has come and adds that he is late. Sun Hong doesn't change a bit in his face, 
continuing to look at the girl with displeasure. She, in turn, smiles, looking at him no less arrogantly. Chapter 5 Sun Hoon's order is already on the table, a drink on the rocks. The hero himself is also already sitting in a chair across from the girl. Sunan, holding her hands with her fingers interlocked on the table, asks Jai Hai what she wanted to talk about. She silently picks up her phone, then slides it across the table to Sun Hoon and asks to see it. Our hero grudgingly takes the phone in his hands and grows gloomy as he looks into it. The main screen shows a photo of a happy Jai Hai being hugged from behind by a sturdily built man. Pulling himself together, Sun Hong says to himself that he thought so, but says aloud that he's seen it before, and asks if that's all she wanted to talk about. Frowning the girl says that this man is also a chief, just like Sun Hong, but nevertheless, they are different because he has a different vision. Our character, with his eyebrows drawn up to the bridge of his nose, listens without interrupting. Jai Hai, looking into his mug of hot drink, calmly continues that this man may be old, but he is a sous chef, and he also works in a hotel that is in the top 20. Whereas Sun Hong is still a junior chef at a hotel that is barely in the top 100. Sun Hong grows darker with each word and presses his lips together more and more. Sipping from her mug, Jai Hai continues, saying she doesn't want to invest in someone like our hero. The guy, with a touch of desperation in his eyes, repeats to himself the word invest. The girl has said all she wants to say, and now she's checking to see if Sun Hong has anything to say. To the point of negativity, the guy replies that he really has nothing to add. Jia Hai gets up, picks up her purse, and says that in that case she's leaving. But as she walks past the guy, she still stops next to him and says that she does want him to thank her. Sun Hong does not even look up at her words, continuing to stare glumly at the tabletop. The girl explains that she opened our hero's eyes to the world when he didn't even realize it. Jia Hai leaves, leaving Sun Hoon, who clenches his fist on the table alone. There are two empty soju bottles and another crumpled can on the floor, an empty bag of chips lying around. Sun Hoon is fast asleep. Suddenly the guy opens his eyes in horror, sits on the mattress, clutching his sore head with one hand, and checks the time on his phone. He realizes in horror that it's 6.30, which means he's an hour and a half late. Suman jumps up, starts to put on his pants, and lists that he has to run to the store for food, as he suddenly remembers that he has a cooking test today and doesn't have to be at work until 8. He exhales with relief that he doesn't have to go shopping, but has to work instead. After calming down, the guy stands evenly in front of the window, looking out at the sunny sky, and says he'll do his best. At the Jewelry Hotel, the kitchen is once again in full swing. Soon Hun quickly completes every task given, arranging dishes in their places, wiping down plates, and helping the cooks. Putting the plates on the shelf, he suddenly feels his eyes on him, turns around and seeing the captain, greets him with a bow. Jin Sa comes, slightly embarrassed. Behind Sun Hong, other cooks are already approaching, carrying boxes of groceries. They say that it must have been hard to be responsible for buying groceries all this time. Soon Hun is asked to put all the food in the refrigerator, to which he agrees and says that the cooks have worked hard. The cooks finally exhale, having finished carrying the heavy boxes. Jongbin pops into the kitchen, not even dressed for work yet. This is noticed by the sous chef, Kim Sung Soo, who starts yelling after him, telling him off, indignantly asking why Jongbin is late again. Jongbin asks for two minutes to change. Sun Hong hears a continuing dialogue between the senior cooks, who discuss how it's nothing new that Jongbin is late even on a day like this. Sung Soo thinks that this is another reason to yell at him, because if the captain finds out about it, Jongmin walks into the kitchen, continuing to adjust his hastily worn uniform and smirks, saying that he arrived at 8 o'clock sharp. Sansu is furious and calls Jongmin a jerk. The head chef draws everyone's attention to himself with a slight cough. Jongmin realizes with horror that the captain is already here, and immediately runs up to his place, between Sunhong and Sansu, in the line of cooks. Once everyone is level-headed, Jin Sok begins spouting information, asking everyone to listen. He knows that the chefs have heard that the Food Safety Administration has decided to select the top 20 hotel kitchens, so he goes on to explain that they will choose through a competition program called Best Chef, which will be broadcast on KBS, and only one chef with less than 10 years of experience is eligible to participate. While Jin Sub goes on to say that the Jewelria Hotel is obviously not even in the top 50, and this is a clear chance to improve the hotel's reputation, Jongmin is already beginning to grin expectantly which a disgruntled Sansu notices. Sansu yanks Jongmin away in a whisper what the captain is saying. The head chef feels sorry for the shocked Sansu, 
with 11 years of experience, who cannot participate. A jubilant Jongmin interrupts everyone, shouting that only he can be a contestant, because he is the one who meets all the requirements. The guy pretends that he didn't know the captain thought of him that way, but he's been working for six years, so he's the most suitable contestant. Not sharing Jongmin's happiness, the chief chief just stares at him with his arms folded across his chest. Overwhelmed with delight, Jongmin never shuts up, assuring him that he won't let the captain down and will improve the hotel's reputation. Finally, as the cook's speech falters, Jin Sok announces that Jongmin is mistaken, for the captain never said he would be the spokesman for their hotel. Shocked by this statement, the cook asks, but then who? The head chef looks slightly to his left and turns to Kang Sun Noon, who was not expecting this, asking if he remembers the culinary dough. The assistant gives a positive answer, and then the whole kitchen hears the shocking news. Kang Sudanhan and Zhou Jongmin will take a test, the winner of which will become a representative of the hotel. Chapter 6 Jongmin is diligently chopping onions, while at the same time his gloomy thoughts. He looks at Sun Hong, who is also preparing something intently. Jongmin cheers up, believing that he has a good chance and that this test is good for him. A little earlier, right after the captain announced the shocking news, Jongmin immediately became indignant, asking if the captain really wanted him and some kid, Kang Sun Hong, to take the test. After all, in his opinion, it's absolutely obvious that he's the one who should be in the contest. He thinks our hero is just a rookie who probably hasn't even sliced anything before. Jongmin pronounces that Sun Hong is not worthy to be his opponent. Jin Sok ignores the cook's statement and says that Kang Sun Hong has no problem with the conditions of participation, and therefore their chances are equal. He also asks that the task be done first, so that he can make a decision based on the results, and in case Jinmin thinks it is unfair, he should simply say so. Receiving no more objections, the chief chef dictates the terms of the assignment. The task is to make breakfast for the Chinese tourists who arrived yesterday. Each participant's breakfast will be laid out in the lobby and the one whose menu sells the most times will be the representative of the Jewelria Hotel. Both cooks listen carefully to the instructions. Jin Sok asks if Jongmin has any objections, receives a negative answer, although the aura around the cook is far from benevolent, and repeats his question to Sun Hong, again receives a denial, but our hero, unlike Jongmin, is more determined than aggressive. The head chef is satisfied and gives the participants one more hint they should take note of. The menu of those tourists for dinner included chicken, duck, and beer, so some light food should be made. On the table in front of Jongmin are three plates of chopped vegetables. He himself thinks of himself as an expert in light breakfasts, as he has been assigned to make nothing but soups for the past two years. That's why, when it comes to soups, Jongmin is the most outstanding chef at the hotel. The cook cooks a huge pot of nice colored soup, then tastes it and determines that it tastes great. In addition to the soup, Jongmin decides to make sandwiches, but is distracted by the thought of what Sun Hong has been doing all this time. He looks at our hero, standing in front of the stove with two pots, as he notices that the first is boiled peas and the other has an incomprehensible rice soup. Jongmin chuckles and ironically asks our hero what kind of baby food this poop seed is making. Soon Han ignores him, continuing to deal with the recipe from memory. The assistant takes the boiled peas out of the water, dips them into cold water, peels it, and puts them in a blender, adding water and some sugar after chopping. Having accomplished everything, he pours the resulting lettuce-colored liquid into a glass, adding an ice cube. Thinking it all worked out perfectly, he takes on the rice soup. Already cooked soup he pours into a deep bowl, not forgetting to add a little pepper, salt and finished everything with green onions. Soon Han looks at the beautiful serving of his food and exclaims to himself that everything is ready. Jongmin immediately approaches our hero, asking if that spicy smell from his food goes with this hotel. He also doesn't miss an opportunity to brag by showing him his menu, calling it the chef's menu, namely soup and sandwiches. Jongmin continues to praise himself, confident that his menu will sell better than the pauper pea meal. He thinks the chef was kind enough to give Sung Hoon a chance, because it's a waste of time. Our hero ignores this kind of contemptuous attitude, while Jongmin is already spinning in his mind that since the test menu is breakfast, the captain thus wanted to help him. Oh, Hyman, the chief to party, watching with Jin Sok for Sun Hoon and Jongmin, asks the captain what it looks like. The chief to party is perplexed as to where he should be looking. Hammond specifies that for Sun Moon's breakfast, he doesn't understand whether there will be people in the room who might like his dishes, 
The chef de party also adds that he doubts that this combination won't kill anyone. The head chef is surprised that this is the first time Hemen has seen these dishes. He asks if this is really what the chef de party thinks of them. Hemen answers no, but the combination of dishes. Besides, he doesn't understand what kind of hotel could even offer this for breakfast, because he can't even imagine it as dessert. Jin Sok pronounces that he thought Hemen had the experience of a man who has worked in the kitchen for 25 years. The chef de party looks awkwardly at the head chef, who asks him to forget and just watch. In front of the entrance to the hotel restaurant hall, there is a table with a division. To the left, orders A, some Hong dishes. To the right, orders B, Jongmin dishes. Jin Sok repeats what he said earlier. The chef whose menu gathers the most orders will become the representative of their hotel. He asks to get ready, as the tourists will be arriving soon for breakfast. Men in business suits walk into the restaurant. They are surprised to see the choice of dishes for breakfast. Four orders of menu B and only one order of menu A come into the kitchen. Jamin is insanely happy about this, while Sun Hoon doesn't change his face. Active cooking and serving begins, orders fly in non-stop. Two menu B, three menu B, one menu A, five menu B Jongmin smirks sneeringly, thinking that this is what he expected, because no matter what kind of tourists eat or what country they are from, they will still choose sandwiches and soups. He looks back with his chuckle at Sun Hoon who isn't paying the slightest bit of attention, thinking that he clearly won't win with a menu that someone ordered once. This time, ordinary tourists come to the restaurant, just dressed and discussing among themselves that after last night's drink, they want to eat something light and therapeutic for the body. They come to the table to choose their menu. Sun Hong inwardly gradually begins to get gloomy and upset, wondering if the menu he made was too bold, but immediately correcting himself that no, nothing like that, Samsu, seeing our hero's mood, approaches and supports him, saying that he did a great job. It's just that the menu doesn't suit the hotel. Sun Hong begins to get discouraged and agrees, deciding that this must be it. Suddenly, ten orders of menu arrive in the kitchen. Chapter 7 Stun Sun Hong and Samsu turn at the voice. Once again, an amazing thing happens. Ten more orders for menu A come in. Sun Hun is amazed, and the chief chief chuckles contentedly, thinking that it has finally begun. Still to himself, he pronounces that now 80% of the hotel guests are Chinese, because most of them work for Hansen Company and have now come on vacation. For the most part, this is their first visit to Korea. That is why they are likely to choose the dishes that suit them best right now, instead of eating food that is hard to chew. Kang Sun Hoon prepared this menu with that in mind, because the menu served as porridge and soy milk. Satisfied Chinese tourists enjoy their breakfast. A lot of them chose the Sun Hong menu. In the kitchen, there's a real rush. Ten orders for menu A, four more orders for menu A. The senior cooks are amazed. In the meantime, Sun Hong is asked if there are any more dishes from his menu. A kindly enthusiastic Sun Hun says that everything will be ready soon. He immediately gets a bunch more orders. At this time, Jamin, who hears all this, becomes upset and gloomy. He tells himself under his breath that it's impossible. When breakfast is over, the head chef reconvenes the kitchen for a few words namely to announce the results. Jongmin stands grimmer than a cloud. He thinks it is nonsense that his soup and sandwiches are losing out to the stinky rice soup and Sun Hong pea drink. Jin Sok is about to announce the results, when suddenly he is called urgently to come out because the CEO is here and wants to see him urgently. The captain is surprised that he is. In the lobby stands a man in a blue suit. Next to him a smiling girl and a man in a black suit. The two men shake hands after which one of them leaves and the other bows goodbye. He is the CEO. Jin Sok approaches him, asking if he has been summoned. The head director puts his hand on the chief's shoulder and thanks him, calling in Director Du for a job well done. He hears from company chairman Han Sen that everyone is in great spirits, thanks to today's breakfast. Tourists had been to some Korean hotels before, but none of them cooked authentic Chinese food. That's why the chairman booked a room at the Hotel Jolria, for 6,000 guests for two months. The head director says he really appreciates the work of the kitchen and the head chef. Jin Suk is very content to return to his workplace, thinking that, as expected, Kang Sun Long is a good guy, which means that his hunch was right. At that moment, an unfamiliar number rings on the chief's phone. He picks up the phone, and he's greeted by the director of the KBS show, Song Hyun Su. Jin Suk says he's honored. Song Hyun Su calls about the best chef program. He says they have a few changes, 
Originally, only one chef with less than 10 years of experience could participate. But they changed the rules and now two people can participate. The head chief is asking if they need to send two participants there. The interlocutor goes on to say that there will be both team and individual competitions, so you have to send two people to make it great. The director of the show then smirks maliciously, saying that if the hotel doesn't participate, the chief knows what they will lose. Jean Sock is silent. Back in the kitchen, he picks up where you left off, saying that he had to take a break, but that he would now announce the results. Before doing so, though, he does announce that today's competition was the first for Jongmin and Sun Hong, since they started working here. The captain asks the participants how they are doing. Jongmin, not missing an opportunity, begins furiously proclaiming that his dishes were perfect, and it seems that the guests preferred Sun Hong's menu simply because they are simple rednecks who are not used to living in hotels. Sun Tzu becomes angry after Jongmin's words. He yells at him, grabbing him by the collar with his hand and calling him a frog. Arrogant Jongmin shoves the sous chef's hand away from him, angrily asking if he's wrong, because the executives chose his menu. Only the hillbillies chose Sun Hong's menu, and besides, he says that Sun Tzu doesn't need to babysit Sun Hong, because their seniority is the same six years. Our hero silently grows a little droopy. Sun Tzu clenches his fist in a rage, saying that Jongmin the frog didn't even realize what his mistake was. The head chief comes over and stops the altercation, saying that they are not discussing who is bad and who is not. He asks Sun Tzu to behave like a superior, and it is not appropriate for the older man to grab the younger one by the scruff of the neck. Sun Tzu apologizes to the captain, saying that she was very angry. The chief chief asks Sun Hun what he thinks. The assistant replies that he thinks of the fact that Koreans, whenever they go to other countries, take ramen or kimchi. With this in mind, Sun Hong cooked a breakfast that the Chinese guests might have liked. Nevertheless, he apologizes for giving a bad impression because of the informal food preparation. A satisfied chef sums it up. When it comes to hotel elegance, then, as Sun Hun said, the Jongmin menu is the right choice. But when thinking about guests, the right choice is the Sun Hun menu. Still, Jin Sok pronounces that Jongmin didn't even think about what the guests needed because he only cared about maintaining the standard in Sun Hong's menu, yes, was good. But since the Chinese don't like cold food, they shouldn't have put ice cubes in the soy milk. Jongmin becomes depressed after the remark. Sun Hong is surprised, and the captain, meanwhile, continues, announcing that although originally the representative was the one with the most bookings, he has now received a call from the channel saying that the number of representatives for each hotel is now two. Jongmin and Sun Hong stare in amazement at Jin Sok, who exclaims contentedly that the guys will now be on the same team, so they should come back with a better score for the Jewelria Hotel. Chapter 8 in the lobby of the resort hotel gathered chefs from different hotels, as well as a film crew. Sun Hong looks around confusedly, thinking that there are a lot of people here. A little to the side, Jongmin bows to chefs from various hotels. Our hero thinks he's got the attention of the chefs from the other hotels. He also has the thought that it's still a cool opportunity to be part of the program. He wonders what the assignments will be. Suddenly, our hero is spotted by Siu Jiahai, who is a line cook with four years of experience at the Prisa Hotel, and Jung Hai Min, the same sous chef from the photo, with ten years of experience at the same Prisa Hotel. They are surprised to notice him and begin to exude an aggressive atmosphere. Kang Sunhoon catches the attention to himself, turns his gaze to the side, and sees only Jai Hai among all the cooks. Our hero frowns a little, realizing that the girl also participates in the program as a representative of the hotel, and then he sees next to her. Jung Hai Min gets angry as he looks at the assistant, and starts to resent why Sunhoon, who he calls a jerk, is even here, since he's on probation. Jai Hai asks the man not to worry so much, saying that he is not worth his time. Hai Min continues to exude aggression, saying that he's not worried about Sun Hoon, but just doesn't want to see his face here. Our hero silently turns away, hearing behind him the girl's already more insistent request not to embarrass her and to step aside to talk. Suddenly, a familiar voice calls out to Sun Hoon, and he turns around and sees Go Jung Tae already walking toward him. Jung Tae exclaims happily that he thought our hero would be here. He asked how Sun Hoon was able to participate since he said he couldn't. The assistant says that's what happened. Suddenly the rules changed, so he was able to join in. Jung Tae recalls that two people can now participate. He also announces that things are about to begin and suggests that Sun Hoon do their part. Our hero supports his comrade's thought, 
A jealous Jongmin is around right after Jung Ta steps away. He angrily asks what it was, if that cheat from the Hilton Hotel is Sun Hoon's friend. Our hero awkwardly answers yes. Suddenly the light in the room is turned off. The cooks think it's about to start. The spotlights turn on, drawing attention to the door, from which an adult man in a business suit emerges briefly. Sun Moon is shocked to think that this man is the chef who used to work at Hebra's restaurant in Manhattan, a three-star Michael and Star Hotel. Chef Kim Mung Soon, who will be the judge. He thanks everyone for coming. Next comes the godmother of traditional Korean cuisine, Son Yun Jun, who has 40 years of experience and is also a judge. She is surprised by the large number of young boys and girls, and hopes that everyone will be healthy. Third to show is Go Gison, head chef at the Hilton Hotel, with 30 years of experience. He's the third judge hoping everyone demonstrates the best skills. Jongmin is absolutely shocked, because Chef Go Jison is the first Korean to win first place in a foreign hotel, and these people are now judges. Our hero is not as surprised, but still quite focused. Kim Mung Soon pronounces that everyone is here today, but unfortunately, more than half will be going home by the end of the day. And since everyone came to the show wanting to be the best, the winner of the competition will get a SAMSUNG 8K Ultra at HD 80 inch TV, a free interior design from Anson Enterprise, and last but not least, 100 million won. The audience is screaming with delight. Sun Hong stares in amazement at the screen that broadcasts images of the prizes listed by the announcer, realizing that the prize is 100 million. But seconds later, defeat is replaced by enthusiasm. The leader says that the first task is behind him and asks you to follow him. The cooks and everyone who was in the hall move to the second hall. On the table are various ingredients arranged on plates with numbers, which is what our character is thinking about. Gu Jensen begins his speech by saying that buying ingredients is a base for the chef, because there are times when the chef buys the products himself, although that is usually left to junior or immediate suppliers. Of course, that's not something worth arguing about, but even chefs with less than 10 years of experience can judge a hotel's level just by looking at the ingredients used. So the first task is to guess the names of the ingredients. Each participant should sit down and write down the names of 50 ingredients according to the number on the plate. They can be touched, but cannot be cut or eaten. The first task takes 15 minutes. Two chefs from other hotels approach the table, discussing that this is the first time they have seen some of the ingredients. Suman concentrates as he approaches the first plate, touches the first ingredient but gets no vision. He looks gloomily at his hand, thinking that this is strange. Jongmin fills out the still half-empty form with shaking hands, perplexed as to why there are so many types of fish. He thinks about the ingredients in some of the plates, realizing that since he is in charge of soups, he knows all kinds of vegetables. However, he has no idea about imported fruits and vegetables, especially fish, which he has never even touched before. Jongmin looks at our hero with a disgruntled face, mentally wondering what this lunatic writes in the forms, does he really know everything? Suddenly he gets the idea to write a little, but the cameras get in the way. Jongmin looks at the screen, swearing to himself that he has almost no time left, which means he is doomed. Sun Hong, on the other hand, sits gloomily, unable to understand the last two ingredients. He is stumped because of them. Our hero tries to figure out logically what is on the plates. He estimates that 46 and 47 are intentionally lying side by side, remembers what he read about the ingredients and remembers that they are tropical fruits. But, time is up. The judges are collecting the work of the participants. Chapter 9 After saying that time is up, Jai Hai humbly closes her eyes. Hai Min stares angrily at her form. Jung Tae fairly assesses her work. Jong Man grasps his head in horror. And Sun Hoon concentrates on handing the written work to the jury. Son Yun Jun announces that the judges' rankings will be determined after combining the scores of chefs from the same hotel, and Song Hyun Soo, producer of Best Chef, adds that this and the next task will be quick, so it will take place in groups. Yun Jun thinks it's a great idea, since there are too many contestants, which is what she tells the producer, who thanks for the compliment and asks the judges to rest while the work is being checked. After a while, the presenter announces that the results, except for first place, can be seen on the screen. Jongmin asks in his heart that his name be on the list, sees it there, but the score of 28 out of 50 leads him to despair. He is in 148th place and thinks it should not have been shown. Jia Hai, with 41 points in 25th place, stands satisfied next to an equally satisfied Hai Min, who has 43 points in 18th place. 
Jawman looks around at the two chiefs and wonders why they act like a sweet couple during the contest, and then remembers he's seen them somewhere before. The girl, chuckling, looks at Sun Hong looking for his name on the list, mentally telling him to stop pretending it shouldn't be at the end of the list. She turns her gaze to the board, looking for our hero's score, finds the name, looks up the score, and sees the absolutely shocking news. Sun Hong has 48 points out of 50. Jawman looks at the same figure as Jai Hai with his mouth open. The girl stares in amazement at Sun Hong's back with the thought that this is impossible, because he is an intern, and she also started cooking earlier. A discussion erupts between the cooks about who Kang Sun Hong is from second place and what it is about the Joria Hotel that almost no one has heard of before. Our hero, on the other hand, does not look delighted at all, remaining with the same calm expression on his face. And finally the first place goes to Go Jung Ta of the Hilton Hotel. Yoon Joon smilingly says the Hotel Hilton is special because he got 49 points, to which Gu Jinsen replies in denial, continuing that it's only an average score. He explains that he taught Jung Tae this himself, so he regrets that not all the points were received. Kim Mang Soon announces that first place, Go Jung Ta, will not participate in the next challenge, and snags his badge badge from his uniform. After asking Judge Jison what they should do with the rest of the contestants, the judge spells out that the assignment is to grade them individually, but it is still a hotel grade, as the scores of the two contestants from each hotel are added up, so that any couples who score less than 75 points in total can go back. As a consolation to those who were eliminated, Jison says they worked hard. The red-headed girl in the cap and red hoodie is piling up her reports. She wonders if she should go over the exam assignments, because there was a question she had trouble answering. She finds Kang Sun Hong's work with two wrong answers, 46 for Patea and 47 for Rambutan. The girl looks at the answer sheet in surprise, convinced that 46 should be Logan and 47 should be Sapadilla. She goes on the internet and sees a striking picture. Logan and Patea, as well as Sapadilla and Rambutan, are two names of the same fruit. Swearing to herself, she covered in cold sweat, realizes that Sun Hong had given the right answer, only using Thai words, which is why they were not scored. The girl thinks it's a good thing he didn't lose and gave up. Jongmin breathes a sigh of relief, realizing that, thanks to that jerk, Kak Sun Hong, he survived. Suddenly, the cook presses his lips enviously and turns to our hero, asking if he has written off. Sun Hong, frowning slightly, replies that he's not that kind of person. Zhang Ming asks what he means, because he's friends with Go Zhang Ta and could have cheated off him. The assistant again denies such an assumption. Zhang Ming relents, saying that if not, then they can go back to the resort hotel now that they're done. Sun Hong agrees with Sun Ba. Already at night, standing on the balcony of the room, Sun Hun is sipping from a can of some kind of drink. Behind him on the floor sits Zhang Ming with the same bottle in his hand and asks if he broke up. Not understanding what we are talking about, our hero interjects. Cook explains that a girl who looks like him was with another man. Sun Hong ignores the question and begins to drink from the jar. The indignant Jongmin says that this abnormal ignores his elder and drinks without even answering. Somebody says he's just curious, but that man who was holding hands with Sun Hoon's girlfriend seems to be an indecent guy. He and Zhang Hai Min went to school together, so Jongmin knows him well. He's a womanizer who seduces a lot of girls. And obviously, when you look at them, she has found a replacement for Sung Hoon in his person, which is a mistake. Our hero is discouraged, saying that it is natural. He explains that dating her was his choice, and they broke up because she was tired of him. Sun Hoon, on the other hand, has no resentment or underlying feelings, but Chai Hai and Hai Min's pair underestimated the jewelry as chefs throughout the competition, mocking and despising them in every way, so he can't forgive them for that. The angry Soon Hun crumples the tin can he's been holding all this time. Chapter 10 and begins to dawn. Jongmin sleeps sweet dreams, while Sun Hong leaves through his notebook with some notes, gradually sinking into unpleasant memories. Seven years ago in a hospital room, a doctor standing next to the patient's bed pronounces that he is sorry to report this, but the cancer has spread to the rest of his organs. Recovery is impossible. There is a man lying in a bed, with a variety of equipment connected. Next to him is Sun Hong, who immediately breaks down after the doctor's phrase, a woman who begins to sob after the fatal diagnosis is announced, and a teenage girl whose face bursts into tears. Sun Hoon's cancer-stricken father, Kang Dong Siok, asks if so, then how much time he still has left. The doctor gives a period of six months. Dong Siok, already resigned to his fate, looks at his son, 
a tear running down his cheek. They fly together in an airplane to different places, countries, and his father teaches Sun Hong the various subtleties of cookery. He talks about fruits, offers to try different restaurant dishes, gives information about vegetables. Sitting at sunset, father and son silently hold hands for the last time. Already dying, Dong Siak lies on the bed, breathing with his oxygen mask. His entire family sobs, sitting beside him, asking in vain for him not to leave and remain conscious. The sick man calls Sun Hong by name, and when he responds, gives him a notebook with lots of bookmarks, explaining that it contains all the recipes he has collected all his life. The father asks his son to use them wisely and become a great chef. The man never woke up again. Returning from his memories, our hero holds a recipe book in his hands. He puts on his special uniform and namadag and looks in the mirror, getting better. Jongmin is still asleep. Suddenly the loudspeaker, which is in every room, starts ringing. Jongmin jumps up, not understanding what is wrong. A voice from the speaker announces that it is 5.10 a.m. and the time is changed to 5.15. He also asks to go down to the first floor without a partner. Jongmin, still not fully awake, asks if it's really necessary right now. A few seconds later, he's screaming that these people are getting everyone together so early, and they're not kidding. Tired of listening to this, Sun Hong exhales, saying that he knows and will then go down first himself. He also warns that there are five minutes left, so Jongmin should change quickly and come in. Frantically pulling on his uniform, Jongmin agrees, though he realizes the meaning of what was said seconds later. There's a table in the lobby with two judges sitting at it, and some guys with cameras already standing nearby. Yun Rong and Gu Ching Song are surprised to see Sun Hong coming down the stairs, neatly assembled and with a smile on his face at this early hour. He is handed a card with the number one, asking him to take a number and sit on the left. Our hero takes a number, thinking that he usually wakes up early to go buy ingredients, and in this situation, that's exactly what helped. In the back of our hero sounds the phrase that well he gives, he turns around, and he sees a positive Jung Tae, who jokingly says that Kang Sun Hoon is a rascal for trying to move him out of first place. Our hero chuckles good naturedly in response, saying that he just couldn't sleep. Jung Tae replies that he agrees because our assistant worked hard yesterday guessing the ingredients. Although it was easy for him, since he is familiar with most of the ingredients because of his hotel, the guys had already made their way to the chairs provided and sat down. Soon Hun turns on his interlocutor, chuckling that he is showing off, and offers to simply admit that he is jealous. At this time, the cooks are already running down the stairs, barely making the deadline. They are pulling on their uniforms as they run, when one of the men shouts menacingly for everyone to stop. He approaches, saying that the chef's uniforms must be worn properly, for a chef who is not perfect cannot pass the test. He points to the mirror, saying sternly that they should go to the mirror and return when they have corrected their uniforms so that they are perfect. The confused cooks look in the mirror. Nun Rong, on the other hand, turns to Jinsen, saying that she thinks the time has come. The man looks at his wristwatch, agreeing. He rises from the table, loudly announcing that this is it. Huge numbers of cooks have not arrived in time to be fully ready to work. They remain behind an extended fence. Jinsen again makes the announcement of the information, pronouncing that first, the number of those who will take the surprise test is seven people. He also adds that these seven will be allowed the opportunity to present their cuisine for the first time to three judges. Jung Tat is satisfied with the information, while Sun Hoon is puzzled. Chapter 11 Jin Sum pronounces that these seven will be allowed the opportunity to present their cuisine to the three judges for the first time. And Kang Sun Hoon, who came in first, as well as Go Jung Tae, who took first place yesterday, will be allowed to avoid elimination once. Jung Ta congratulates our hero on his excellent work. Sun Hoon voices that now they have another chance. Gu Jinsen ends his speech by saying that's all there is to know. Those who pass stay here, the rest of the participants are free to go. Outraged, excluded cooks begin to resent each other. One of them asks if they are joking, because then why was yesterday's assignment? His youngest immediately begins to support him, saying that he and Sunbei are not really slackers, and getting up this early just makes me want to vomit. This indignation is heard by Johnson passing by and he asks what the cook just said. The contestant answers nothing, to which the judge asks the operator to rewind the tape a bit. He reviews the recorded dialogue, listening to each phrase again. He looks up at the cooks, who pretend to have nothing to do with it. Johnson angrily pronounces that two applicants from the Gabriel Hotel have been eliminated from Best Chef and rips off their badges. 
The cooks, in shock, start asking for another chance, because they can't just walk away. The judge, watching this, steps on the discarded Namad eggs with his foot, smashing them all the way down. The participants look on in horror at this action, hearing the phrase that they have already worked hard enough. The shooting manager approaches the project director, asking him if they should save the scene. The director smirks, ever taking his eyes off the set, and says of course everything stays intact. He's already thinking to himself that if they have more incidents like this, the ratings would go through the roof. Seven cooks enter the clean, empty kitchen. The manager announces that those who have passed the test can cook here. He adds that they can use as many ingredients as they want, but they have to make one batch. At 11 o'clock, everyone must present their dishes to the judges in the line in which everyone came in the morning. Charged with positive energy, Samong thinks he didn't expect this, but it's a good opportunity, so he'll take the chance. Our hero begins to reflect. In order to do the task well, you need to prepare a dish that will make a deep impression. There are three judges sitting in the shooting room, to whom the director gave several sheets of paper each, explaining that this is personal information about the contestants who will cook. The first sheet about Kang Sung Ong, who won the surprise test. Kim Mung Shong is delighted that our hero is still a contestant. He thinks it's really great because Sun Moon placed second in the first task, and first in today's surprise test. Even so, and guessing ingredients and cooking are different things. Johnson looks at our hero's photo on his resume and thinks he seems to have seen his name somewhere before. On the rector's earpiece, the information is relayed that participant Kang Sunhun is ready, and he asks that you prepare for the stage in that case. Having warned the judges, who also don't mind starting, Sunhun is launched into the hall. In a neutral tone, the participant is asked to introduce himself, to which Kang Sunhong gives his name the fact that he works at the Jolria Hotel, and a request not to be judged harshly. Munson asks to present a dish to the jury. Our hero lifts the lid off the plate, showing the judges three takalbi. Johnson clarifies whether there was a reason why the contestant chose this particular dish. After giving an affirmative answer, Sun Hong replies that this is the most impressive dish he's ever read about in a book, so be sure for him. The man has a thought in his head about which book it is. But out loud he asks if our hero is now an intern, if he is an assistant to the chief, and gets an affirmative answer. A mundane question comes from the judges, if Sun Hun is a novice chef, it's safe to assume he can't even touch a knife. So isn't that the Joria Hotel? The assistant begins to think that the judge pretended to be interested in his situation, and then smoothly switched the subject to the hotel. He says he's the head chef of a foreign hotel. But in response, he says that everything is the same as in other hotels. Meng Soon asks if Sun Hong learned to cook. Plus, since he mentioned the book, negative ideas begin to flicker in our hero's mind. He realizes that the dish is getting cold, and the judges are still more interested in his past than in the taste of the food, which means they have generally low expectations of his cooking. He is determined to lower the judges' expectations even further and get them to taste the food. The assistant says he learned about the recipe from a book from a manhwa. Monsok can barely contain his laughter and asks if he's from the comics. Johnson looks at the contestant in shock. Yanjun grabs his head, horrified, asking if he's crazy. Monsok takes matters into his own hands, says enough strange questions, it's worth a try. The three judges approach the chopstick dish. Johnson says that there doesn't seem to be any sauce in the dish. He takes a bite of meat, chews it, and opens his eyes in surprise. The experts began the tasting. The renowned chefs were expecting low scores for a dish based on a manga, but they were surprised when the tokalbi turned out to be the most delicious dish in the history of the competition. Kang Sunhan, after gorging the jury's reaction, realized it was time for dessert. Green lotus leaf tea was presented on the table in front of the experts. The mild aroma and balanced taste of the drink harmonized well with the spicy tokalbi. One sip was enough for Gujuson to summarize the tasting. The lotus tea was so good that the judges doubted Kang Sunhun's abilities. Not every experienced culinary expert would be able to combine the ingredients of the drink so successfully. Kang Sunhun had only worked for a few years, never rising from the position of junior chef. But that was enough time for him to study all the recipes in the book given to him by his father. The experts once again verified where the young man got the recipe from. Kang Sunhung answered all the questions cautiously as he needed to lower the experts' expectations and draw their attention to the food. Without a proper answer, the judges let the Jewelria Hotel chef go. 
Song Hyun Soo suggested that the cameraman not film all the contestants one by one for now. When the experts were out of camera range, they decided to discuss the brave chef Kang Sung Hoon. Go Ji Sun was furious, he didn't like lies, and the manga food story finally pissed him off. Sun Yoon Ju only confirmed her co worker's fears. As soon as the woman heard the manga story, she immediately realized that the young man was lying to her. In her 40 years of experience, Sun Yoon Ju had never met anyone who cooked as well as she did. Go Ji Sun didn't understand the young chef's strange intentions, but recognized that his cooking abilities were indeed impressive. Experts agreed that with this behavior, Kang Sun Hoon is trying to divert attention away from Jewelry Hotel, which means there are real problems in the establishment. If the TV show conducts its investigation in the kitchen of this hotel, the ratings will definitely skyrocket. The experts continued to evaluate Kang Sun Hoon's dishes among themselves. Go Jisun shared his culinary secret. He always uses royal oyster mushroom to make takalbi. The dish presented by the chef of Juoria Hotel definitely used Matsutek mushroom. The director intervened in the conversation and explained that due to the high cost of Matsutek mushrooms, not many were purchased. The experts realized that the choice of ingredients for the dish was a deliberate one, as the chance of accidentally obtaining an expensive mushroom was minimal. But Gu Jisun was concerned about another issue. Matsutek mushrooms have a distinct flavor and strong aroma. Working with this ingredient requires special attention from the cook. It is not uncommon for the mushrooms to overpower the flavor of the meat, but the tokalbi served by Kang Sun Hoon was delicious. Kim Myung Chung suggested that the chef at Juoria Hotel used kiwi instead of sugar when preparing the tokalbi. The flavor of the fruit mixed with the flavor of the mushrooms, and the final dish was harmonious. Using kiwi instead of sugar was a bold decision. Without the necessary knowledge, it is almost impossible to prepare tokalbi this way. Kang Sun Hoon really was a master of his craft. Kim Mi Yong Shang admired the young chef's ability and promised to make him his apprentice at the first opportunity. In four years as a junior chef, Kang Sun Hoon had learned much more than his colleagues. Wu Jisun, doubting the fairness of the competition, suggested changing the rules of the competition. Now, including the contestants, the first seven people will make it to the next stage. After that, other representatives from the hotels to which the first seven people belonged would also present their dishes. The director of the show was against the new amendments. If all the contestants make it through the first stage, there would be no time left for the second challenge, which was scheduled for tonight. Gorgeson assured that the first trial needed to be passed by all the contestants. Only after that would it become clear what kind of order reigns in each represented hotel. The second trial could be postponed, but the opportunity to increase views should not be given up. Kang Sunhan had passed the first qualifying round and now deserved a full rest. The guy realized that by using rare and expensive ingredients, he was taking more risks than the other contestants. Changing the topic to manvis was the best solution, so the experts shifted their attention from the hotel to the main dishes. Kang Sun Hoon admitted that the discovery of Matsutek mushrooms had seriously excited him. Two hours ago, preparing for the tasting, Kang Sun Hoon was evaluating the food provided by the principal. The meat was of the best quality as the animals grazed on the green meadows. When Kang Sun Hoon touched the mushrooms, an image of a pine forest popped up in his mind. Without a doubt, royal oyster mushrooms lay before the young chef, but among them was the first grade ingredient, the Matsutek mushroom. The program purposely mixed mushrooms of different varieties to test the contestants' abilities. After discovering the valuable product, Kang Sun Hung immediately started cooking Takalbi. Jo Jongman already knew the results of the first competition and was eagerly waiting for his partner to return home. Jo Jongman was terribly angry when he found out that the second hotel representative was cooking like a manhwa fanatic. Kang Sun Hoon realized that it was pointless to prove anything to Jo Jongman and so he hurriedly left for his room. Kang Sun Hoon's behavior was different from yesterday, and Jo Jongman noticed it. A few minutes later, a message arrived on the cook's phone. Jo Jongman was invited to the first test to demonstrate his cooking skills. The crew just sent Jo Jongman a message. The experts wanted the second chef to demonstrate his culinary skills as well. Only by evaluating the two representatives of the establishment could it be understood whether the hotel should continue to fight. 
If both participants do not score enough points, they will not be able to pass to the second round and will automatically leave the project. Because the first trial dragged on, the second contest was decided to be postponed. Kang Sun-hoon was unhappy with the crew's innovation. He didn't know why Joe Jongman was needed for this challenge. One could only assume that people who failed the surprise test would be given a second chance. Kang sun hum was not a rude person and therefore supported his partner before he went to the test. Kang sun hoon had already done his best to maximize his score. No matter how badly Joe Jongmin performed in the trial, Hotel Jewelria would still remain on the list of participants. Joe Jongmin wasn't going to lose. The guide valued his culinary skills too highly and was confident that he wouldn't allow such an embarrassing performance like Kang sung hoons Still, Kang sung hoon felt that something would go wrong. As Zhou Zhongmin left for the test, Kang sung hoon was left alone with his thoughts. He had to tune into the second stage of the competition, even though it had been postponed indefinitely. Kang sung hoon was distracted from his thoughts by a notification that arrived on his phone. The chef assumed that the film crew had made changes to the project again and was now notifying all the contestants. After reading the message, Kang Sun Hoon realized that he was wrong in his guess. He was invited for an interview. Sun Minna, the scriptwriter of the Best Chef program, had been looking to meet with the representative of Hotel Jewelria for a long time. Since Kang Sun Hoon had no plans for the evening, he still agreed to participate in the interview. In the evening of the same day, Kang Sun Hoon was rushing to meet the scriptwriter of the Best Chef program. Sun Minna was already waiting for the chef in the lobby, from where they were to go straight to the cafe. Finding himself in the crosshairs of the cameras, Kang Sun Hoon became visibly nervous. This was his first interview, and the guy didn't fully understand what he had to do. Sun Minna noticed that her guest felt stiff and uncomfortable. The girl explained to Kang Sun Hoon that he just had to answer her questions honestly. Sun Minna first decided to find out exactly where the young chef had worked before. Kang Sun Hoon had faithfully performed his duties as a junior chef at the Jewelry Hotel for four years, but when asked, the boy answered uncertainly. Sun Min didn't understand why to such a simple question, Kang Sun Hoon answered with noticeable difficulty. The girl wanted to do better, and so she immediately proceeded to the basic and most difficult questions. When Kang Sun Hoon presented his dishes at the tasting, the experts reacted rather rudely. Sun Min wanted to know if the young chef felt any offense. When you are just starting out in a certain field, you often encounter harsh and inappropriate criticism. Often newcomers take everything to heart and are afraid of failure, but Kang Sun Hoon was able to show character. Yes, he was a little hurt at the beginning. The chef even thought that this attitude was due to his work in a four-star hotel. To some in surprise, the guy answered the difficult question too quickly. Next, the girl wanted to know what, other than the reasons listed above, made Kang Sun Hoon decide to make his competition dish. Perhaps by presenting Tokalpi, the young chef wanted to make a statement about his skills. Kang Sun Hoon replied that the Tokalpi itself was good enough to eat in one bite. Since the dish had a light flavor, it was sure to please even the pickiest and most demanding jury. The reason for choosing the dish was clear, but Sun Min wanted to know why Kang Sun Hong didn't tell the experts about it. The chef explained that the dish would then cool down too quickly and lose its original flavor. It was necessary to divert the experts' attention to the main tasting stage, which was why Kang Sun Hong had kept part of his explanation. Sun Min suggested that the story about the Manwa food was a fable invented to attract people to his dish. Kang Sun Hong blanched and couldn't give a concrete explanation. It was clear that the chef was not the type of person who could lie and not blush. The last question remained. Sun Min wondered how determined the representative of Jewelry Hotel was. Without hesitation, Kang Sun Hoon replied that he would absolutely be the first. Surprised, Sun Min announced that the interview had come to an end. Thanking the girl for her cooperation, Kang Sun Hoon retired to his room to prepare for the second stage. Sun Min was encouraged by her answer to the last question, but the cameraman didn't share the girl's feelings and was sure that it was just ordinary determination. Usually, the contestants of the project say that they will prove their right to win the final. Kang Sun Hoon was sure that he would win the first place. The competition was meant to be a team competition, but it was clear that Kang Sun Hoon was determined to, to win individually. 
The young chef probably had his own reason for being the best of the best, and of course, Selman wanted him to say it on camera. Joe Jongman stood outside the door leading to the main hall where the competition experts were waiting for him. The chef assured himself that there were no competitors for him, because even Kang sung -gun had managed to pass the first stage. The experts were not going to drag out the last tasting, and therefore were not positive. The jury did not have high hopes for the second representative of Hotel Jewelria. Joe Jongman entered the room with the experts on command. Today he had prepared barbecue pork ribs with grilled shrimp for them. The last participant of the qualifying stage presented barbecue pork ribs with grilled shrimps. There was no limit to the disappointment of the experts, as the other contestants' dishes were also made of meat. Guo Joseon's patience was coming to an end, and the man decided to bring the first challenge to a close. According to the rules of the show, best chef evaluation will be sent only to those seven participants who have passed to the next semi-stage. The rest of the participants will be able to familiarize themselves with the results of the first test during the broadcast. After learning about the rule, Go Jisun decided to make things much simpler. Since the evaluation of the losing contestants will not make it to the final version of the show, the judge allowed himself to be arrogant. The judges asked the last contestant to introduce himself. Joe Jongman was a line cook at Juoria restaurant for six years. His duties included being in charge of soups and hot food. Since the experts were not optimistic, they immediately admonished Joe Jongman. In their opinion, working for six years as a hot shop cook was a small advancement in his career. In six years, other talented chefs had achieved much more success than the second representative of Hotel Juoria. Joe Jongman, trying to dodge the harsh remark, explained that his hotel was very careful about Sunbei, which was why he was so slow to promote them. Kim Myung-shang asked a contestant to tell the story behind the chosen dish. Joe Jongman had not prepared an answer to such a question in advance. The chef could have told about the manhwa as Kang Sun-hong did. Of course, it wasn't the best idea, but no other story came to the chef's mind at that moment. Joe Jongman said that he cooked the ribs with barbecue sauce and grilled shrimp after seeing it in the manhwa. According to Joe Jongman, this is a dish that the main character made. The second ridiculous story of the day, experts were not ready to hear. The mention of comic books angered the experienced chefs. Song Yoon Ju immediately realized that the guy in front of her was also from the four-star Jewelria Hotel. The woman, not wanting to delay the final stage, said that they didn't care about the story as much as they cared about the taste. An optimistic Jo Jongman understood that such behavior from the experts did not bode well for him. Nevertheless, all the jurors were obliged by the rules of the show to proceed with the tasting. Gu Jisun was the first to decide to try the manwa dish. After the first bite, the expert's face changed drastically. It was clear that the taste of the competition dish not only failed to impress the expert, but also left a negative impression. Kim Myung-shang decided to start with the shrimp, while Son yun ju didn't even touch the food. It only took one look at the dish for the woman to question the quality of its preparation. Jogman sincerely didn't understand why the experts were so reluctant to taste his dish. At first, the young chef thought it was all about appearance, but unfortunately that was not the case. Trying to save his position, Joe Jogman announced to the judges that he had prepared something else for them. For the cooks, Joe Jolman was ready to sing a song, a reworking of one military song. The experts were outraged by the young man's behavior. Joe Jongmanch disregarded the objections of the jury and decided to sing his war song after all. Song Yunju was the most disappointed. She considered the young man's behavior to be disrespectful and tried to stop the tasting. Go Jisun also had something to say. The second representative of the hotel was unable to prepare the dish well. Moreover, the cook was not even familiar with even basic cooking. Gu Jisun considered the careless behavior with the food as an insult. The man decided to find out how Joe Jongman prepared the competition dish. It turned out that the chef did not have enough time to make the preparation of ingredients for further cooking. Also, Joe Jongman cooked the meat for only 20 minutes, which, according to experienced chefs, was unacceptable. There was still blood on the meat, even with the naked eye you could see it. Also, the chef's big mistake was not removing the odor. Joe Jongman simply poured riced wine and boiled the meat with it. What the experts couldn't believe was that the guy in front of them had six years of experience in a hotel restaurant. 
instead of rice wine, they should have used soju. If you boil it with spices like bay, garlic, and pepper, the foul odor could have been easily eliminated. The experts also noted that the pork ribs with fried shrimp were not cooked to perfection. The jury also had a lot of questions about the compatibility of the products. It was clear that John Jongman did not think his dish through before cooking. The experts opened the chef's eyes to his unprofessionalism. Of course, Joe Jongman expected to get high results, but now even his further participation in the project remained in doubt. After the last participant left, the experts continued their discussion. The jury did not understand how the hotel could allow such an injustice because a person who cooks worse is ranked higher than a talented chef. It would be difficult for the hotel to admit such a mistake. Sun Yunju was sure that the job of head chef was no joke, but Go Jisun assured that not only the job of the head chef was difficult. In his opinion, the sunbays who are above the head chef are also having a hard time. Go Jisun blamed himself for expecting something from a four-star hotel. While Jo Jongman was taking part in the first challenge, Kang Sun Hoon was studying a recipe book he had inherited from his father. The recipes in this book had been collected by the boy's father for decades all over the world. With the help of this information, Kang Sun Hoon hoped to win the finals. Jo Jongman returned to the room. It was clear from the look on his face that the test had not been passed. The cook himself didn't say anything about it, only mentioning that he missed home a lot. Jo Jongman offered his roommate to beat the competition dish, but Kang Sung Hoon refused, explaining that he was also full. There would be tasks again tomorrow, so both cooks needed a good rest. After dealing with the substandard dish, the guys went to bed. The next morning, Kang Sung Hoon was ready to wow the experts with his next dish. Jo Jongman, unlike his neighbor, was not so optimistic. The chef hadn't been able to sleep a wink all night. Kang Sun Hoon asked his partner to pull himself together as the program was starting again and they both needed to be in good shape. The best chef show had prepared a huge hall and a spacious clean kitchen for the arrival of the chefs. The chefs remarked that there was so much space as if they were now in a banquet hall. Kim Myung-shang announced that it was in this modern kitchen that the second phase of the challenge would take place. The second task was to make Naemian. The chefs had to work as a team. The second challenge surprised all the participants. The chefs had to cook Nenmian as a team. The next challenge puzzled the show director a bit because it was originally conceived in a completely different way. It was time for the introduction of the main sponsor of the project. The mini kitchen was suitable for absolutely everyone. Its classic style interior would be to the taste of even the most demanding customers. The second test will be evaluated not only by the main experts, but also by a specially invited guest. The CEO of the company was interested in the new project and decided to take part in it personally. Kim Myung-shung invited the special guest to explain the rules of the second task. According to the flowchart, the chefs had to prepare a bowl of naemian and present it to the judges. A time limit was adopted for this challenge. The chefs had to take no more than 30 minutes to prepare the dish. Four teams would be judged together, one team out of four would be eliminated. The type of ninmian the contestants had to cook was not important. But there is one but, the noodles must be cooked exclusively by hand. Violation of this regulation would result in immediate expulsion from the project. Kang Sun Han knew that making the dough by hand in a team effort would require a lot of attention. First, the participants need to choose who will focus on the noodles and who will focus on the broth. Then they have to decide what kind of ninian they want to make. Since all the rules were known to the participants, we could move on to the challenge itself. The cooks were allowed to use the refrigerators and ingredients that are to the left and right of the front door. The grain flour, which would be the main ingredient of the noodles, was placed on the table in front of the refrigerator. The experts announced the start of the second trial. Kang Sun Hung was trying to decide the best place to start preparing the dish. Considering the comments about the hand noodles, he realized that he should focus on them. Joe Jongman disagreed with his partner's decision. The chef wanted to make naemian with regular buckwheat noodles, and he left the broth preparation to Kang Sun Hoon. Since Kang Sun Hoon's position was lower than his partner's, he could not cross him. He had to accept that the naemian would be made of buckwheat noodles. The only thing left to figure out was what kind of naemian the team at Hotel Jewelria should make. Joe Jongman was sure that Naemian was just Naemian, 
and there was no need for Kang Sung Hoon to waste his time with useless questions. All of Joe Jongman's knowledge of noodles ended at two cooking methods, with water and without water. Since the team decided to use buckwheat flour in the noodles, Kang Sun Hoon wanted to make makbuksu. The guy didn't want to find out the relationship with the second chef on live TV. For starters, Kang Sun Hoon won't be able to make Don Chimmy, so he decided to take it ready. The organizers must know that the team can't make Don Chimmy since it was already prepared in the fridge. Kang Sun Hoon was left to choose the necessary ingredients for the broth. The brisket and tenderloin were of high quality. That was the standard, but the garlic, green onions and onions had to be selected in a special way. Kang Sun Hoon had never had to use all these ingredients in Nanlian before. Zhou Zhongmen didn't encourage experimentation in the kitchen, and besides, the team didn't have much time left. Zhou Zhongmen felt like he was making the same mistake now that he had made yesterday. The chef was afraid of misallocating time and embarrassing himself in front of his junior partner. But luck was not on the side of the team from Hotel Jewelria. Problems arose with the preparation of the dough, the main ingredient in the cold noodles. While Zhou Zhongmen struggled with the noodles, Kang Sun Hoon continued to make the broth. Since there wasn't much time left, the cook decided to cut the meat into small pieces. Once the meat was cooked, Kang Sun Hoon could use it for garnish. All the ingredients were put into a pot and put on the fire. Kang Sun Hoon was only worried that the head chef had used up all the time allotted for cooking the noodles, so he would have to do the side dish alone. To prepare the side dish, Kang Sun Hong took a small pot. He boiled the eggs in water with salt and vinegar. A stock of radish also served the cook well as a nice addition to the noodles. Kang Sun Hoon had everything ready. The main problem turned out to be the noodles that Zhou Zhongmen had vouched to cook. It turned out that the senior chef didn't know how to work with dough. Zhou Zhongmen only used buckwheat flour alone instead of mixing it with starch. Kang Sun Hoon explained that if only buckwheat flour was used, it would be hard to make noodles by hand because there was little gluten in the dough. Since there was little time left, it was no longer possible to remake the dough. Therefore, Kang Sun Hoon personally took it on to make it right. The chef had some potato starch stashed away for a special occasion, but the noodles wouldn't be ready in time even if Kang Sun Hoon started cooking them right away. The team only had 10 minutes left, and unfortunately, that time flew by. The judges announced the end of the second trial. The teams only had to wait for the invitation and present their dishes to the experts. The other contestants looked arrogantly at the representatives of Hotel Jewelria. They were sure that thanks to these guys, they would be able to keep their place in the project. The experts started the tasting. The first to present their dish was a team from Hotel Prisha. The cold noodles did not impress the experts as the cooks simply used their typical cooking school style of ham and naemion. The contestants used sweet potato starch to make their noodles. Although the dish was prepared according to all the rules and standards, it had no memorable flavor. Neither the noodles, nor the broth, nor any other ingredients had anything special about them. Nevertheless, the team from Hotel Prisha received a score of 75. The second team presented Pibbent Namian. Although the ingredients of this dish did not have its own twist, the end result exceeded the chef's expectations. Thus, the team deservedly received 80 points. The third team represented the Elms Hotel. They had a McPooks for the experts. Zhou Zhongman, who was observing the test, wanted to reproach the chefs for not knowing the traditions, but Kang Sun Hun explained that Mei Kuxu also belongs to the cold noodle family. The third team managed to win the favor of the experienced experts. This team's noodles were characterized by their elasticity. The experts agreed that the buckwheat flour itself was of high quality, but the cooks also worked hard to do their job. The experts noted that only the third team managed to recognize their wishes. The chefs from the Elms Hotel received their well-deserved 90 points. This was the highest score of the three teams. The original rankings could have been changed by the fourth team from Hotel Jewelria. Ji Hai hoped that the last chefs would fail the second test with a bang. The team from Hotel Prisha had the lowest score, and it was the team that was in danger of being eliminated from the project. Seo Ji Ha, unhappy with the test results, announced to her partner that if their team was eliminated, they would definitely break up. John Hai Min confidently led the cooking, so all the responsibility rested on his shoulders. 
The man assured his lover that they would definitely make it to the next stage since nothing good should be expected from a third-rate hotel team. Kang Sun-hoon and Jo Jong-min found themselves in a difficult position. The team before them had already presented a dish with buckwheat noodles and therefore it was doubly difficult for the latter chefs to surprise the experts. The jury proceeded with the tasting. Kang Sun-hung carefully watched the experts' reactions. To his surprise, Gu Jisong even smiled and the other experts whispered amongst themselves. The judges only had one question for the team, which chef made such good noodles? Kang Sun-hoon didn't know how to give him the right answer, Sun Bai Jong-min had prepared the base of the dough, but Kang Sun-hoon had to remake it. Jong-min never burdened himself with long thoughts. Besides, he really wanted to stand out from his younger and inexperienced partner. Jong-min announced to the judges that making the perfect noodles was entirely due to him. To the senior chef's surprise, the experts did not appreciate the hand-cooked noodles, because the team had little time left, it was customary to cook the noodles quickly and at a high temperature, so they remained raw inside. Huo Jisun blamed the senior chef for irresponsible behavior in the kitchen. Zhang Men, realizing that he couldn't expect praise, decided to shift all the blame to Kang sung -hun. The senior chef claimed that he was making the broth and garnish while his partner was trying to knead the dough. Kang sung -hun couldn't object, because then the situation of the team from Hotel Juorio would be worse than it was now. Jongmin should have just stood there and remained silent instead of starting to make excuses. Of course, if there was no broadcast, Kang Sunhan would have allowed himself to appease his annoying partner. But right now, he didn't have that opportunity. Kang Sunhun had to admit that he was the one who made the bad noodles. Guo Jisong again came to the conclusion that all four-star hotels were exactly as he had imagined. Often in such hotels, the talented chefs are just kitchen assistants because of their cooking skills. Kang Sun Hoon already seen Dodd when he said he learned how to cook from Manwa. But he was good at making Tokalbi, and the lotus leaf dessert was pretty good too. But still, contestants Jo Jongmin and Kang Sun Hoon from Jewelry Hotel were obliged to leave the project. Go Jisun was on his way to rip off their name tags, but Kim Manson intervened. Manson declared that the explanation he just heard and the things he saw with his own eyes are completely different. Jo Jongmin said that contestant Kang sun -hoon was responsible for the noodles and he was responsible for the broth and garnish, but Kim myung shin saw that the broth and garnish were exactly what Kang sun -hoon had prepared. Kim myung shang suggested that maybe he was mistaken, but it was easy to clarify the real situation with video cameras. Jo Jongmin, still trying to put the blame on someone else, stated that Kang sung hoon had forcibly taken the dough away from him. It was clear to all the experts that Zhou Zhongmen had not put the slightest bit of effort into kneading the dough. When choosing the flour, he had chosen just buckwheat flour without a second thought. This was the reason why the dough was clumpy and easy to tear. The team was running out of time, but the noodles were still not ready. Kim Myung-chang suggested that contestant Kang sun hoon had an argument with his partner and decided to fix the dough. Realizing that there was no more room for denial, Jo jong -min admitted his guilt and apologized to the experts. Jo jong -min apologized for preventing the experts and crew from finishing the second challenge with his behavior. Still, the senior chef had to leave the best chef show. Go Jisun ripped the guy's name tag off. That meant that Jo jong -min no longer dared to participate in the project. Go Jio sung turned to Kang sung hoon The man was sure that because of the senior chef's behavior, Kang sung hoon was in a situation where he too should be held accountable. The junior chef admitted that he had expected more from the ordeal, and now he was extremely disappointed. The experts tried to find out what caused Kang sung hoons disappointment. Guo Jisun suggested that it was because the senior chef messed up the dish and tried to cheat. But Kang sun Hoon refuted the expert's assumptions. The young chef was upset that he didn't get to show what he was truly capable of. Kang sun Hoon regretted the missed opportunity to realize his dream. The boy was disappointed in himself. Go Jisun asked Kang sun Hoon not to underestimate himself after all, the tokalbi that was cooked yesterday turned out to be an excellent dish. First, Contestant Jo Jongmin cooked undercooked pork ribs, and now he presented the experts with substandard naemian. Guo Jisun assured that that tokalbi was an obvious fluke, and this naemian speaks eloquently about the level of the hotel. 
Hotel Juoria demonstrated the worst teamwork. Whilst Nick Kang Sun Hoon will be eliminated along with contestant Jo Jongman. This is the decision that Go Jisun made. But Song Yoonju, as the second expert, was not in agreement with her colleague's opinion. The rest of the jury didn't like Go Jisun deciding everything for them. They also wanted to take part in judging the contestants. The woman was sure that the tests passed were not enough to judge the contestants' true abilities. Go Jisung continued to assure that there was no point in wasting his time evaluating the cooks from a third-rate hotel. Sun Yoonju interrupted her colleague again because the broth and side dish that Kang Sun Hoon made was really good. Kim Myung-sheng also appreciated the young chef's efforts. As expected from an unusual contestant, the broth came out beautifully. Kang Sun Hoon used brisket and chicken to prepare the dish. The chicken immediately caught the chef's eye as soon as he opened the refrigerator to find the ingredients for the broth and garnish. Kang Sun Hoon used the chicken and brisket to make traditional Pyongyangian. To get rid of the strong odor of the broth, he added pepper, bay leaves, and boiled everything thoroughly. Sun Yoonju boldly rated the tried and true dish at 85. Kim Myung-shan regretted that the hand-pulled noodles failed the chefs, but the garnish and broth were the backbone of this dish. The judges didn't understand why Go Jisun continued to believe in not rating the representatives of Hotel Jewelria. The man clearly had his own agenda because he didn't want to agree with the fair opinion of the rest of the jury. He didn't understand why the experts were so bold to challenge him. Go Jisun announced that his decision remained the same. Since the noodles were served raw, this dish cannot be considered complete. So, no matter how high scores the other jurors give the team, Hotel Jewelria still has the lowest scores of all the teams. Guo Jisun continued to insist that contestant Kang Sun Hoon should leave the battle. Kang Sun Hoon had been going after his dream for too long. His father had willed him to become a good chef before he died. And now that the young man has made it to the most famous show, he can't give up so easily. Kang Sun Hoon turned to the judges, hoping they won't dismiss his hotel. Even if it's a four-star hotel, it's still a good hotel and cares about its customers. Jo Jongman was described by Kang Sun Hoon as a very good person. Kang Sun Hoon was sure that he had made a mistake by being under the scrutiny of the cameras. But Gu Jisun was not even willing to listen to the guy. The man rudely asked the cook and returned the name tag. Luckily, Kang Sun Hoon had handled the previous challenge perfectly and now he had immunity from being eliminated, which he wanted to make sure to use. Gu Jisun forgot to stipulate for the immunity situation and therefore couldn't object to anything in front of the cameras. Participant Kang Sun Hoon will not be eliminated. The cook from Jewelry Hotel and the rest of the contestants can now go back to their rooms and prepare for the next challenge. Jo Jongmin has also been instructed to return to his room and gather his belongings. In the evening, the senior chef can go home on the bus provided to him by the show. On the same day, Jo Jongman was expected to return home. Kang Sun Hoon went outside to see his partner off. The guy hoped that after what happened, his neighbor would learn to be honest. If Jo Jongman didn't get rid of this habit, karma would come back to bite him. Sitting on the bus, Jongman recalled how he had told the whole neighborhood that he was sure to be on TV. The chef was afraid of embarrassment, so he decided to block all his friends on social media. Go Jisun was relaxing in his hotel room. The man was uneasy about Kim Myung-sheng abruptly taking part in the fight. After being driven by all that foreign nonsense, he dared to appear on the show. Go Jisun was sure that his colleague didn't have to argue with him, but just silently agreed. Kim Myung-sheng would definitely analyze all the words and distort them and then use them against Go Jisun. There was a knock on the room. When Go Jisun opened the door, he saw a cinnamanson on the threshold. At such a tense moment, Go Jisung didn't want to see his main enemy, but Kim Myung Shang insisted on coming through. He had something to say to Go Jisung. Kim Myung Shang wanted to understand why his colleague did that during today's show. The strange judging of the first jury was not unnoticed by anyone. Kim Myung Shang suspected that Go Ji Sung intentionally didn't award a single point to the Jewelry Hotel team. Go Ji Sung was already tired of this kind of topic and once again reiterated that his judging was fair. Cold raw noodles cannot be regarded as a complete and quality dish. Guo Ji explained to the contestants in detail their task to make the noodles by hand. 
they should have heeded all of his advice carefully, then no team would be disqualified. Kim Myung-shang didn't understand what his colleague was trying to accomplish. Go Jisun's complaint was only about the handmade noodles, but on the show, it was announced that the contestants should make cold noodles specifically to evaluate the broth while they were focused on making the noodles. And it was Go Jisun who came up with the broth idea. That's why his strange behavior made Kim Myung-shang and Song Yoon-ju suspicious. Go Ji-sun was already angry, so he decided to remind them of how he had been humiliated for 15 years in America. The man felt it was his duty to prevent Kang sun kun from proving himself on this project. Go Ji-sun assured that the guy was only pretending to be a junior line cook. After all, his first presentation of a dish was extremely different, even from that of experienced chefs. His ability to combine foods spoke of incredible skill that couldn't be acquired in four years of training at a tertiary hotel. Guo Jisun asked his colleague not to give this strange young man a chance as he would leave early. At least Guo Jisun once again asked Kim Myung-shan to keep this in mind and not disrupt his plans. The conversation between the two colleagues didn't go well. Kim Myung-shan still didn't understand what Guo Jisun was trying to accomplish. A chef can only be expelled for culinary ability. To exclude a chef because of his background is discrimination. It was strictly stipulated in the rules of the show that the judges evaluate the contestants based solely on the taste and appearance of the dishes prepared. Kim Myung-shang also pointed out that his colleague gave perfect scores to contestant Gojo, even though his cold noodles were not worthy of receiving a high score. Go Jisun decided to briefly answer all the questions. The man explained that Korea has different routines, they are different from what happens in America. Kim Myung-shang and Go Jisun are inherently different. One has a solid foundation in Korea, and he can even become a politician with today's broadcast results. Therefore, he needs to make the right decisions. No matter which side he is on, the most important thing is to show good results. Go Jisun will be supporting contestant Jo Ha. Kim Myung-shang, wanting to restore justice, said that he, in turn, would continue to support the other contestant. Of course, Go Ji-sun couldn't accept his colleague's decision. He knew that a strong participant like Kang sun hoon would definitely mess up his plans. In addition, Kim myung shangs patronage had a certain effect. If the chef saw potential in a contestant, he would definitely take on the task of developing him. Kim myung shang noted that Kang sun hoon was attentive to his part of the job and did his best to correct the senior chef's mistake. Yes, the team at Juoria Hotel failed to complete the dish, but at the same time, Kang sun hoon calmly accepted everything on par with his son Bo's mistakes. Despite the difficulties, he had a confident look. Kim Menson would like to see the junior chef grow up, so he began to support him. Go ji Sung slapped the table in a frenzy. One was sure that Kim Myung-shan was just out of his mind for daring to say such stupid things. But Kim Myung-shan was fully aware of himself. He wasn't going to let his colleague decide everything in this competition. The first task was to name the ingredients, and it was Go Jisun who started the surprise test on the second day, so he has no right to call this competition fair. If Go Jisun tries to change Kim Myung-shan's decision, he can safely start worrying about the Hilton Hotel. Kim Myung-shan had said everything he wanted to say, and so there was nothing else keeping him in Go Ji-sung's room. The man hoped that his colleague would eventually understand and appreciate the sincerity towards the talented contestants. But Gu Ji-sung was not interested in kind displays of affection. He was pursuing his own goals and didn't care about the other contestants. Before the third trial, the entire crew decided to hold a meeting. Sun Mi had an interesting suggestion for the script. Since there were many times fewer participants, the girl suggested choosing the main character. It was a good suggestion, because choosing those participants who have commercial value is not a bad decision. The director also expected that the program might have personal stories in the future. This method is used in programs that have low viewer interest. This way, the show will be able to be more detailed when the number of viewers increases. This is why choosing the main characters is so important. There was a commotion because of today's cold noodle task, so all the attention was turned to contestant Kang Sunhua. He had already had an interview where Sun Mai suspected the guy of hiding something. Sun Mei, as an experienced journalist, made inquiries on him and found out that the guy's mother suffers from a rare disease. He visits her regularly. 
the director thought this could be a great idea for a story. The other workers had their own suggestions too. One of the girls was sure that contestant Go Chongta would also be able to attract the viewer's attention. He has the highest scores and his hotel is famous. The role of a model contestant suits him very well. The director wasn't sure, but it looks like Kang Sun Hoon and Gu Chongtai at the same age. Plus, they know each other. Now the crew had to decide whether to present them as competitors or best friends. A junior chef in a hotel with difficult circumstances versus a chef in an upscale hotel. Both guys fit perfectly into the proposed images, so the director decided to leave it at that for starters. The director was distracted from the interview by a message, after reading which the man hurriedly left. When he left, the director instructed Sun Mei to follow Kang Sung Hoon when he visited his mother. The crew had organized the script, and now it was necessary to summarize the results. After the meeting, Sun Mi had some free time left. The girls knew about Kang Sun Hoon's schedule, and according to it, the guy had to go to the hospital soon. A text message arrived on Sun Mi's phone. It turned out to be Kang Sun Hoon's. The guy needed to be away on business this weekend. Sun Mei, as one of the people in charge of the show, had to know the location of all the contestants. He explained that he needed to visit his mom in the hospital. Suman realized that she had an opportunity to gather valuable material for the project. The girl revealed that she didn't have any plans for the weekend either. Kang Sun Hoon was happy that he would be able to get away from the set. The guy hadn't seen his mom in a few days, and with her rare disease, it was a real problem. If the guy managed to win the TV show, he would be able to earn the necessary amount of money that he would spend on his mother's treatment in the future. Sun Mi directly offered to Kang Sun Hoon to film him in the hospital. The girl explained that the project needed more stories from his personal life. Of course, Kang Sun Hoon was puzzled by such an offer. He thought that flaunting his personal life was unacceptable. But since the guy was forced to do it, he expected to at least get a certain amount of money for it. Sung Mei, upon hearing about the payment, was very surprised. She had never had to pay anyone for an interview before. On the weekend, the entire crew went to the city hospital. Kang Sun Hoon was very nervous because he had never had to interact with his mom in the crosshairs of the cameras before. Schumann was also somewhat embarrassed by this kind of assignment from the director. She knew that interviewing a sick person would not be easy, but Kang Sun Hoon's question about payment finally knocked the girl out. Before Sun Mei could get her thoughts in order, Kang Sun Hoon again started talking about payment. The girl explained that all the funds would be transferred to the account after today's broadcast, but the guy insisted that they be transferred today. It was still a mystery to Sun Mei why the young man was so obsessed with the fee. She admitted that she felt uncomfortable whenever money was involved. Suman promised to ask the director about the fee right before he left. Kang Sun Hoon did receive his advance payment of 100,000 won after all. The rest of the amount would be transferred after the broadcast aired. Kang Sun Hoon was very grateful to Su Min and the entire crew, and he needed the money now more than ever. Kang Sun Hoon and the whole crew were already rushing to the city hospital. Su Min, wasting no time, decided to start the interview while still on the bus. The girl was wondering when the mother and the cook got sick. It turned out that Kang Sun Hoon's mother had already been bedridden for three years. The woman was suffering from complex regional pain syndrome. This is a disease that causes pain to the body for no reason. Usually, the mother was at home because there is no way to cure it. But recently, she was hospitalized. Because she was hospitalized, Kang Sun Hoon visited her regularly. It was a huge luck for the guy to finally be able to visit her because of the competition schedule that coincided with the visiting day. Suman listened to Kang Sun Mi's story about her sick mother with concern. In her busy life, she rarely had to focus on other people, so these moments were always very difficult for her. The film crew arrived at the city hospital. In the lobby of the building, they were already greeted by Jin, Kang Sun Hoon's younger sister and mother. The woman was wearing casual clothes and was preparing to be discharged. She was very surprised to see the presence of cameras. Kang Sun Hoon explained that the camera crew that was filming the pageant and also wanted to film him visiting the hospital as well. Suman, looking at Kang Sun Hoon's mother, became more and more doubtful of the principal's scheme. She thought it was wrong that the show would so easily exploit the plight of a sick person for the sake of increasing viewership. 
the mother was suffering from complex regional pain syndrome. Her entire body was in bandages and bandages for pain. She could no longer move around and was in a wheelchair all the time. The cameraman reminded some men to take permission before filming. The journalist introduced herself and asked her mother and sister for permission to be interviewed. The mother was very happy to participate in her son's project. While the woman was chatting with the reporter, the sister told Kang Sunwoo that his mom was discharged today, but she still needed to pay for treatment. Since the guy had received an advance fee, the family had the means to pay for the treatment. Before the woman was discharged, she had to be examined by a doctor again. Since the disease was rare, these examinations were a mere formality. Even the most experienced doctors could no longer offer action on a hobby. After filming the necessary material, the crew decided to call it a day, and only Suming wanted to find out some more information. Kang Sun Hoon needed to pay for the treatment, so he asked his colleague to look after his sick mother. Left alone, the women got into a conversation. The mother wanted to know how Kang Sun Hoon passed the preliminary test. Sun Mi told her that he had passed not only the first test, but also the second test. Consul Han had a great chance of making it to the finals and holding on to win there. The woman wanted to know when she could attend the broadcast of the finals. Suman explained that it is not necessary to attend the set to see the final, but in a difficult moment, mother wanted to be with her son and support him. This time, the sister wanted to personally pay off all of her mother's medical debts. But the payment on her card didn't go through. The funds were not enough. Kang Sun Hoon originally didn't want his sister to pay for the treatment, but still decided to give her a chance to take care of her mother. When the card payment didn't go through, Kang Sun Hoon paid for the treatment in cash. The sister once again apologized to Brother Zato for not being able to pay for her mother's treatment. He assured her that there was no problem. Even though there wasn't much money left after paying the medical expenses, he decided to give it to her, to his sister. It was an advance payment that he received for the interview, and as the guy himself thought this money was not as important to him as it was to his family. Now Summon finally understood why the guy cared so much about the advance payment. When Summon asked the guy what his goal for the competition was, he confidently said that he was going to take first place. But in reality he is aiming at the money games. At the street end he said goodbye to his mom he needed to return to the dormitory to continue participating in the competition in the future. Kang Sun Hoon promised that he would do his best to win. His mother looked admiringly at her son and didn't dare to doubt him. After the second stage, Johan was in a bad mood. She was worried about her future participation in the project. Thanks to the failed performance of the Jewelria Hotel team, Song Jong Ha and Ji Hai had a chance to stay in the show. Team Persia came in second to last place in terms of points, which means they have to cook a very special dish in the next round. John Hai tried to support his lover, but Jae Hai was adamant. Today, the couple celebrated their 100-day anniversary, a very important relationship date for all Koreans. Ji Hai was completely unable to enjoy her celebration, all her thoughts were occupied with the previous challenge, which she managed to pass only thanks to luck. The Prezia Hotel team had the lowest score among the three teams, if Kang Sun Hoon hadn't made that mistake, the girl would have been eliminated for sure. It was hard for her to realize that the Prezia Hotel's sous chef was losing to the assistant chef. When Jae Ha was fed up with the guy, she retired to her room. The guy didn't understand why the girl was doing this to him. Just yesterday, they were making plans for the future together, and today she leaves without wanting to listen to him. The guy assumed that his lover was so influenced by the results of yesterday's assignment or Kang Sun Hun himself. He was sure that Kang Sun Hun was the culprit and vowed to take revenge on his rival. The program crew was now preparing for the third stage of the test. The director arrived on the set. His tired look immediately made Sun May wonder. The girl assumed it was due to the urgent assignment the director had received the day before. After the principal left the meeting, he headed to Go Jisun's room. Go Jisun decided to dispense with formal greetings and got straight to the point. The man spoke frankly about how he wanted to change judges because working with Kim Myungshin was no longer possible. The director heard such demands and was horrified. To make such a change when two episodes of the show had been filmed, no one would think of making such a change. The director didn't understand why Go Jisung had only told him now. 
They had been working with Kim Myongshan for a few days now, and aside from the evaluation period, the two of them hadn't even seen each other. Besides, even if the men didn't know how incompatible their outlooks on life would be when the show first started, now it's too late and the director won't be able to kick out a few judges. The success of any program depends solely on the subjective opinion of the audience. If more than one judge leaves the show, the reaction of the viewers will be terrible. And the government is watching the show. The director wanted to just continue working on his project, but Go Jison thought his decision was the only right one. In an attempt to change Hudson's mind, the director recalled a story about a man who advertised a store selling imported meat and deceived his customers by telling them it was a domestic product while the whole crew was pretending that their meat was from Korea, but later the crime was discovered and the program was cancelled. After that incident, the director had to work hard to protect Sun from the consequences of taking bribes from the store. Gongsun remembered the favor that the director had done for him during that difficult time, but he still didn't want to consider the director's opinion. The director drew Suman's attention away and asked her to contact the installation team. The man didn't want to explain to her the reason for his tired appearance. She didn't understand what the whole crew was needed for now. The director explained that the project needed to change the editing style. Now there was no need to get out scenes as a judge from Jason swearing Suman knew about the ethics of television programs, was troubled by the decision of her director. The girl knew that the Communications Commission would definitely not approve the TV show, but the director assured that the project is supported by the government, so the commission will certainly turn a blind eye. It was time for the finals, all the contestants who had coped with the previous tests were already preparing for a new battle. In the final, the judges were going to test the chefs on their knowledge of the basics from the very beginning. The experts were sure that the chefs never had to kill a living creature with their own hands to cook something from it. Point. Such a statement of the jury alarmed the participants of the project. Literally in a minute in front of them stood a van loaded to the top with live birds. So, the first task of the final, to catch and cook a chicken. As soon as the task starts, each participant must go to the truck and pick up a chicken. Each participant had to memorize that the task will only start when the chicken is successfully caught. Cooks are free to use the cooking stations behind them. There is 40 minutes to complete the task. The final challenge starts right now. The cooks rush to catch the birds. The odor on the premises, the set was just awful. The contestants had to overcome themselves just to get on with the challenge. One of the chefs injured himself on the claws of a chicken while trying to catch it. Go Jison, noticing that one of the contestants had hurt himself, immediately went to him. After examining the wound, the man advised the cook to go to the medical center, which was located behind the truck. After the cook received medical attention, he was required to return to the hotel and gather his belongings. The participant did not understand the reason why he was obligated to leave the project. Gojison explained that when the first task started, everyone without exception needed to catch a chicken. The injured cook did his best. Song Yoon-ju didn't understand why all these people were having such a hard time with the first final challenge. Perhaps it's because chefs work in hotels and people don't catch chickens on their own these days. Gojison admitted that he's actually now reflecting on the fact that the last time he caught a chicken on his own was 10 years ago. This will definitely be new to young chefs. And even if young chefs are unaccustomed to sourcing ingredients themselves, there's nothing experts can do about it. This time, Go Jison didn't hold back thanks to the task that Sun Yoon Joon came up with. The objective of this challenge is to eliminate as many people as possible. So this is the perfect trial to fulfill Go Jisung's goal. The Persia Hotel team, like the other participants, struggled to complete the first trial. Since the work was individual, each of the participants had to catch their own chicken. The girl had never had to catch a bird before, so she didn't even know which side to take it from. Kang Sun-hong explained that first the chicken should be grabbed by the legs and then turned sharply upside down, only then could the bird be neutralized. At first the girl thought the cook was helping her, but Kang Sun-hoon explained that she was creating a line for other people. Kang Sun-hoon didn't want to see how the girl would fall behind, looking at the people around her making mistakes. Kang Sun-hoon was able to catch the chicken so quickly because he just watched some videos of other people doing it. The real problem was how to kill the bird. Before taking the chicken's life, 
Kang Sun-hoon decided to watch its last memories. While looking through the memories, the cook closed his eyes. Of course, Gu Jisun immediately seized the opportunity and turned to the participant. Gu Jisun didn't understand what Kang Sun-hoon's hiccup was about. But the expert managed to pick on that as well. Gu Jisun realized that the chef from the Jewelry Hotel wouldn't just give up, so he offered to kill the chicken right in front of him. Since it was already too late to retreat, Kang sun Hum promised to fulfill the chief's instructions right away. Go Jisun was looking for a real reason to exclude Kang sun Hoon from participating in the funnel of the project. The man suggested that the chef wouldn't have the courage to kill a live chicken. Kang sun Hoon saw that the expert was eagerly waiting for the cook to make a mistake for some reason. The most important thing in such a situation was to keep one's composure. Kang sun Hum would take his time and repeat everything that the man did from the chicken's memories. To begin with, it is necessary to turn the head of the bird and cut its throat. Then take it and hold it upside down to let the blood run off. If the water is already hot enough, turn down the heat to medium, submerge the drained chicken in the water, and only take the bird out of the water after 10 minutes so that it doesn't have time to fully cook. Kang Sun Hong prepared a bowl in advance in which he would place the chicken for later cutting. After the bird was scalded, the feathers must be carefully pulled out and the plucked feathers must be disposed of. When Kang Sun Hong was done with plucking the feathers, he cut the leg joints to remove the feet. The last thing left to do was to gut the chicken. Kang Sun Hong put on his gloves and proceeded to the next step of gutting the chicken. First, he had to cut the front of the chicken from the top of the breast to the base of the tail. Then cut off the tail and slowly slide my hand into the chicken to remove the insides. The gallbladder can burst, so the cook needs to be very careful. Once the insides have been removed from the chicken, the carcass should be rinsed with water to remove any residue. The chicken is ready. Kang Sun Hong did a brilliant job with the first task of the finals. Guo Jisong looked at the chef and didn't understand how the rookie managed to handle the challenge so easily. Even though Kang Sun Hong had completed the task, he still kept catching the expert's scrutinizing gaze. Although the man was carefully watching the young chef's every move to make sure he saw any mistakes, but Gu Jisung was so absorbed in watching that he didn't even realize what Kang Sun Hoon had finished. There was no flaw in the cutting of the bird, and Gu Jisung simply had nothing to pick on. The other experts had already approached Kang Sun Hoon's workstation. Sun Yunju was delighted with the work they had done. Just a few minutes ago, she was sure that the new generation of chefs would never be able to get their own ingredients. The chicken was killed, and all the feathers were carefully removed. The guy managed to accomplish all this in 15 minutes, he is the fastest among the project participants. Since Kang Sun Hong did his job perfectly, the experts were just obliged to let him through to the next stage. Since there was nothing to pick on, the chef automatically became a participant of the second stage of the project finals, the other contestants could only envy the success of their colleague. Some contestants followed Kang sung as they approached the next challenge. But still, most of them did not move forward. Many of the chefs had no idea how to carve a bird. Some contestants followed the others in the hope that they would be able to pass. John Ha saw a chef ahead of him who was successfully carving a chicken. He decided that since the person in front knew how to handle the bird, he could just follow him. Yoon sun of Berlis Hotel first ran a restaurant that was doing well, then running the place became difficult, well since she ran it without motivation or enthusiasm, she faced a lot more problems than she could. When she turned 40, she discovered a new dream, and that dream was to work as a chef in the most famous hotel. Ordinary people didn't have the opportunity to challenge themselves, but she was lucky. The head chef of the hotel appreciated her as a chef and agreed to train the woman. She continued to work under the head chef and in her 48 years, she was already working successfully as a chef. The woman was fortunate enough to participate in a top chef show, and it looks like she was lucky again. This time because they were tasked with cutting the meat, she had a clear advantage. The chef of the most popular hotel restaurant in the ranking also did well in the challenge. The woman looking at him doubted her abilities. Cooking chicken is her direct specialty and she's pretty sure the man behind her is copying everything she does. The woman can't let him see anything else, so she has to finish the task as quickly as possible. The man didn't understand why the contestant in front of him accelerated so quickly. 
he couldn't physically keep up with her movements. The woman vigorously plucked the chicken and gutted its insides. Chong Ha realized that he had no chance of winning, so he directly asked the woman to work slower so that they could advance to the next stage together. However, by the time this idea crossed John Ha's mind, the woman had already finished her task. The test for the woman had come to an end. The experts only had to evaluate the quality of the cutting before the contestant could go on to the next task. John He was furious when he realized that he had missed his last opportunity to become the winner of the finals. He didn't hold back and slammed the table with force. Of course, this behavior angered the jury, especially Go Jisong. He had spent the entire day eliminating contestants for the slightest mistake. When Go Jisung turned around, he saw John Ha. He apologized and explained that there was a bug on the table that had to be removed urgently. John Ha was sure that the woman was just trying to set him up, since she wouldn't have been able to get what she had now in a fair fight. The man had seen everything the other chef had done except for the last part, but still, even if he can't follow her, he shouldn't have to watch the process of others. Time is up, and the first trial of the finals has come to an end. Those contestants who were still working were obliged to stop and wait. There was no point. Whether all the chefs had finished or not, the experts would evaluate each work anyway. Minched and her mother arrived at the hotel. They had heard that this was where the second part of the finals would be held. Mom knew that Kang Sun Hoon was doing great since he was participating in a show that was held in such a great place. She was sure that when her children became independent and successful, she could take some of the responsibilities off her plate. Mom told her daughter that Jai Ha, Kang Sun Hoon's girlfriend, was also participating in the show. She often went to her mother's house, so the women knew each other well. Jai Ha also works as a chef, but only at a different hotel. Mother wondered if the young people had made the decision to participate together or if they were looking for an individual victory. Min Jae and her mother stopped in the lobby, afraid to interfere with the filming of the program. Then they saw the contestants who had successfully completed the first task of the finals coming out of the door. Ji Hae was the first to emerge from the door. The mother immediately recognized her as her son's girlfriend. Ji realized that Kang Sun Hoon had said absolutely nothing to his family about the fact that they hadn't been together for a long time. The situation was spoiled by John Ha, who walked up to Ji Ha and put his arm around her. He asked the woman not to act like she had already known Jai for a long time. Min Jae and her mother were horrified for they knew nothing about the young men's breakup. The ailing mother sought comfort. She hoped that the man now standing behind Ji Yi was just her close friend and not a boyfriend. John Ha, unlike his lover, was feeling cocky. He stated that he and Ji Yi had been together for a long time. The girl could no longer listen to the recriminations towards her sick mother. Chon Ha was unaware that the people in front of him were Kang Sun Hoon's family. The mother and daughter had come here to support their only loved one. The man rebuked them for continuing to pretend to be Ji Ha's family. The mother couldn't bear the blow that the stranger inflicted on her. It didn't take long for a rare disease to set in, and a woman required emergency hospitalization. Kang Sun Hoon, as soon as he saw that his mother was unwell, immediately rushed to call an ambulance to take her to the hospital. Kang Sun Hoon didn't let anyone hurt his sick mother, including his ex-girlfriend and her new lover. Ji Ha tried to apologize and pretend that they didn't know each other before, but John Ha interrupted her. He was sure that there was no blame on them. If Kang Sun Hoon had told his mother about the breakup earlier, none of this would have happened. The guy couldn't do it earlier because his mother couldn't be bothered. She had just gotten out of the hospital and needed special attention and care. Kang Sun Hoon gave the man one last warning and left. Sun Mei was going about her business when she suddenly witnessed the conflict between Kang Sun Hoon and John Ha. For a journalist, having the participants fight on the project was a great way to draw attention to themselves. John Ha didn't understand what Kang Sun Hoon was telling him. He was sure that he had nothing to do with the woman's ill health. Moreover, Zhang Ha was trying to convince those present that Kang Sun Hoon was behaving unworthily and that his stay on the project should be cancelled. Zhe Ha was well aware that this situation was becoming absurd, but she was unable to stop her lover. After the quarrel, Kang Sun Hoon made his way to his room. The guy didn't have the strength to fight in the next stage, but he promised his mother and father to do his best to succeed. 
Minji called from the hospital. Mom's condition remained grave, but the doctors assured that there was no need to worry. The woman would get a prescription for an injection and would feel much better afterward. Meijin also didn't understand why Kang Sun-hoon didn't tell them about breaking up with Jae-ha. The guy admitted that it had actually not even been a week since he ended his relationship with his lover. Because of Kang Sun-hoon's busy schedule, he couldn't find a moment to tell them all this. Menjin wondered who was the guy who dared to treat his sick mother so rudely. It wasn't in vain for Menjin to accuse Jiha of frivolous behavior because she had started dating another guy right after the breakup. Before ending the phone call, Kang Sun-hoon wanted to talk to his mom some more, but Menji refused his request. Her sister convinced her brother that her mom was fine and had nothing to worry about, and that Kang Sun-hoon should concentrate on the competition. Immediately after saying that, Menjin hung up the phone. Since his sister had never done this before, Kang Sun-hoon became even more worried. The only thing that comforted the guy was that Menjin was by his mom's side. And if the second one got worse, his sister would be able to call for help in time. Kang Sun-hoon could only rely on his sister. The second task of the finals required the boy's special attention and focus. Before going to bed, Kang Sun-hoon decided to flip through the book left by his father one more time. The radio announced that the second task of the finals for the past disciples would soon begin. All contestants needed to go to the lobby on the first floor. All the chefs had already gathered in the lobby, but the experts still hadn't shown up. Taking advantage of the hiccup before the challenge started, Kang Sun-hong decided to talk to his old buddy Guo Chomte. Guo Chomte had a premonition that they were both destined to meet in the finals. Kang Sun-hoon expected that they would be able to pull it off and advance to the next stage together. The guy was surprised when he realized that Gu Chongte was representing his hotel alone. The second chef was eliminated as early as the first trial of the finals. Considering that he had never carved chicken before, it's understandable why he was eliminated. No matter how adept he was at cooking, even Gu Chongte admitted that the task for the finals was very, very difficult. Since he hadn't had to work on ingredient preparation before, Kang sun Hum was very surprised at how his buddy knew the correct way to carve a bird. The guy didn't answer the question because he had something to hide. On the eve of the first challenge of the finals, the guy met with Go Jisun and he taught him the correct way to carve a chicken. Gentle Haya knew in advance what the first trial would be like, so he was well prepared for it. Kang sun Hum couldn't reveal his secret either, so he lied to Joni and said that he learned how to carve chicken in the army. Meanwhile, the judges arrived for the second task of the finals. Kang sun Hoon and Gu Jongta shook hands. This competition would be more difficult than the previous ones, and the friends promised each other to give it their best. Among all the competitors, Kang sun Hoon noticed a few familiar faces. It was Jung and Song from the Maidong Hotel. On the first day, there were a total of 200 participants, but now only 24 are still here. Now that there were so few contestants, Gu Jisun promised himself to be even stricter. The second task of the finals involved pair work. Two contestants would individually prepare a dish of their choice, then present them to the judges. The judges would taste both dishes and one of the two contestants would be eliminated. And according to the order in which this morning's task was completed, the contestants will be able to choose their opponent. The contestant who finished earliest, Kang sun Hun, was the first to choose his partner. Since Kang sun Hun had won first place in the previous chicken cooking competition, the judges gave him the right to choose his opponent for the next competition in the second round of the finals. Khan hesitated for a moment. An opponent. A person he wanted to compete with. Unexpectedly, Go Jun Ta raised his hand. The judges took notice and wanted to know what kind of question the young contestant had. He asked the esteemed referees if he had a chance to compete with contestant Kang sun -gun. They asked Go Jung Ta if there was a special reason why he wanted to compete with Kang sun -gun. He replied that he wanted to continue their competition that had started eight years ago, and Kang sun -gun would surely understand what this was about. The young assistant chef at the Jewelria Hotel realized that his old comrade was talking about the soldiers' cooking competition they had participated in eight years ago when Zhang Ta had won first place and he had won second place. But the current position is the opposite of what it was then. However, Zhang Ta is determined to win again. Now Sun Hun realized what that handshake in the hotel lobby meant. 
Guo Chisan, looking at his ward, scolded him mentally for all he was worth. What an idiot, this Guo Zhengi. He should have chosen as weak an opponent as possible. How could he pick the person who ranked first? Then he would be able to advance far, and in the future, Jisun could manipulate in every program so that Zhang Ta would always win. Song Yunrong asked Go Jun Ha if he was so confident since his opponent had won first place. The young chef replied that it didn't matter at all. Gu Jisun grabbed his head. What is he talking about? The judge turned to Kang Sunhan and asked him what he would do in this situation. The young man agonized. Compete against Go Jung Ta? He certainly thought about having another cooking competition with him, but that would be a strategically wrong choice at this moment. The third judge, Kim Myung Shang, turned to Kang Sun Kun and reminded him that he doesn't have to indulge in such provocations, and he has the right to choose any opponent for himself because he took first place in the previous competition. Kang Sun Hoon, looking into John Hyman's eyes, slowly mouthed that the person he wants to compete with right now works at the Prisha Hotel as a stew chef, and he wanted to know how good a person working at one of the top 20 hotels was. He Min looked at Sun Hoon angrily and wondered why this youngster was so confident. After all, he was just an apprentice chef in a third rate hotel. Preparing to shoot in the studio, the two opponents were not silent. John Hai Min was infuriated by the arrogance of that arrogant jerk. He told him that he didn't dare to judge and evaluate his abilities because Sun Hoon is from the Jewelry at Garbage Hotel, ranked hundredth among the hotel kitchens in the country. In addition, he is a junior in this third-rate hotel. How can he talk about wanting to know how good Jung Hai Min is? It seems to him that the reason for his choice is something else. He wants revenge on the man who stole his girlfriend. Sun Hoon replied that he had already told him about his indifference to the situation in the hotel lobby. And if Jung Hai Min didn't understand something, that's his problem. Right now, he really wants to know to what extent Su's chef Jung Hai Min is good. Or is it just one title? Infuriated by these words, the sous chef was about to turn a torrent of profanity in the direction of the offender when the director announced that the group was ready to start shooting. All the participants got ready. On the cart in front of them was an object covered with a black cloth. Guo Jisun solemnly announced that the object hidden in front of them would be the topic of this competition. One of the themes, Kang Sun Hoon and John Hai Min approached the cart. They were asked if they could tell what ingredients were hidden under the black cloak. The contestants were silent, each thinking about something else. Guo Jisun threw off the cloth with a theatrical gesture and said that the topic of the contest was the chickens they had cut up earlier and the eggs. On the cart under the black cloth was a carton of chicken eggs. Next, the judge announced the task to the contestants. They had to prepare a memorable dish using these items as the main ingredients. Sung Yoon Joon added that they can focus only on eggs, only on chicken, or choose both together. It's their decision. Most importantly, they must finish their dish within the given time limit. They must perform to the best of their ability. Kim Myung Shang said that once the competition begins, special petitions will be set up around the cooking stations so that neither the competitors nor their judges will know what dishes the competitors are cooking. The cooking time is 30 minutes. Gave the start of the challenge and Sonhan thought that a memorable dish was nothing but something that the judges would never ignore. The theme of this dish was eggs. Behind the petition, John Hai Min, still angry at his opponent, thought about how he would show this sucker what a man in the position of sea chef could do. He would show him the difference in their position that he would never overcome. He decided that he would make a dish that would throw Kang Sonhan out and make him get the hell out of here. John Hai Min, standing behind the partition, thought about the fact that he wasn't exactly sure what kind of dish Kang Sun Hoon was going to make, but he would undoubtedly use eggs as the main ingredient. He won't expect us to choose the same thing, but that's fine. All the time he was a regular line cook until he became a stew chef, eggs were the most frequent ingredient he used all the time. Heat a skillet and then crack an egg into a square mold. Wait until the egg is about halfway cooked and be careful not to let it overcook. And after he had made four of these, the beginning of the dish would be done. He finished frying the eggs and the next step was to pour some oil into a clean skillet, add the chopped ingredients and fry them, adding the tomato sauce. 30 minutes is certainly not enough time for the sauce to boil and thicken, even if it is a store-bought product. 
To get the consistency right, he'll add a little milk and wait for it to boil. Once it boils, you have to put the fried eggs in the sauce and add the mozzarella. Throw some basil leaves on top and it's done. However, John Hai Min was extremely curious as to what kind of dish Kang Sun Hoon was cooking behind the partition. Guo Chi Sam announced that the time allotted to both challenges was up. He ordered the contenders to stop and put their dishes in front of the esteemed jury. He invited them to present their masterpieces to the judges. John Hai Min's dish impressed the judges, but what Kang Sun Hoon showed shocked the judges. It was Tomagona Jury, a special kind of omelette in traditional Japanese cuisine. It is used as a cap or filling for rolls. Fried eggs and tomagona jiri. The judge's surprise was unprecedented. Kim Myongshang was extremely upset. If he's serving them a dish like this, he's even a little ashamed of himself for standing up for Sun Hoon. Gu Ji Sun couldn't believe that he was actually presenting them with this dish. What in the world is that jerk thinking? So, two dishes were presented to the jury. The first dish was John Hai Min's dish. Son Yun Jun noticed the great smell and color and asked what was the name of this pretty dish. A satisfied Jang Hai Min replied that it was shakshuka from North Africa, a dish of eggs fried in a sauce of tomatoes, hot peppers, onions, and seasonings. It's called eggs in hell. Guy Giesen said the tomatoes successfully accentuate the flavor of the eggs, but he obviously used olive oil. How much? He Min replied that he used somewhere around 200 milligrams. Ji then said to the sous chef, why don't he take another look at his dish where you can see a large amount of oil floating on top. He had added too much of it. The judge calmed him down, saying it was fine except for that remark. But then Kim Myongshang added pepper to the characterization of the dish, pointing out that the eggs weren't good. It looks like John Hai Min was focused on cooking the eggs first and he didn't even get the chance to make them in such a nice shape. But in the original eggs in hell, they don't cook them like that. He wasn't supposed to put a half-fried egg in the sauce, he was supposed to break the raw egg into the sauce while it was simmering. The egg is supposed to be a poached egg, this is bad. It is the egg that should be the star of this dish. He needs to pay more attention to detail. Sun Yun Jun told contestant John Hai Min that his dish was delicious and he made the right choice for such a specific dish. The sous chef was happy to think that he received super positive feedback. Kang Sun Hoon's scrambled eggs didn't stand a chance against his dish. It was the turn of another contestant's dish. Gu Jisun took the floor regarding the dish prepared by Kang Sun Hoon. He said that no matter how many times he looks at it, he doesn't see an ounce of sincere effort in this dish. Tamago Nijuri and fried eggs. What should the judges do with this dish? Kim Myongshang entered the room. He said that they certainly know what the dish is called, but if it has a unique concept. Kang Sun Hum quickly replied that he called it breakfast without prejudice. Gu Jisun thought, what the hell is he talking about when his dish looks like this? The judges decided to give it a try and asked the young contestant if by any chance there was an order in which they should eat his dish. Kang Sun Hum quickly replied, the tamago nijuri on the right is the main course and the fried egg on the left is the dessert. Kim Newson seemed indignant. He asked the challenger, did he really think so? It's already hard enough to consider each item a main course, but fried eggs are definitely not a dessert. An appetizer is usually a dish seasoned with spices and salt and should complement the main course. Kang Sun Hung smiled and remarked that this was why he said it was breakfast without prejudice. His rival grinned and thought, why is this jerk so confident? This dish looks exactly what everyone expected doesn't it? The jury finally decided to try the tamagoni jury first after all. Sun Yun Jun stated that the flavor of the dish is average. The egg is cooked evenly. The rice is somewhat sticky and there is a sour taste to it. A good job has also been done with the seaweed. Sun Hoon was asked if perhaps he cooked the rice himself, to which the young man replied that he simply boiled some instant rice in a pot, then seasoned it separately like sushi rice. After all, Half an hour is not enough time to cook rice. Kim Myongshang thought it was still too ordinary. He was honest when he gave his opinion about Nijuri, but truth be told, its quality is on par with sushi that can be found in any sushi buffet. He seemed to have overestimated participant Kang Sun Hoon. And the young man calmly said that if they had finished with the main course, then please let them try the dessert. 
and he recommended the esteemed jury to use dessert spoons for this purpose. The judge's amazement was unparalleled. Well, they're eating a fried egg. It seems that the dessert would match the quality of the main course, but still they decided to just try it without any expectations. Looking at the dessert, Kim Myung-shang sadly thought that it was just an ordinary egg with a yellow center. The yolk isn't fully cooked, so it's somewhat bouncy. The other judges were outraged that the egg wasn't even fried all the way through. No effort at all. Out of the blue, Kang Sun Hong recommended that they still try it first so they could appreciate the dish after eating it. Wu Jisun thought, why is he making such a fuss over scrambled eggs? The judges tasted it and were very surprised. The white is indeed the white of an egg, but the yolk is not from an egg, it's made of something else. The texture is similar to egg yolk, but has a refreshing flavor. Finally, they figured it out. He used a mango. It's funny, he put a mango yolk in place of the yolk. Sun Hoon left the regular block and even made the appearance and taste of the egg as close as possible to that of a real egg. Kim Myung-shang turned to Sun Hoon and said he felt like he had received a severe blow to the head. He showed them an incredible dish that perfectly illustrates molecular cuisine in just half an hour. Molecular cuisine allows you to process food in different ways to turn it into something completely new. He was asked where he learned molecular cooking and was advised again not to say from comic books. Kang Sun Hoon seriously replied that this time he had learned about it from YouTube. The president of the jury told the contestants to return to their seats while they evaluated their dishes. Finally, after a short deliberation, he was ready to give his verdict. Go Ji Sun turned to John Hyman first and said that they had a few concerns about his dish because he didn't quite understand it. He made a mistake during the main part of the cooking. It must have been because he was too focused on the serving and presentation. Then it was Kang Sun Hoon's turn. The chairman said that the Tamago Nijuri was quite ordinary and did not enthuse or make any positive or negative impression. However, the fried egg was excellent. He still can't believe that Sun Hoon used mango to create the illusion of yolk. Kim Myung-shang added that he rarely encountered molecular cuisine even when he returned to Manhattan. He never thought he would try such an exceptional dish during the competition. This dish perfectly embodied the memorable dish they asked for. At the end, the judges announced the winner. With a score of 3-0, the winner was contestant Kang Sun Hoon. The judges declared Kang Sun Hoon's victory, which meant that contestant John Hai Min was automatically eliminated from the project. The winner was asked to move up to the second floor, while the losing contestant was returned to his seat. Goji Sun was forced to admit that Sun Hoon did a great job with the chicken cutting task, and now he's showing off his knowledge of molecular cuisine. It had to be admitted that he was great at a lot of things. Jisun was unpleasantly surprised that this contestant's name kept popping into his head. Meanwhile, John Hai Min was really upset. He lost to a chef like that jerk. So it wasn't an ordinary egg, but a molecular cooking egg. He only lost because the judges decided as if his dish wasn't original. He mentally wished Kang Sun Hoon to wait for his revenge. Once he was kicked out of the competition, he would get his revenge on him. Kang Sun Hong stood on the balcony of the hotel where the competition was held and rejoiced in his happiness. As he had expected, he had received a positive evaluation. If it wasn't for the ingredient he found in the corner of the refrigerator, he wouldn't have received such glowing comments. He'd never even tried molecular cooking before. The calcium lactate and other additives that are used in molecular cooking had given him the idea to make this winning dish. Curious, did the camera crew expect any of the contestants to be knowledgeable about molecular cooking? If not, they wouldn't put those ingredients in the fridge. Meanwhile, the television crew discussed the twists and turns of the competition. Song hyun Su thought it was awesome. So much for molecular cuisine. Kang sun Hoon is a contestant who gets a lot of attention from the viewers. He asked Ms. Minna that she was the one who insisted on having calcium lactate and sodium alginate ready to use in the refrigerator, right? And the participant immediately used both of them. He asked her to interview Kang Sung Hoon again. The second round of the competition began in the studio. Go Jun Tai, the contestant who had previously placed second, had to choose his opponent according to the rules. Go Ji Zung thought about the fact that his mentee should choose a weak opponent. It's a chance to reach the finals if he wins now. Jung Tai thought about the fact that his friend has already passed. 
but there are still people here that he doesn't like. They were the Menden guys he had already seen at the seminar. He didn't know the whole story, but he had heard it that Sun Hun had suffered because of those two when he worked at one of the top hundred hotels where he was the most junior chef. And he also saw them checking the results to make sure they passed. But just because they doubt their skills doesn't change the fact that they work in the second best hotel in Korea. He's determined to destroy the guys at the Menden Hotel. He can no longer watch them laugh during the broadcast. He announced to the judges that he would fight the sous chef of the Menden Hotel. When the contestant was chosen, contestant John Il Wu from Menden Hotel was invited to come up on stage. This couple was also given 30 minutes and told to go to their seats in the kitchen. John Il Wu Riley said while addressing his opponent, who would have thought that a chef from Hilton, the best hotel in Korea, would pick someone from Menden Hotel. What a shame that John Ta won't be able to go aid further now or maybe he wants to avenge his friend. Then the competition started and the opponents began to prepare their dishes. After half an hour, the judges ordered them to finish cooking and bring their dishes for them. Go Jun Tai presented a chicken breast steak omelette. John Il Wu presented chicken soup with ginseng. The steak caught the judges' attention. They asked him why the garnish was a perilla leaf sauce that smells like lemon, to which Go Jun Ta suggested adding teriyaki sauce to the steak and omelette. He wanted the flavor of the perilla leaves and lemon to soften the specific smell of the chicken. He suggested dipping the chicken in whatever sauce they liked or just eating it with the omelette if there was a lot of sauce. Gojison had to admit that the chicken breast steak was well cooked and seasoned. The perilla leaf sauce is not bad, it goes well with the omelette. All the judges acknowledged that it was delicious and there was no chicken smell even without the perilla leaf sauce, the omelette was soft enough. And Go Jun Tai, looking at Sun Yun Rong, thought, what's missing then? Sun Yun Jun said it's unfortunate, the flavor is good but the presentation is rather boring and the garnish lacks vegetables. Unharmonious. Go Jun Ta was in agreement with the judge, he really, really focused too much on the main ingredients. He would keep that in mind. Then we tasted contestant Jong Il Wu's dish. The sight and smell were good. The judges guessed that it was date, green onion, and garlic. There's rice inside. John Il Wu said he didn't think it was easy to make chicken ginseng soup in half an hour. So he took a smaller chicken and cooked it in a pressure cooker. They can scoop some soup and pour it into a bowl and then eat the chicken while wearing gloves. The judges decided to taste the soup first. Sun Yun Jun was satisfied. It was a great combination. Then they tried the chicken and the woman was again pleased with the good cooking of the bird in such a short time. It's not too soft and not dry. John Il Wu advised to use salt if the flavor seems weak. Kim Myungshan said he was worried if he could make chicken ginseng soup in just half an hour. But with this beautiful dish, his doubts faded away. It was a little bit bland, but that's okay because he served the salt separately. The seasoning is just perfect too. Go Jisun also had to agree with his colleagues' conclusions. He said that overall excellent, however, they are here to choose the best chef of the show and an unremarkable chef. The dish should have a story and creativity. Contestant John Il Wu's dish is delicious but ordinary. Kim Leong Shang thought his colleague was criticizing him to help Jung Ta. The judges retired for a meeting and soon returned to announce the winner. The first to speak was Som Yun Jun, who said that contestant Jung Il Wu will do a great job. He did better than expected. Go Ji Sung said that his opinion hasn't changed. Putting rice in chicken is very bland, so he votes for contestant Go Jung Tai's dish. Since the score became a tie, the winner will be decided by Judge Kim Myung Shan. Kim thought it was hard. Go Ji Sung openly supports Go Jung Ta. Song Yoon Jun votes for Jeon Il Woo because she prefers traditional Korean cuisine. Of course, both contestants' cooking skills aren't bad and they use the basic ingredients perfectly. But none of the dishes were unique. It was easy to pick a previous winner in Kang Sung Hoon's case. Finally, he made a decision and announced that even though contestant Jeon Ta had made a unique sauce with perilla leaves, he didn't know what Judge Go Jisun thought, but he still found his dish slightly disappointing. The sauce was well made, but was the dish harmonious? No. As he had mentioned, the chicken was delicious on its own, seasoned well too. It was tasty even without the perilla leaf sauce, but the chicken became very salty if dipped in the sauce, so he was a little disappointed. 
he thinks Jung Il Woo's dish is better. The winner of this challenge was contestant Jung Il Woo from Menden. The winner was asked to go up to the second floor, and the losing contestant was returned to his seat. Go Jung Ta thought about how he was too relaxed. If he had thought of a side dish instead of the perilla leaf sauce, but it was too late to regret. He just had to give his best in the next challenge. At the same time, Kang Sun Hoon was returning from the interview he had just given to Ms. Mina. It was more complicated than he had anticipated. The questions became more and more personal along the way, especially the last one. In the studio where the interview was taking place, a colleague approached screenwriter Sung Min and advised her to think about a new script and prepare for the next interview rather than hovering somewhere in the clouds. He was also curious to know why she asked Kang Sun Hoon such a question. Kang Sun Hoon himself was also curious to know. When he arrived at the hotel, Kang Sun Hoon was very upset. He learned that the winner of the next cooking challenge was contestant Jung Il Wu from the Menden Hotel. Jung Ta had lost. As Sun Hoon stood there pondering this news, a proud and satisfied Jung Il Wu came up the stairs to the floor. He saw Kang Sun Hoon and venomously asked if he knew that his friend had lost and was now on the elimination list. John Il Wu, in addition, gave advice to Sun Hoon not to embarrass himself as well. The young man told the winner that he is as annoying as a fly. Why is he picking a fight with him? The competition is not over yet. He called him a jerk, but pointed out that he'd gotten better at choosing his words since he joined his worthless hotel. John Il Wu warned the young man not to be so presumptuous and just observe everything in silence, because he would never have that opportunity again. Meanwhile, the contest continued. Kim Myung-shang announced the next contestant, Ju Yoongi, a chef de party with eight years of experience from the Bercia Hotel. He told her to come to the jury table. She was asked to decide who she wanted as her opponent. The girl replied that she would choose Seo Jae Hai from Hotel Prisha. Seo Jae Hai thought to herself, how did this girl know her? She in turn only knew about her rival that Hotel Bercia was sixth on the top list. As they both froze in front of the judges, Mai Aung Sung asked contestant Ju Yoongi if there was any special reason why she chose contestant Seo Ji Hai. The girl replied that she didn't have any special reason for that. Sung Yoon Joon suggested that the girls go to their seats and start cooking. Seo Ji Hai thought that since the judges were already full, she would make a simple Mediterranean salad. There's nothing complicated about this dish and it's easy to make. Just chop up some vegetables but there are two important things to consider, the eggs and the seasoning. Eggs should not be overcooked or undercooked, the golden mean. They should be boiled in six and a half or seven minutes. She quickly made the dressing while the eggs boiled. Seo Jae Hai listened, but all that came from behind the partition behind which her rival was preparing her dish was some rattling sounds. What is she doing there? And Ju Yoong Gi was trying her best too. She remembered the judge's question before the competition started when he asked her if there was a special reason why she chose contestant C.O.J. Hai. Of course there is. Everyone thinks that this program was created just to evaluate chefs from different hotels. She's sure it just seems that way. Ju Yuni heard that if the producers notice someone, that someone will be the star of their next show. She needs to do her best to get the top spot. She has to look good in front of the producers but her on-screen image is much more important. It would be easier for viewers and producers to remember her if she didn't look like any of the other contestants. However, C.O.J. Hai somehow looks a lot like her. There aren't many girl chefs on this show, and they seem to be about the same age. She's in charge in another part of the kitchen, but Zhu Yunji is pretty sure she's a chef de party too. C.O.J. Hai has a pretty face, but even if she were to rise above her in the rankings, she'd still be forgotten, just like her. They're already halfway through this part of the final, obviously the judges would like to eat something light. So no matter what types of dishes they make, they'd rather have dessert. Like the egg muffins she made while thinking about everything and working hard with her hands. And C.J. Hyde behind the partition thought that she was the one who would catch the producer's attention. To make salad dressing, C.O.J. Hai added a spoonful of honey to the mayonnaise and thought about the fact that she can't be eliminated right now, so she can't take any chances on this assignment. She needs to continue to be a contestant on the show. She can't lose like her boyfriend Jung Hai Min. 
Just then, with horror, the girl noticed that she forgot to turn off the stove. The egg had been boiling for too long and had hard boiled. What should she do now? She doesn't have that much time to boil another egg. So she melted the hard boiled egg and put it on top of the salad she made earlier. Scooped the yolk out of the egg and crushing it, mixed it with the dressing she had just made. Poured the dressing mixed with the egg into a saucer, divided the salad into three bowls corresponding to the number of judges and sprinkled some basil on top. With her last act, the judges announced that the time for cooking was up and asked the contestants to present their creations for judging. Contestant C.O. J. Hai made a Mediterranean salad with dressing and contestant Zhu Yuni made egg muffins wrapped in bacon. Go Jisun, looking at these dishes, thought that the contestants must have thought that the judges had had enough, so they both made desserts. Kim Munson thought the contestants' choices were interesting. Bacon and egg muffins. Usually, the base of an egg muffin is made by tearing bread into pieces, but these were baked from dough. At the same time, even though the girl chose eggs as the main ingredient, she still covered the muffin with bacon. So Jai Hai was cautiously awaiting the judge's reaction to her dish, because while she was cooking, she discovered that there were no tin muffin molds at her disposal, even though there should have been at least one here if there was an oven. Looking at the ingredients and utensils that the organizers had put in, she realized that those just didn't pay much attention to baking. What was she to do? She couldn't form the cupcakes in the flat baking mold. But then she took a steel ring mold and put it in the oven, pouring the batter and eggs in there. Wrapped bacon around it, and it holds everything together nicely. She came up with the whole thing at the last minute, but did it well and on time. Finally, the judges decided to try the salad. C.O.J. High suggested that they eat it with the dressing. Kim Myungshin praised the dressing, it was thicker than he expected. The picky son Yoon Joon said that she seemed to put a half-cooked egg in the salad and then put a hard-boiled egg on top. But it's still delicious. Kim Myunsen agreed with this comment but said that if she wanted to make a Mediterranean salad, she should have put sliced eggs in the salad, not softened eggs. The girl knew this, of course. She also guessed that the jury members would criticize the eggs. Fortunately, they left positive evaluations on the taste. Ru Jisung said he would tell everyone his opinion later. First, they should try the second contestant's dish. Chu Yoon he knew that Judge Sung Yoon Joon would be strict. Simply put, she gives bad marks to Western dishes and good marks to Korean dishes. But this time, she was satisfied. The cupcake has a good texture, the salty and sweet flavors are harmonious. She said she could clearly taste the egg flavor. Kim Myung-shan agreed with her assessment. He thought the salty flavor would be stronger because of the bacon, but the saltiness of the meat is excellent. Myung-sun then turned to Go Jisun and asked if he had anything to say. Judge Go Jisun replied that he would share with them later, backstage. Ju Yoongi thought about the fact that here they were both standing in front of the judges, so why do they have to wait to consult backstage? After all, two of the judges had already said their scores. Did they really plan with the production crew that COJ High would be the winner? The judges left, saying that they would announce the winner soon. The judges appeared and said that they would now announce the winner. Judge Go Jisun announced that the winner of this competition is the contestant of Bodicea Hotel, Ju Yoongi. He went on to say that the judging was centered on how the eggs were prepared. In his professional opinion, none of them prepared a special dish. That is why he refrains from his evaluation. Contestant Ju Yoongi's dish was a bit tastier, but she didn't put any deep thought into it. However, things are different when it comes to the eggs themselves. Participant Seo J. Hai decided to use eggs as a secondary ingredient, while participant Ju Yoongi tried to somehow make the eggs at least look like the main ingredient. This definitely influenced his decision. Judge Sun Yoo Joon said that she thought contestant Ju Yoongi's food was really good. Of the dishes that appeared in today's challenge, this was one of the best. Ju Yoongi thought she was the second best contestant. Kim Myung Shang stated that he agreed with Judge Sun Yoon Joon. Contestant Ju Yoongi's dish was amazingly delicious. The judges invited contestant Ju Yoongi to go upstairs and contestant Seo J. Hai to wait backstage. Once they were in their seats, the judges would announce the task that would be given to the elimination candidates. Upstairs, J. Hai was waiting for Jung Hai Min. He praised her for doing well. When the judges returned to the stage, Kim Myung-shin said that before. 
they move on to the task for the elimination candidates, he had an announcement for everyone. In the task that the girls just participated in, they were divided into winning candidates and elimination candidates, but the judges will evaluate the winning candidates one last time. The chief who won first place is contestant Kang Sunhoon. Seo Jae-hai, standing backstage thought that it wasn't a fluke in the task of carving the chicken, and it wasn't just luck in the previous task of preparing a dish with these ingredients. Son yoon Jun reminded that the first place contestant would get something special. Go Jisun added that, just like before, he will have immunity from elimination. However, not like before, he can use it for himself. He must give it to someone among the 20 contestants who are nominated for elimination today. Normally, it would be best used when a contestant from his own hotel suffers this failure, but contestant Kang Sunhoon can't do that. He has to think hard about who to give it to. Sun Yoon Joon decided to talk about the task for the elimination candidates. She announced that the elimination task is to prepare a dish using traditional Korean sauces. Gu Jisun added that the participants will be given 30 minutes to do everything and the two contestants with the worst scores in this task will not get another chance and will be eliminated immediately. The judges gave the start of the competition. Ji Hai asked John Hai Min what he would cook. He said he would make red pepper pasta with bulgogi sauce. He in turn asked what she would be cooking. Ji Hai replied that it would be a good idea to make Twendian Taig. She was confident that she could handle that dish well. John Hai Min said to grab whatever she needed in the fridge quickly and cook the meat. He wished her and himself good luck. Go Jisum announced that there were five minutes left in the competition and urged them to stay focused until the end. Ji Hai was glad that she still had time left. She didn't even need huge plates, she could just put the stew in the clay pot. And John Hai Min was upset he had overcooked the meat. He didn't think about the heat and cooked it for too long. Only beginners make such mistakes. He thought about how the others didn't make any mistakes at all. Judge Song Yoon Joon tasted Ji Hai's dish and praised the seasoning as well as the flavor. Jung Hai Min enviously thought about the fact that the girl already had positive evaluations. If it continues like this, he'll be kicked out. Jung Hai Min said that there's still a little more time after all. How about chopping some leeks and garnishing the stew? Jae Hai said that was a great idea. While the girl was chopping onions, the man took a packet of salt and poured it into her dish. He thought about the fact that he had to do this to save himself. The judges announced that time was up and ordered them to stop and take their hands off their dishes. Go Ji Sung said that the judges would now taste what the contestants had prepared. When the judges came to the spicy bulgogi, Go Jason was outraged that John Hee Min served burnt food. But the latter began to justify himself, saying that he added some soy sauce to the bulgogi along with red pepper paste. It was the soy sauce that caused the color to darken. Son Yun Rong asked, doesn't that mean it's not spicy bulgogi but regular bulgogi? His spicy bulgogi is burnt, no one will eat it. All the judges agreed that it shouldn't even be tasted. Jung Hee Min's mood was depressed. He mumbled that he hoped the judges would taste his dish and appreciate it. Both judges suggested that Judge Kim Myung-shong's meat be tasted. Kim boldly stepped up to the dish and tasted it. A grimace of disgust curved his face. He said to Jung Hai Min, how could he claim that the meat wasn't burnt and the color just darkened because of the soy sauce? He can only feel the bitterness in his mouth. A chef should be responsible for his dish. He has to keep an eye on his dish, whether it's burnt, whether he's cooking it at the right heat. His excuse is the worst excuse Kim Myungshin has ever heard. He added that he has to pray that there would be a dish worse than his, even though it seems like that can't happen. Go Ji Sung suggested moving on to the next participant. Jung Hai Min thought in the meantime that he was prepared for this and didn't even expect anything different. But he wasn't the only one who failed. He's going to lose along with Ji Hai. When the judges tasted Ji Hai's dish, the disappointment was boundless. They had never felt so much salt in any dish in their entire lives. Gu Jisun told the participant that both of them know the reason why they are standing here. Both of their dishes are inferior to other participants' dishes. On one hand, they have a contestant whose dish burned. On the other hand, a contestant who put too much soy sauce and oversalted it. When the judge announced it, Jae Hai was very surprised. She hadn't even changed the seasoning after tasting it. How could her sauce become oversalted? 
The problem was definitely not the onions. And Zhang Haimin thought about how it was his fault. Before competing with Zhu Yungi, she was looking at the second floor. She was definitely looking at Kang Sunhoon, maybe she had feelings again. This isn't his first relationship, and he can safely say that she wants to get back together with him again. He'll just take the initiative with this. And most of all, he wants to increase his chances of success just a little bit. Judge Son Yoon Joon asked the girl if she was in a relationship with a young man. He told everything during the interview. She suggested that Jai Hai became worried that her young man might be expelled and added a bunch of salt to her dish on purpose. The girl protested and said she would never do that. Then it hit her. Did Jung Hee Min really do it? He thought at this time that Jai Hai must have already realized everything. But he didn't care. His biggest concern right now was the circumstances of the exemption. There are conditions with the immunity card. It's not the same as before. Sun Han must use it today to save one of the participants. If he didn't do anything, the person standing next to him now wouldn't be Ji Hai. And if that were the case, Kang Sun Hoon wouldn't use the immunity to save him, but save someone else, he would be doomed. But this is a different situation. At least he doesn't have a 100% chance of being eliminated. The others don't know, only Kang Sun Hoon, that Seo Jae Hai is his ex-girlfriend who ditched him. Doesn't that mean he has a higher chance of being saved from elimination? Judge Go Jisun asked contestant Kang Sun Hoon, who has the power to save a contestant from elimination, to come to the judge's table. The young man said that before he announced his decision, he had something he wanted to point out. Go Jisung asked Kang Sun Hoon what he wanted the judge's attention to. He replied that someone had intentionally ruined Seo Ji Hai's dish. Chon Hai Min thought with annoyance that he was sure no one was looking at him when he did this. The young man added that contestant Jeon Hai Min had added salt to contestant Seo Ji Hai's dish. Jeon Hai Min protested and assured that he had done nothing of the sort. He himself accused the young man of talking nonsense without proof. Song Yoon Jun said, if that's what really happened, then she understands why the contestant's distressing was like that. But if he has any proof, or is he just a witness? Kang Sun Hoon replied that it was filmed on the camera that filmed the judges. Go Jisun turned to the producer. He asked if they could look at the footage. He replied in the affirmative. After watching the footage, the judges saw the moment when contestant John Hai Min poured salt into contestant Seo Ji Hai's dish. Go Jisun said there was no need to look any further. They are chefs from the same hotel, and he ruined his colleague's dish. He's the worst of the worst. He not only ruined someone else's dish, he destroyed the reputation of the hotel. There was a question of how to judge Seo Ji Hai's dish, because the dish the judges tasted already had salt added to it. Of course, if contestant John Hai Min hadn't intervened, she wouldn't have been among the last two, but still, contestant Seo Ji Hai's food couldn't be overestimated. There was no more room for Hotel Prezia in this competition, and as for contestant Seo Ji Hai's evaluation, the judges left it at that. Go Jisun asked, if they're both a couple, why are they bringing their personal problems into cooking? Seo Ji Hai tried to protest. However, Judge Go Jisun was adamant if she was a line cook under a sous chef like him who can't even cook a normal dish, what could she learn? Even if he didn't mess up her dish, it would still be the worst. Therefore, they wouldn't overestimate her dish. Song Yoon Rong added that she knew what the dish should have tasted like because she had tasted it before. So she would strongly recommend re-evaluating, but it's not good to bring love quarrels into cooking. So she has no desire to re-evaluate her dish either. Kim Myung Shan said that if that's what both judges think, then his opinion doesn't matter. The most important thing right now is the immunity card that is in the hands of contestant Kang Sun Hoon. He asked the young man who he used his immunity card on. Kang Sun Hoon replied that he had used his immunity card on someone who was not standing here in front of them right now. The judges thought that Kang Sun Hoon had used his immunity card on someone who had received positive marks and was not among the two worst right now. John Hai Min cursed to himself, this was not how immunity was given now, it had already been given before the task for the elimination candidates. Then what was the point of what he had done? It was then that Go Ji Sung's voice came up. 
he announced that contestants John Hyman and C.O.J. Hai from the Prezia Hotel were eliminated from the Best Chief program and thanked them for their work. Then he announced the end of the competition for today. Jai Hai left the competition site and went outside. Jun Hai Min grabbed her arm and tried to explain himself, but the girl threatened him that she would report him to the police. She went to the hotel and knocked on room 312, but Kang Sun Hoon was on the balcony. She knocked again and went out without waiting for an answer. In the TV newsroom, the producer praised the team for a job well done. Due to their tight shooting schedule this morning, he thinks there will be no problems in the show for three weeks. He inquired, asking if it was announced to the contestants that they would be taking a two-day break. He was answered that it was announced in the hotel broadcast. He then offered to talk about the next assignment. Television writer Sun Min recalled a recent picture she observed in a hotel lobby. After the sadly ended story of the spoiled dish, a couple of dropouts were standing in the hotel hallway in front of Kang Sun Hoon. John Hai Min told him that if he had told him that they had already broken up with Ji Hai, it wouldn't have happened. Sun Hoon replied that they had only broken up a few days ago and he couldn't find the right moment. Minna thought that based on his reaction during the interview and the conversation she heard in the hotel hallway, it could be inferred that contestant Kang Sun Hoon and contestant Seo J Hai had dated before and that contestant Seo J Hai was now together with contestant John Hai Min and Sun Hoon's breakup with So Ji Hai did not end smoothly. But if so, why did Kang Sun Hoon help contestant Seo Ji Hai before the eliminated contestants were announced? If there was an emotional breakdown in their relationship, was it unnecessary of him to intervene, regardless of whether the dish in question was spoiled? Her musings were interrupted by the producer. He asked why she was so distracted during a meeting. She replied that she was just thinking about ideas for the next assignment. The producer said if you think about it, this idea she developed to make someone the main character beforehand was great. Participant Kang Sun Hoon became especially popular with viewers. She replied that she felt like there was a much closer relationship between Go Jung Tai and Sun Hoon than previously thought. They were both cooks in the army. Apparently, while they were cooks in the army, they had gotten close by competing in military cooking competitions. They already considered themselves rivals before they came up with their images of rivals on the show. The producer said that he heard as if Kang Sun Hoon immediately used his immunity card on candidate Go Jung Ta. That's weird. Didn't he already have his immunity? He had won first place in the ingredient guessing task after all. He seemed to blame himself for the fact that participant Go Jung Ta might have been eliminated. He found out after reading Kang Sun Hoon's resume. Also, Gun Sun Hoon used to work at the Menden Hotel, where Jung Il Wu currently works, and that hotel is the second best hotel. The producer thought about it and said that it was only his guess, but above all, he doesn't think that Kang Sun Hoon doesn't have good memories of the time when he worked at the Menden Hotel. It was objected to him that he had worked there for a short time and was probably not close to the participants from Menden. The producer replied that since the hotels had prepared the contestants' resumes, it couldn't be helped that their employment records were there. But contestant Kang Sun Hoon came personally to ask him not to reveal the fact that he worked at the Menden Hotel. Go Jun Ta must know from somewhere that they related. And that's why he chose Jung Il Wu as his opponent. The producer was asked, did he do it just because they are friends? He replied that he didn't know. That's just speculation. If not because of that, then maybe because Go Jung Ta has a bad relationship with the Menden Hotel. Anyway, Kang Sun Hoon admitted to being responsible for the fact that member Go Jung Ta might have been expelled, so he used the protection card on him. Sun Min's scriptwriter said that whatever the reason was, she was glad that he used immunity on him specifically. If one of the two contestants they showed as rivals were eliminated, the whole image would have been ruined. The producer thought that even if it wasn't for Jung Sun Hoon, there was no way Jung Ta would have been eliminated thanks to Judge Go Jisun. He expressed his desire to know if there were plans to continue this popular story. Mina said the timing is perfect too. Kang Sun Hoon's mother is in the hospital. The producer said there was a short period of time after the morning assignment when families could come and meet the participants. The main character's family also arrived. He doesn't know the exact details, but there was an incident in the hall, so she was immediately sent to the hospital in Wonju. 
Kang Sun Hoon contacted him today to let him know that he will go to the hospital tomorrow on his day off. How about filming him at the hospital like last time? It'll be more tense than that time, so it'll be a cooler picture. Mina replied that she didn't think it was a good idea. She thinks the audience will get bored watching the same scene. The producer agreed with her and offered her ideas related to participant Go Jung Ta's story. The producer suggested finalizing the concept for the next assignment and summarizing the results of this meeting. Kang Sun Hoon went to Wonju urgently in the morning because his sister told him about the bad news. When mom was taken to the emergency room, she was fine, but then her condition worsened and she was hospitalized. She hadn't told him this earlier so as not to shake him too much during the assignment. The big hospital in Wonju was not far from Pyeongchang and it was not difficult to get there. Right off the bus, Sun Hoon called the hotel and asked for an advance payment. Suddenly, a girl came up to him and asked if the seat next to him was taken. In this girl, he recognized the screenwriter Sun Mina. Sun Min sat down in the empty seat and the bus moved. She said she heard that his mom was hospitalized again. She asked the young man, is he going to Wonju Hospital because his mom is there? Kang Sun Hoon answered in the affirmative and asked in turn what Mina was doing in Wonju. The girl seemed agitated. Sun Min couldn't admit that she was pursuing him on purpose. She said the first thing that came to her mind. The university she was studying at was in Wonju. Since it was her day off, she arranged to meet her professor. Kang Sun Hoon asked, he must be her former teacher if she needed to meet him in person. The girl nodded, but she thought, it's true that she went to university in Wonju, but she dropped out. So she didn't have any memories from there at all. He remembered yesterday when they had their last interview. He was about to leave as the interview questions were over. But after Minna stopped the recording, she asked him if he had met contestant C.O.G. High earlier. She said she accidentally overheard their conversation in the lobby. Kang Sun Hoon then asked her, would this question be in the official interview or was she asking it as a personal question? The girl replied that it was her personal question. Then he got up and left, thinking that she was so curious about the question that she was willing to stop the interview for the sake of it. Then she apologized and said that she had gone too far because of her curiosity. Kang Sun Hoon defiantly left the studio. Now he was a little ashamed of his violent reaction. He looked her in the eye and apologized for yesterday. When the bus stopped at the Wonju bus station, the girl asked Sun Hoon if he was going to go straight to the hospital. He said yes and they said goodbye, agreeing to meet next week. When the young man arrived at the hospital, his mother was asleep in the room. Next to her was Mijin. Kang Sun Hoon asked his sister when she had fallen asleep. She replied that she had just recently. She had fallen asleep after being given the remedies. An uneasy feeling came over Kang Sun Hoon. Nevertheless, he and his sister went out into the corridor. Meijin said that mom would be discharged tomorrow. Kang Sun Hoon was surprised, and the sister continued and said that even before mom fell asleep, she continued to worry that her children have no money, so she doesn't want to be a burden to them. She wants to check out quickly. The young man said that if they were against it, there would be no point. The administrator told them that the emergency room fee, hospital fee, and the cost of medicine would cost a total of 360,000 won. Sun Hoon realized he was in trouble. He only had the money from last time. He paid this time with a card. His sister asked if he didn't have any money. The crew of his program wrote to her and said they had already paid for the filming from last time. The young man was sure they had spoken as if they would pay after the broadcast. Or was he mistaken? He took out his phone and read the message. It said on behalf of Sun Minna, the scriptwriter of the Best Chef program, that they had transferred 400,000 won to him for his participation in the last filming. In the hall of the Nota Maison restaurant in France, Chef Kablov was minding his own business. Two people approached him. One was Kang Dong Siok, and he was the father of Kang Sun Hoon, who was 20 years old at the time. They had not seen each other for a long time, and Kadlov reproached them for coming to France without even informing him. Kang Dong Siok said he is on his annual gastronomic journey and complimented the chef on still speaking good Korean. Kadlov asked who the young man next to him was. Kang Dong Siok replied that it was his son Sun Hoon. He had grown up, so it was hard to recognize him now. The chef invited the master to sit at the table and offered them food. During the meal, 
Kablov turned to Master Kane Dong Suk and said that he felt as if Sun Hoon was not feeling well. The master said that something happened to him at the Menden Hotel. He is concerned about where the culinary business is going because of the ubiquitous workplace violence. Kablov agreed with the master and said that chefs already had to handle knives and fire like in a fight to cook for people. That's why he's in such a mood. Kang Dong Siok said that he would like his son to become an outstanding chef. However, if he doesn't want to, he can't do anything about it. Then Kablov went up to Sun Hoon and handed him his business card. He said if he wanted to cook again, he could learn from him. But Sun Hoon replied that he didn't want to cook anymore. He hates that cruel and overbearing atmosphere in the kitchen. The wise chef said that's what he thinks now, but someday his opinion might change. And he also noticed that he doesn't give his card to everyone. All of this came to Sun Hoon's mind as he noticed the business card in his notebook. He had long forgotten about it, and his dad had once put it in his notebook. He cooked again, but never contacted Katlev. Producer Song Hyun Su walked dejectedly down the hotel corridor. He was summoned by Go Ji Sung again. He knocked on the room, and the door was opened. The producer irritably asked what was the matter this time. They would be in trouble if they were caught during such a meeting. Go Ji Sung said that in the next task, the judges would cook while the contestants guessed what ingredients they used in the dishes. He asked Song Hyun Su if they had already decided on the head chef. After learning that they had not yet decided on a head chef, he asked if he could be the one to cook. The producer thought things were bad. If this man continues to control the situation, the program will end very strangely. He replied that he had already done a lot already. He should give others the opportunity. Heeson reminded the producer of what he'd done for him when he'd gotten a little out of hand. The producer realized he wasn't going to give up that easily. If he continued to behave like this, it would only have a negative impact on the program. The producer agreed but said there was a but. It's actually true that they haven't decided who will cook yet, but someone has already said they could do it. It's Chef Kim myung Chan. Go Ji Sung angrily said that he's always standing in his way. Song Hyun Su remarked that Myung Shang hadn't agreed yet, but said he'd think about it. Then he suggested that Ji Sung go to Myung Shang himself and tell him that he wants to cook in his place and added, whether or not he started a fight with Judge Kim Myung Shang, he doesn't want to get involved. The next day, the judges were discussing the assignment. Song Yoon Rong asked what the assignment was and when she heard the answer that she had to guess the ingredients, she asked if that was in the first assignment. Kim Myung Shang replied that in that task, they had to guess the name of the ingredients, but in this one, the judges will be preparing the dishes. It would be their job to determine which ingredients the judges used. A woman asked if they would all have to cook. She replied that only one judge would be cooking. Song Yoon Rong refused, arguing that there were 22 contestants, which meant she would have to cook 22 dishes. Kim Myung Shang stated that he had already told the team that he could be the chef in this assignment. That's when Go Ji Sung entered the conversation. He asked Judge Sun Yoon Jun if she thought it was strange that during Kim Myung Chung's task of guessing the names of ingredients, there was an error in the results, and Kang Sun Hoon actually named all 50 answers correctly. Also, during the noodle task, Kang Sun Hoon's team should have already been eliminated because of the quality of the dish, but the grading changed. It was all because of Kim Myung Chung. He kept doing things to put Kang Sun Hoon's contestant in a favorable position. How is it even possible for a junior from a four-star hotel to consistently rank first? Myung Shan became indignant and asked Go Jisun if he meant to say that he was biased against Sun Hoon. To which the judge said that he had probably already named all the ingredients that would be used this time to Kang Sun Hoon. Munson was speechless. The man is trying to accuse him of something I didn't do. He said he wouldn't interfere. Before he left, Myung Sung said that if member Go Jung Tai, who Ji Sung works with at the same hotel, comes first in his assignment, Go Ji Sung should take back all the charges against him from today. Song Yoon Jun told Ji Sung that there seems to be a lot going on between the two of them. She hoped that they would work things out so that it wouldn't cause problems. Participants were gathered in the first floor lobby for another competition. They realized it would be a task where they try to guess the ingredients. Go Jung Ta, standing next to his friend, recalled how Jisun had called him to his room and told him about all the upcoming best chef tasks for next week, 
explaining that the same information would be given to all the participants from the top 10 hotels, not just him. He announced to him that even Jin Hai, who would be participating with him, had already finished preparing for the tasks. Therefore, he should start preparing as well. Jun Ta then asked if the contestants not in the top 10 would have the same information, which made Jisun very angry. He told him that best chief is not just a competition. Hadn't he heard during the seminar that the ranking in this contest would determine the ranking of their hotel? Right now, their hotel is ranked number one. No matter what, they have to maintain that position, and that's what everyone at the top wants. At the end, he ordered Jun Ta to work hard. At this time, the judges appeared. Guo Jisun quickly explained the task. You have to taste a dish and guess what ingredients are used in it. There are 24 ingredients used here, and if a contestant fails to guess even one, they will be eliminated immediately. All participants will go out one by one. Thus, there should be no one in the room except the one who performs the task. The first to be summoned was Zhong Tai, who is at the top of the rankings. Kang Sun Hong wished him luck and advised him to give his best. The contest was set up so that contestants who finished a task would exit through another door. Meanwhile, a dish under a lid was brought into the room. The judges invited contestant Kang Sung Hoon to open it himself. Under the lid was a dish of laziji, a Sichuan stir-fried dish consisting of marinated and then deep-fried chicken pieces, dried Sichuan chili peppers, spicy bean paste, Sichuan peppers, garlic and jinga, toasted sesame seeds and sliced green onions, often used for decoration were here too. The judges suggested starting a food tasting and naming the ingredients used. He was given five minutes to do all this. Kang Sun Han called bok choy, and there was indeed bok choy in the dish. He also saw mushrooms like champignons and shy take mushrooms, which were indeed in the dish. Bamboo shoots, peas, cabbage, bell peppers. The correctness of the answers amazed the judges. Only Gurgis and looked worried. He thought it should be fine, he had used one ingredient in cooking that no one would name. What mattered now was how much Sun Hoon could guess. At any rate, he hadn't heard anything about the dish before he started the task. He just knows the ingredients that are in a regular lasiji. Because of what Kim Myeongchon told him back then, he made the dish with some ingredients that even John Ta doesn't know. And he doesn't care about his persistence. This is his last chance. Gyu Jisun remembered last night. Very late, someone called him on the phone. It was the president of the five-star hotel, Park Seon Yoon. The president asked how he was doing. He must be very busy with judging. He asked if Jisun knows the reason why he's calling him. Park Seon Yoon asked him what he was going to do about the show. He asked who is this Sun Hoon from Jewelria Hotel, that weird creep too attracting attention. Also, the president asked if this hotel was part of their association. When he heard a negative answer, he became indignant, why is trash like him still here? He reminded that this program is the fruit of all his labor and what he and he discussed before the shows. In the show, the Menden Hotel should come first among the hotels and Zhang Ta from the Hilton Hotel should come first among all the chefs. Since he's a judge, he shouldn't be distracted by some side garbage. Gu Jisun assured that he is doing his best. The president recalled the seminar where there was a manual for training chefs. Park Seon Yoon asked, did he only submit the assignments for the program that were discussed during that seminar? Gu Jisung replied that he had submitted the assignments they had discussed at the seminar as soon as he had the opportunity. However, Song Yoon Joon and Kim Myung Shin were also there, so he couldn't insist on the assignment they had agreed on. The president wished him success and ordered him to intensify the fulfillment of his wishes as the finals are just around the corner. Joe Minjin, the general manager of the Five Star Hotel Association, instructed his secretary to contact the people working on the program just in case and went to check out the kitchen at the hotel. After all, he's still the head chef of the Menden restaurant and he can't be away from the kitchen for long. Gyu Jisun realized that the association is also putting pressure on him. This is his last chance, his last warning to get his ratings back on track. He doesn't have much time left because he failed to renew his contract with Hilton Hotel. The association is the only chance to get things back on track. In his next assignment, he must eliminate Kang Sun Hoon by all means. Meanwhile, Kang Sun Hoon, after tasting the dish again, 
said that it still contained chopped green onions and white pepper. Go Chisung thought angrily that the boy had already guessed 16 ingredients. If he guessed two more, he would have the same points as Jung Ta. Son Yun Jun wondered, how could this young man guess so many ingredients so quickly? Normally one would need to use their taste buds very well. And Go Jishan was hoping he wouldn't guess anything else. After all, he only had three minutes left. But it'll be harder to kick him out if he has more points than Jung Ta. Kang Sun Hong said that he was ready to name the rest of the ingredients right now. He announced that there was potato starch in the sauce. It was also used in frying. Instead of oil, pork lard was used, and instead of wine, chianju was used. Chicken broth with pollock powder was used to make the sauce instead of anchovies. And onions and pears were used in the broth. Kim Myeonshang said with delight that Kang Sun Hoon guessed all the ingredients that were in the dish. However, the young man said that he was obliged to name the last ingredient. There was also red pepper, but an unusual one, and Tabasco pepper. It was impossible. Even a foodie wouldn't be able to taste the difference. It was unbelievable. Yu Jisun was shocked. He had ground the pepper very carefully. So much so that it wasn't even in its original form anymore. He had intentionally reduced the amount because of the slight difference in spiciness with the red pepper, but the young man could feel the difference between their spiciness. How was that possible? Participant Kang Sun Hoon was able to guess all 24 ingredients. A frustrated Go Jisun asked how he knew there was Tabasco in there, since it's very hard to tell what kind of pepper was used just by taste. Kang Sun Hoon replied because he could taste the flavor of Tabasco, so he replied with Tabasco. The judges thanked the chef for a great job and asked him to leave the room. The producer walked onto the set, and judging from Go Jisun's reaction, he had a trick up his sleeve this time too. He was so happy when Go Jung Ta named all the ingredients, but the more correct answers Kang Sun Hoon gave, the more gloomy he became. Mina approached him and said that she had received a call from a broadcaster some time ago. They said they had been contacted by members of the Five Star Hotel Association. They were terse and asked if we needed anything. She declined to help as they didn't need it. However, they said they would get in touch later. Is the Five Star Hotel Association really trying to apply pressure? Song Hyun Su said that it seems to be true. Their show has gained popularity, it's supported by the government, and he'll try his best to make sure no one can put pressure on them. If they were trying to pressure them, they probably would have contacted them sooner. However, they contacted them in the middle of the show. What if they are supporting someone from a Five Star Hotel Association? Mina asked, if he wanted to say that there was someone among them who worked for the association. The producer replied that he had suspicions about it not too long ago, but now he was sure about it. He asked Minna to talk about it later. They just decided to announce the results of the competition. They called Zhang Mi Yian from the Mirage Hotel. She only named 11 ingredients. She had the lowest score for this task. She was announced that she was leaving the show and had to return her badge. Then, the person who had the highest score was called up. It turned out to be Kang Sun Hoon from Jewelria Hotel. Go Jung Tai thought that he had named 18 ingredients because he had prepared in advance. Then how many did Sun Hoon name? The judges announced that he had named 24 ingredients in this task. He named all the ingredients. He was praised for a job well done and asked to return to the seat. Then they announced the closing of the competition for the day and advised the contestants to go back to their rooms and rest. In the hotel corridor on the way to his room, Kang Sun Hoon met Su Mina, who asked him if he had a moment for her. They went to the cafeteria and the young man asked her what she wanted to discuss with him. Mina recalls a conversation with the producer that took place after filming was over. It takes place in his office. Sun Hyun Su suggested that she refuse Go Jisun's services. He informed her that Go Jisun was the one who cooperated with the Five Star Hotel Association. Then he asked if she saw the grades on the last assignment and suggested that she look at them in the table that was laid out from higher to lower. On the right, she saw the numbers with the rating of the participants' hotels. The producer said that this didn't just apply to this assignment, but to all the assignments where Jisun participated. Currently, the hotel's rating is the same as the participants, except for Kang Sun Hoon. Sun Hoon has nothing to do with the association. If he is affiliated with the association, then how can one explain the way Jisun treats him? 
he openly praises Go Jung Tai, who works at the same hotel with him and constantly picks on Sun Hoon, trying to get rid of him in every way possible. Anyway, even if it's not true, Kang Sun Hoon is from a four-star hotel. There's no way for him to join the five-star hotel association. The producer thought that Jin Sung was just trying to eliminate someone who was breathing down his prodigy's back, but he's a pawn in the association. They have to get rid of him before the show's image goes down the drain. He asked Minna to find another chef who can immediately replace Go Jisun, a chef who had nothing to do with the Five Star Hotel Association. Sung Min asked the producer if he shouldn't tell Sun Hoon about it. It wasn't fair to him because the other contestants had the upper hand. He said it can't be done and told her not to say anything to him either. She knows who made their show popular. It's thanks to Kang Sun Hoon. What would happen if he found out and refused to participate? Mina agreed with him because as much as she felt sorry for the young man, the program comes first for her. Sun Mina asks Kang Sun Hoon. The guy asks why the screenwriter suddenly asks for forgiveness. She frowned deeply and bowed her head, silently apologizing to her oppa. She raises her head and says that the results of all the tasks, including the current one where Go Jin Sung was the judge, were fabricated. If you look at the ratings that Judge Go Ji Sung gave, you can see the actual rating of hotels. The ratings were written out by our scriptwriters so that there would be no violations in the process. Kang Sung Poon just listens to her in silence. She goes on to say that although there is a possibility that there was a leak of information, they should have carefully prepared and prevented something like this, she is really sorry for what happened. The guy replies that he thought so, everything is clear to him. The scriptwriter thinks that means it's just what I thought. She asks him what he wants to say, that he knew about it. He replies that this is not the case, he'd had some premonition. As he delved into his memories, he recalled that when he tasted the dish, he saw not only the memories of the products, but also the emotions of the chef Go Ji Sung who prepared it. He was only thinking of one thing, how to get rid of Kang Sung Hoon. Back in reality, he and the screenwriter sit in silence. Abruptly, he called out to the screenwriter. Coming out of her thoughts, she asks what he wants. He wants to ask her how the program will change in this case. Sun Minna replies that they will first replace Judge Goji Sun, and they intend to choose a new member of the jury who is not related to Goji Sun in any way. She wants to say something else as she stops and remembers what her oppa told her, what would happen if he found out about it and refused to participate. No matter how sorry he is, his program is above all else for him. She gathers her thoughts and says that if they do Sung Hoon, they will immediately suspend the show. The guy is confused by this question, but the girl is just waiting for him to answer, and to her relief, he says that it's fine, it will be enough for him, they will replace Judge Go Ji Sun, besides he would like to keep his place in the show. The screenwriter recalls how he told her that he would definitely win. Sun Hoon says thank you anyway. They might have hidden the information, but she decided to tell him the truth. He is confident that she will continue to work well on the show, and he believes in her and what she does. At these words, she blushed and became embarrassed. After flying a little in the clouds, she says that yes, she will do her best. When Goji Sum and Jung Tai arrive at their room door and insert their card, they call him by name. He turns his head in silence and recognizes the judge and his friend. Coming closer, the judge asks him to come out and talk. The guy replies that no, he doesn't mind talking here. The judge is clearly stressed out by this, as he thinks it's quite difficult to get rid of Kang Sung Hoon through tasks. In that case, he should win him over to his side, then he can keep his place. Go Ji Sung says that he heard from Jung Ta that they both trained for the military, that's right. He said that back then, there were many times when they switched places in the ranking table, so he understands why Jung Ta was so cheered up when he found out that he was participating in the show. Jung Tai is a colleague of the judge and also a chef at his hotel. He wants to know what he thinks about it and hands him his business card, saying that he would like to work as an assistant chef at the Hilton Hotel. To the judge's chagrin, the guy thanks him for the offer, but refuses his offer. The judge asks him to think carefully. He says that he is given a chance to work in the best hotel in Korea, such as he should not rot in a third-rate hotel. The guy explains that he refuses to work at the no one body in Korea because the chef has a narrowed outlook. Besides, they tried to find fault with his performance in every assignment, no matter what he did, 
How could he make such an offer after such a thing? He doesn't have any self-esteem. The judge clenched his teeth in anger. He started shouting at him that he at least understood who he was talking to and raised his hand against him. He wanted to slap his face, but he froze as did Joan Tai, who was standing next to him. The boy caught his hand. He says he decided to resort to violence because he couldn't find the right words. This is how he trains his employees at the Hilton Hotel. The referee shouts. He says he's a bastard, thinks he can afford to treat a judge like that. Kang Sun Koon asks if it's with the judge. He doesn't think so. Dot, he says, that some time ago he met with the screenwriter. While the judge screams in pain, the guy continues that he was caught in illegal actions. His friend asks him to stop. He looked at him in silence and dismissed the judge. The referee fell down and Jung Ta ran up to him. The guy does not intend to stop and says that he heard that he leaked tasks and trained members of the Five Star Hotel Association. The judge was about to say something again, but the guy interrupted him by saying that although he had only recently learned the truth, the film crew had known about it for a long time. After all, it will be difficult for him to continue being a judge on the show, he turned to his friend and asked what Jung Ta was doing because he was also trained. Jung Tae answers in the affirmative. Then Kang Sun Koon wants to ask him what he meant when he said, let's try again this time. His friend says no, it's not like that, that's not what he meant, but he's really ashamed. The guy turns around and says they're done, so he walks away and closes the door behind them as they get up from their knees. Jung Ta carries the suitcase and the judge walks in front. The judge says that Kang Sun Hoon, he feels like he's seen him somewhere before, he looks like that person. Jung Ta doesn't know who the judge is referring to. Go Ji Sung says that he looks like Kang's master, Kang Dok Suk. His student believes that he was a chef, he wants to know what kind of relationship he had with him. The judge says that it is not so important, he was a hypocrite, he asks to bring his luggage. The student hands the luggage to his teacher. The judge says that in any case, these guys are doing great, he can't believe that they excluded him from the show as soon as there were any suspicions. Jung Ta just listens to him in silence. Go Ji Sung asks him to hold out until the end and take first place for the sake of the hotel. Jung Ta just said yes. The judge went back to the car with his suitcase. The scriptwriter and her boss walk through the hotel in silence. The head asks that Go Ji Sung left after all. The screenwriter answers in the affirmative, saying that she saw him pick up his luggage and leave. The head says what it means now is to find the chef who replaced Goji Sun. He asks the screenwriter if she has already found a replacement. Sun Mina says there is one, but she didn't have time to contact him. They were supposed to kick Goji Sun out after they found a replacement, but this time. The head says that yes, he understood and asks for forgiveness. He wanted to get rid of this person as soon as possible. He asks her who the replacement is. The screenwriter says that the chef of the restaurant, which has two Michelin stars, he is a foreigner. The head asks who the foreigner is. The scriptwriter asks that they had to find a famous chef who wasn't affiliated with the Five Star Hotel Association, right? The head answers in the affirmative. Sun Minna says that, however, it is difficult to find such a chef in Korea, so she had to look abroad. The head asks that if he is a foreigner, then they will need an interpreter. The screenwriter says he doesn't have to worry about it, he speaks Korean well. We are shown the Eiffel Tower, and the chef who gave his business card to Kang Sung Koon is cleaning himself up. A man approaches him and says that he is being asked for a phone call. He asks who it is. They tell him that it's from Korea. A girl with a phone in her hand, he is something on the other side, something in French. The man on the other end asks for forgiveness and says that this is Kabla from Nota Maison. The girl greets him and tells him that he is worried about the scriptwriter Sun Min from Best Chef on KVS. Kapilov asks him what she called him about. She tells him that it just so happened that one of the judges left their show, so she wanted to ask him if he could replace the departed judge. The chef wants to know that he is the first chef they have decided to call. She replies that yes it is. The chef says that if they contacted him, ignoring a large number of Korean chefs, then something serious has happened, something that you can't tell them about. He agrees to help them. The girl at first does not believe what she heard. The cook says that he should visit Korea at least once, in this case he will go to prepare for the flight, he will contact her later from the airport. 
she thanks him for his service and ends the call with a deep sigh. Kang Sunkum is sitting in his room reading his father's notes. He thinks about how the moment he grabbed Go Ji Sung's wrist, he unwittingly saw the memories of his life. Abuse of power, bribes, a depraved life. Everything he saw was disgusting. However, at the same time, he felt something painfully familiar, what kind of feeling it was, for some reason he began to remember the silhouette of a person, but he thought that he should not bother with this, he is sure that this is something useless, he needs to focus on the next task. He must perform perfectly not only with the next task, but also get to the finish line. He went deeper into his notes. A knock on the door snapped him out of his thoughts, and he opened the door to ask who was there. He saw scriptwriter Min in front of him. She asked him that he was still awake. The guy asks her what she's up to at this hour. She says she wanted to tell me something. He asks that it won't take long. If it's a long conversation, then let them go inside and talk there. She asks what she really can do, so he comes in. To herself, she thinks, Suo, you can't just walk in and continue the conversation in his room. What a long conversation. She could tell you everything in 10 seconds. She'd expected this to happen, but her body reacted before she could think about it. They sit on the couches and the guy asks what she wanted to say. She says that he knows that Chief Goji Sung has left and his position as a judge is vacant, right? So they invited a new chef, but because he won't be able to join them right now, they'll have to postpone filming for a while. Since the new judge is a foreigner, it will take him about two days to get to Korea. They plan to give participants an extra weekend off, during the weekend, he can stay in the complex, go relax or meet with his family. She wants to ask him what he plans to do, he will go to his family. He says that my mother was released from the hospital, and besides, the family lives quite far away from here, he does not think that he will go to them. He remembered something else, he says it's not a long conversation. She says that it's strange, when she made notes to herself, it seemed to her that it would be a long conversation, apparently she was mistaken, she apologizes for disturbing him so late and at the same time getting up abruptly. The guy says it's nothing. She leaves, saying that then they will see each other later. The guy asks her to wait, but for some reason she falls sharply and he catches her. Kang Sunghoon, holding the girl in his arms, says that he will immediately pick her up and put her on her feet. He asks if she's okay. She says that everything is fine. Earlier it seemed that he called her, he wanted to say something. The guy says he wanted to ask if he could practice during the weekend. The screenwriter says that this is a forced weekend due to internal problems, so she wants to clarify whether it is possible to use the equipment and products of the program. Kang Sungkun thanks her as she adjusts her sneakers and says goodbye to him. The guy also says goodbye to her and he starts to leave, starting to speed up a little and at some point switching to running. She thinks what a fool she is, a fool, a fool, a fool, a fool, she would make a fool of herself if she fell to the floor like he caught her, it's crazy. Also, she fell promo into his arms, he picked her up so naturally, some whom you're not an athlete by any chance. Entering the apartment, the guy blushed very much. He thinks that it happens so quickly, so he just picked up the screenwriter and accidentally saw her memories and emotions. He went out on the balcony to take a breath. He thinks about the memories that he saw, that the screenwriter secretly helped him in the hospital last time. Minjin said that she received an advance for filming. Recently, he was able to see other people's memories. When he caught Go Ji Sung's hand, the first thing he saw was his emotions and when I tried the dish. Wait a minute, the dish, can he put emotions and memories into the dishes while cooking, so this weekend you need to practice it. Kang Sungkun is standing alone in the middle of the kitchen, he's the only one who decided to practice cooking, it's only natural. Anyway, he got time to practice in the middle of the show, so he'd like to make a dish that he's never tried before, since he has an oven handy, maybe bake something. He will try to prepare a dish, remembering a long ago trip to the sea. At this time, the screenwriter is walking down the hall and thinks that even though she said that everyone can practice cooking on the weekend, no one is interested. That means there's no one else in the kitchen but Sunghoon. She opens the door to the kitchen and Sunghoon is already baking something in the oven. She calls out to him. He was embarrassed when he saw her and she came over and asked him what he was practicing right now. He says she suggested that the other members use the kitchen, but but he doesn't think anyone else was interested. The girl says that the hallway smelled like something sweet that he was cooking. 
Sun Gun says that he decided to make a regular cake. He offers the screenwriter a mini, can try it when the cake is ready. Mina immediately asks what exactly she can do. The cook says that, of course, he still could not give an objective assessment. While he saws the cake into layers, the girl enjoys the smell of baking. The cook is already decorating the cake with strawberries while he looks at Mina, and he thinks that no, no, what is he thinking? He needs to focus, happy memories. The guy says it's ready now, and the girl says it looks delicious. He cuts off a piece of cake and tells the screenwriter to try it first. She asks why she did it, Sun Hoon did it, and isn't he the one who should take the sample first? He cooks for himself from time to time, so he knows the approximate taste of the dishes, but he is interested in her opinion on his cooking. She said she understood it, and then she would try it first. She broke off part of the cake, ate it and froze. The guy was worried and asked how she was, but suddenly she cheered up and said that it was delicious for her. She says it's so delicious that it feels like she's in heaven. Even though she only took a bite, her heart started beating faster. The guy clarifies the heart began to beat faster. She says yeah. He thinks she's been given his memories. He says maybe she imagined something when she tasted the cake, like the sea. She asks what she imagined, like in the manga, she was so happy that she didn't imagine anything. She asks him what Sung Hoon is, did he really learn how to cook from the manga? What did he mean when they asked if she imagined the sea, but there's no seafood in the cake? The guy says that if the screenwriter Mina has eaten, then she can, but the girl interrupts him asking why, because there is still so much left. At Incheon Airport, Koblov comes out and sees the crew members calling out to him. Koblov approaches and says that they didn't have to meet him, but he is touched, but the man says that he did a lot to come to them, and his Korean is really good. Then, they can head straight to the filming location. Kablov greets the remaining judges of the program in French. After being a little in a stupor, the woman also decides to say hello in French and then say her name in broken English, but fortunately Kablov comes up and speaks Korean, so that she, the lady, does not bother herself, he speaks Korean well. The woman was surprised that he called her mistress. A second judge standing nearby says that before opening a restaurant in France, he worked in Korea for about five years, so it seems that his Korean is not yet rusty. Kabelov turns to the man and asks that he is Kim Myung-shung's chef. He has heard that he works at the Hepris Hotel, which has three Michelin stars. Kim Myung-shung says that's right, but where did Chief Go ji Sun go if he's here? The head of the production team comes up from behind and says that Go ji Sun won't be coming. Judge Go ji Sun inflated the ratings of chefs from certain hotels, and after a thorough investigation, they were able to find out that he was in caputs with one association. For this reason, they invited Chief Kadlov to replace Judge Go ji Sun. Kim myung Shang says that's how Judge Go ji Sun ended up in the hands of the association. The head says that they will officially announce that he has left the show due to his busy schedule, and also, he hands the list of remaining contestants to Kadlov, who asks him to review everything and come back together in 30 minutes. Everyone said that they understood everything and the head was leaving. Kadlov, studying the list, froze when he saw the name Kang Sumgun, and he realized that it was the master's son. All participants and judges are gathered in the hall. Jung Ta looks at Kang Sumhoon and immediately looks down. Kim Myung-shang says that before the competition starts, they would like to introduce someone. In front of them is the chef of the French restaurant Note Amazon, awarded two Michelin stars, Kablov. Kablov says bonjour, and that he's glad to see them all. It is also said that Judge Go ji Sung unfortunately left their show due to his schedule, so they decided that he will be replaced by their special guest Kablov. Kang Sung Hoon remembered hearing the chef's name, remembered that Kadlov is that chef Kadlov from Notre Dame, the maison he went to with his father. Kim Myung Shang says that once they introduce the judge, then they'll move on to a new task. The old lady says that it seems like a lot of them have relaxed because so few people have dropped out lately, doesn't it? But don't worry, after this assignment, many of them will go home. Kim Myung Shang continues, which is true, so as part of today's assignment, they must divide into three teams and prepare a full-fledged dish. And after this task, five people will go home, all of the participants then strained. The judge continues that of course, they'd offer them to cook not, anyhow. Each of the judges will act as a mentor and offer a themed dish, Kaplov will evaluate French cuisine, 
judge some Yujang Korean cuisine, she also says that she will judge them all harshly, and as for Kim Mesnan himself, they'd probably think that he will evaluate American cuisine, but no, he is joking. It will evaluate Italian cuisine. The contestant with the highest score, Kang Sung Hoon, stepped forward. Kang Sung Hoon walks out, and he can feel their eyes on him, eyes that are filled with envy and fear. Kim Myung Shang asks the guy to choose the mentor he likes the most. Kang Sung Hoon was thinking that French, Italian, Korean, in fact, he would like to cook dishes from all three cuisines, but Kadlov pulls him out of his thoughts, telling him that Mon Cha Kang, from the French my dear, my dear, choose me, I will teach you everything. Kang Sung Hoon agreed, saying that he chooses Judge Kadlov, but the judge thanks him by calling him Mon Cha Kang. Kim Myung Shang says that next they invite Go Jung Tai, who finished second in the overall standings, and he asks him to step out of line. Now the results of the selection, first in the overall ranking, Kang Sung Hoon chose Kadlov, who is responsible for French cuisine, second in the overall ranking, Go Jung Tai, chose Kim Myung Sun, who is responsible for Italian cuisine, third and fourth place Jung Il Wu and Som Su Bok, chose Som Yoon Jung as a mentor, responsible for Korean cuisine. Kim Myung Shang says that now all participants have decided on the choice of mentors, now mentors and participants are one team, all participants should listen to what their mentor says. Everyone is standing with their mentors, Kadlov noticed that the atmosphere in the team is not good, with the exception of four people who chose him themselves, the rest were forced into his team by force, since there were already a lot of people in the others, he does not like all this. He asks for a moment of attention so that he can take a brief excursion into French cuisine. There are three main cuisines in the world, Chinese, Italian, and French. Therefore, he will ask them which of these cuisines is considered the most delight. Kang Sunghoon says it's French. The judge says that it is true that French cuisine originated in Italy, Italian cuisine came to France after the Italian princess Medici married the king of France, after which the cuisine developed independently and in the 16th century became exquisitely aristocratic. However, in Korea, it is quite difficult to find a restaurant specializing in French cuisine, and this has two reasons. The first is unique products and complex recipes. The second is the taste of dishes. But he thinks that this is all prejudice. They will be able to expand their knowledge of French cuisine by listening to his advice. And now he wants to choose a leader, asks if there are any interested parties. The guy thought about whether he should become a leader. He ate dishes prepared by Chef Kadlov. He could have reproduced them using the right ingredients. But someone shouted out that he wanted to be a leader. It was Joe Seok Hinan, the seven-year-old sous chef of the Ayres Hotel. He says he didn't talk about it, but he is a graduate of the famous French school École Ferrandi. After five months of training and six months of practice, he is proud that he knows French cuisine better than anyone here, but a man says that he also knows about this school very well. In fact, this school is a place where more basics are taught, rather than a place to train professionals. This was said by Bang Hyun Woo, a demi-chef de Paris of the Keenville Hotel, with six years of experience, and in his opinion there are other schools that are more famous. He says that he really thinks that studying at this school is enough to become a group leader. He answers him, and what whom he then wants to suggest to put in charge of the team, put someone from those who are forced to join their team because of their grades. The girl who fought against Kang Sung Kun's ex says that they won't be able to reach a unanimous decision on how to choose a team leader through cooking. The chef from the French school says that they don't have much time, but the judge notes that this is a good idea. There are five hours allotted for this task. He planned to use two hours for training, but now he wants to use it for a competition. The leader of their team will be someone who perfectly cooks a French dish. These are French pancakes. Kadlov says that their leader of their group will be the one who perfectly prepares the French dish crepe, just in case he wants to clarify whether everyone knows what crepe is. The girl says that in most culinary schools, they teach you how to cook crepe. She asks if there are people here who have not graduated from culinary school. Kang Sung Kun stretches out his hand and says that he didn't finish cooking school. The girl asks for forgiveness. She didn't want it to sound like a reproach. Kadlov says that everything is fine, he will explain what this dish is and how to prepare it. 
There are several names for variants of this dish, but the French call it crepes. Crepe is a thin pancake, which is prepared by rolling out the dough and roasting it. To complete the dish, you need to wrap ham and cheese or strawberries with cream in a pancake. Depending on which filling you choose, it will depend on whether the dish is a dessert or a main course. Now he wants to demonstrate, and now he pours the dough into a round frying pan, but you can cook them on any other dish. Put the oven to warm up on a slow fire and prepare the dough by mixing eggs, flour, sugar, and butter, then slowly pour the dough into the pan. After that, gently tilt the pan so that the dough is evenly distributed. When one side is baked, gently turn the pancake over and wait until the other side is ready and you can get the pancake. Here, the crepe is ready. He says that they would use their imagination to complete the dish. The one who makes the best crepe will become the leader of the group. Kang Sung-kun thinks he knew how to cook, but thank you for refreshing your memory, using your imagination. Actually, if Seo Kyun or someone else becomes the team leader, there won't be any problems, however. However, after this task, five people will be disqualified. He should become the team leader because he was able to present the dishes of Chef Kadlov best of all. In Korea, strawberries, whipped cream, banana are most often used for pancakes. They go well together and are a universal combination, but with such a set of products, it is difficult to be original. He needs something memorable, something that stands out from the general background and something comes to mind. He asks the mentor if it is possible to go to the store. The judge was surprised by this statement. At this time in the Korean cooking team, the leader of the Korean cooking group will be Jung Il Woo. He asks if anyone has any objections. One guy asks if they shouldn't choose the team leader after the referee comes back from the bathroom. It was Q Stang Hyun, sous chef of the Yongwaij Hotel, with nine years of experience. In addition, others, including him, would also like to be a team leader. Jung Il Woo frowns and asks if he has ever heard of the Myeongdong Hotel, the hotel that is ranked first among Korean food hotels every year. The hotel where official dinners can be organized, if not the sous chef of this hotel, will become the team leader, then who? His partner comes up and tells them to calm down, because everyone here understands everything, even a one-year-old child would understand. The mentor returns and asks if they have chosen a commander. John Il Wu says that yes, he will be the leader, and she can also rely on him to do nothing. The judge's ears pricked up at his words. At this time, the Italian food preparation team is available. The mentor says that their team leader will be member Go Jung Ta. He replies that he is not sure that he will make a good leader. Many people here are better than him. Besides, many have more experience, but everyone says that they would like him to be their leader. He cheered up and says that Italian cuisine is very popular, but the more popular the place, the worse the quality of the dishes. So they have to give it their all, and if they don't do it, the judges won't be able to appreciate them. In addition, the Hilton Hotel specializes in Italian cuisine, so he would like to share with them information about how they cook in their hotel. He asks them that they do not mind it. Everyone shouts no at once. Kim Myung-shang thinks that Go Jung-ta is a great guy. As soon as he became the leader, he immediately set the direction for the team. Even without Go ji Sung, he will do a great job. The French group is already conducting a tasting of dishes, so far only three. Kadlov starts tasting their crepes. He calls out to member Bang Hyunwoo. When he sees it, he sees something red in it. He tried it and says that he added tomatoes to enhance the surness of the kiwi, but they stand out too much. Next member Jo Seo Kyun, he added egg and tuna salad. He added balsamic sauce, it's too common and looks like a normal snack. Next up is Ju Gyung Hee. He says it's the first time he's seen a pitch like hers and it looks interesting. He tried and this crepe has a combination of butter and syrup that resembles pancakes. In addition, the sweetness is enhanced by egg. He asks what's inside the egg tart. She wrapped the egg tart in crepe. She replies that yes, she is very good at baking, so she did it. Kablov says that this is the best crepe for today. He would make her a team leader, but he has not yet evaluated all the crepes. Next up is Kang Sunghoon. His crepes are small and toothy. He only took one for tasting. He smelled banana, chocolate, syrup, cream despite its size. It contained several additives. He sensed something else in it, which surprised him greatly, and something started exploding in his mouth. Kadlov asks Kang Sung-kun what an exploding egg is. 
but the guy beats him to it and says it's an exploding caramel. Everyone was surprised by his statement about the explosive caramel. Thinking of the unique ingredients that could be added to the dish, he thought of the caramel leg he used to eat when he was a kid. The judge asks what the caramel leg is. They explain to him that it is sold near stationery stores, caramel in the shape of a foot, which is eaten with a special powder that comes with the kit, and when this powder gets on the tongue, it explodes. The mentor says that he understood them, he ate something similar as a child. Kang Sung-hoon says that yes, the effervescent powder is the explosive caramel, because the caramel leg itself is very sour, it is difficult to use it as a filling. In a magazine, he bought another product containing explosive caramel and used it instead of the caramel leg. Kadlov believes that the other product is ice cream. Perrin confirms this. The judge says that thanks to him, the cream has such a delicate texture or it's not ice cream. He thinks he added rice paper to it, doesn't he? The guy says that yes, he soaked the rice paper in water to make it more plastic and then wrapped it around the ice cream so that the ice cream will melt evenly and will not escape prematurely from the dessert. Kadlov says that the leader of their team has been determined. Previously, he wanted Ju Yong Hee to lead our team, but after trying this creep, he changed his mind and Kang Sung Kun becomes the team leader. Kadlov sits tired on the stairs and wipes his sweat with a handkerchief. He notices Kang Sung Kun walking up to him. He's taking a little break, but he's wondering why he's here. He pretended that they were strangers, so he came to say hello. Kadlov asks how many years have passed, eight years. The guy says yes about that. The judge says it was great, one bite creeps are a pretty original idea. He didn't think that he would use ice cream and explosive caramel, it was risky, but he did it. The guy refuses and says that he was just lucky. Kadlov says that there were certainly some lucky participants who didn't want him to lead the team, but when they tried his crepes, they immediately recognized him. In addition, he specially prepared so much for everyone to try. Kang sung -hoon says that you never know, he cooked more since they were so small. The mentor says that he surprised him as a judge, and this applies not only to crepes, he believed that he was a good cook, but judging by the report cards, he realized that he always takes the first place. The judge says that he should not be too conceited, because you need to cook with the soul, don't you? However, when you get conceited, then the taste of cooked dishes changes. Kang sung Hoon replies that cooking should always be taken seriously and not let other emotions affect it, his father told him so. Kadlov says that what he is now is due to Master Kang, so he says the same words as him and gets up from the stairs. Kadlov says that once his father showed him how to serve dishes in his restaurant, and he asks him if he remembers it. Kang sung Hoon says that as far as he can remember, it must be music. Kadlov says that's right. This time he wants him to stick to the same concept, of course, he will let him choose the right direction, but before he starts cooking, he would like to introduce someone to him, they are connected to each other. The guy doesn't understand how they are connected. Everyone gathered together. Kim Myung-shang says that now they will start judging their dishes, he will briefly talk about what criteria they will use to judge them. The dishes will be served to all the judges, except for the team mentor, then they will make a small presentation, the judges will taste their dishes and evaluate them. The final score will consist of the judges' average score. The team with the lowest score will be eliminated from the competition, and the team leaders should keep this in mind. Now they will announce the order of presentation of dishes, it will be determined by drawing lots among the judges. He asks to draw the judges on a stick. The first will be the French cuisine group, the second will be the Italian cuisine group, and the third will be the Korean cuisine group. In this case, the French cuisine team will be the first to present their dishes and the guy has the soldier says, yes the chef. They call him over. He is asked to go to the waiting room. He needs to touch up his makeup as the main camera picks up any flaws. The guy approaches the mentor and says that he will be back soon. The judge says that it is good. He will prepare everything that they discussed earlier. The scriptwriter asks if the layout is often corrected during the broadcast. The head says that it happens, but not often. He says that time is golden, so he tried to continue shooting, but the head of the makeup team and the main coordinator of the project said that he needed to touch up his makeup. The screenwriter says it's Su Hyun and Chi Min. She was suddenly angry. She says that she will come back after they powdered his nose. 
Go Jungta calls her over and gives her something. Kang Sung Kum is being groomed. The girl asks how he feels, and she also asks that he does not think that his skin tone has become lighter. He didn't really notice. The girl says that after watching the program, she found out that he works so hard for the good of the family. She thinks his mom is proud of him. He says, in fact, he never asked what family members thought about his involvement. He asks when he can pick up his uniform. The second girl says that this is the uniform worn by the team leader, it should smooth out all the wrinkles. The guy says she shouldn't do this, but still says thank you. He says it's the first time he's seen them, and he wonders if they've recently settled in. They were immediately confused and took note of these very attractive girls. Someone says they've met before. This is the screenwriter Sung Mina. The girl who applied makeup was the head of the makeup team. Jo Soo Hyun, who wore glasses, tied her hair in a ponytail and looked perpetually tired. And the one who ironed the clothes is the main coordinator of the project Kim Chi Min. She is one of those who are indifferent to themselves and their appearance and wears a cap. Both of them are even more embarrassed, and the other asks not to talk nonsense. The guy immediately recognized them after the screenwriter's explanation. She says that she was curious about what made these young ladies, who came to the wedding of a colleague without makeup, suddenly put on lenses and makeup. It's strange. She frowned even harder and looked even more scary, telling them to hurry up and finish powdering Kang Sung Hoon's nose. They immediately run up and throw him his uniform and tell him that everything is ready. One says that they will go, and the other that if Ming has already started making guesses, he should have just said so. The screenwriter was confused and said that what are the guesses? The guy says that if the scriptwriter came in person, then he probably delays the shooting a lot. She looked away and said, well, probably. Hearing this, the boy immediately got up and left, saying that he would be right back, but Sun Minna asks him to wait and hands him a chocolate milk. She says it's not from her. The guy asks who it's from then. She tells him that it's from Go Jung Ta. He clutched the box in anger. Sun Minna says that he saw her depressed and asked her to pass it on to him. She doesn't know why it's chocolate milk, but maybe it's an apology for the incident with the former judge. She believes that the details will need to be found out from his student. The guy fell into thoughts and the screenwriter brought him out of them saying that he needed time to sort out his feelings, she would wait outside the door. He calls out to her, saying it's not necessary, he's fine. She's not sure, and she says it's all written on his face. He wondered why it was chocolate milk, just as an excuse. Why did he pass only the milk without saying anything? His thoughts led him to flashbacks from the army. He's sitting with Go Jung Ta and discussing something. Kang Sung Hoon says that Go Jung Ta never drank chocolate milk for lunch. He replies that no, even in the beginning he drank only regular milk, but he says that what is the purpose of replacing regular milk with chocolate in the army? This has some hidden meaning. The guy replies that no, it's just symbolic, as long as the milk is not white, it doesn't matter. Of course, he understands that while they are in the army, they must eat according to the same menu, because how can cooks in the army such as they can prepare a dish for each of them with so many hungry heads? However, the situation with milk is different. In elementary school, they had no choice, but now, as an adult, he wants to have a choice. After all, providing white milk is more of an established tradition, so he would like to be able to choose the drink. If this is done, then the amount of milk thrown away will be reduced in addition, there will be more people who are satisfied with army food. From this, his friend laughed and grabbed his friend in the grip, saying that cooks like us can't do anything about it. Kang Sun Kun asks him to let go, saying that he is in pain and also saying that if he wins the competition, he will talk about his idea in a victory speech. Go Jun Tai asks him if he's too confident if he's thinking of winning it. Then he enjoyed these moments. He can't say that he enjoyed his army days, but he had fun during the eight weeks of training. It was nice to be in the company of this guy, even when it wasn't about cooking, despite the fact that it wasn't him who won, but his friend, and he entered the top military chefs, this competition was held in special military conditions. And now that they have retired from the military and met in other competitions as worthy chefs, they can compete with each other without any restrictions. He sees a scene in which they are standing on the shore with a sunset in the background. Go Jung Tai reaches out his hand to his friend, but the other man swats his hand away. 
A statue of his teacher appears in front of Go Jun Tai, telling him to take first place, and it falls apart, and he has chocolate milk in his hand. I'll have one chocolate milk, please. Sure. That'll be 1,651. That's what Kang Sung Hoon felt. Go Jun Ta stands in thought. Someone called out to him. The woman asks if he's okay, and he looks upset. He says it's all right, nothing serious. He tells her not to worry, he's not worried about the dishes. Someone put a hand on Go Jun Tang's shoulder. It was Kang Sung Hoon, and he was thanking him for the milk. He approaches his mentor and tells him to finish what they agreed on. He asks if the mentor is ready and Katlov says that of course they can start at any time. The guy turns to his team and tells them to show them what they have prepared. Kang Sun Kun apologizes for waiting and asks them to go to the table set up at the entrance to the lobby. They will present their dishes there. The old lady says that why they need to go there, when it was possible to organize here, it annoys her. The second judge says they might have cooked something else. Kadlov tells the head of the film crew to prepare the scene. The tellers put up chairs. The doors open. You can see something behind the door. The judges didn't know that there was anything there at all. An orchestra appears there. Everyone froze at what they saw, as did Go Jung Tai. Conductor Kim Jong Sup says it's the Suwon Chamber Orchestra. He has known Kadlov for more than 15 years, so he came here to create a musical accompaniment for the presentation of French cuisine. Kim Myung-chung at the presentation can be accompanied by an orchestra. But this is possible because when the director gave the task, he mentioned that outside help can be resorted to if it has nothing to do with cooking. Despite the fact that the team has not yet presented the dishes and they already think that they have already tried them, the old lady asks what they will play. Kaplov says that the choice is up to the leaders of their team. The guy says that he relies on Kim jong up. The conductor begins. This is an excerpt from The Sweet Carnival of Animals by Camille saint Dance. A glass is brought to the judges, ice cubes are placed in it, a drink is poured, and food is decorated. The man says that it is a cocktail using the popular French wine Lille Blanc, and the old lady says that it is so beautiful that it is even a pity to drink. Kablov recommends them to enjoy a drink until the end of the third part of The Sweet Donkey. The man tries it and says it's excellent. Kang sung Kun comes up to them and tells them that they will take turns presenting their dishes now. He asks them to enjoy their food along with the music. They are presented with dishes, a lot of them. At one point, they even got to France and they bring the last dish, which turns out to be crepe. They are asked to eat it in one bite. They eat it and in their imagination in France went fireworks. The conductor comes to the climax and finishes. The judges stood up and started clapping for him. He bows back to them. He says that at this point he deviates and let them enjoy their meal. The doors are closing. The musical accompaniment was perfectly finished the moment they finished the dessert. The crepes served at the end was excellent. This is the first time they are trying something with such an exploding texture. Small Pops even created the illusion of fireworks. Kim Myung-chung says it's a great job anyway, and he can't believe he could pull this off in five hours. Kadlov says that this is all due to the team leader. The man says it was incredible, and now they can rest while they give their grades. And now the Italian cuisine team can start their preparations. Go Junta thinks that he doesn't really know if they can beat Sung Hoon's team, no matter what happens, he should do his best. Kadlov approaches Kang Sung Hoon and says that great job, now he can rest, while he says goodbye to conductor Kim Jong Sup. Kadlov approaches the conductor. He thanks him for today. The conductor says that they don't know each other, so he gladly responded to his call. However, he was very surprised. It's about Sung Hoon, and he chooses music just like Master Kang. When he touched the case, he was overcome with nostalgia, and he also chose a song that they had rehearsed not so long ago. Thanks to this, they were able to play cleanly. Kadlov says it's amazing because he follows the same rituals as his father. The conductor says he doesn't think it's just a ritual. In any case, this weekend is the anniversary of the master's death. He asks if he will come to pay his respects. Kablov says that of course, this is one of the reasons why he came to South Korea. He's the reason they're here. Kablov returns to his seat and Son Yoon Jung asks where he was. He replies that he went to say goodbye to the orchestra's conductor. 
Kadlov says he thinks they can continue the competition now. This is his first meal, so he's a little hungry. The Italian cuisine team, if they are ready, can start. They start eating and at the end they are given an espresso and after tasting it, Kadlov says that it was excellent from start to finish, but he thinks that they tried very hard to bring the dishes to the classic standards of Italian cuisine, in other words, little color. However, this is his personal opinion, he and his team did an amazing job. He turns to the second judge and asks her what she thinks. For some reason, she drooped and Kadlov had to call out to her even louder so that she could hear him. She said they did a good job. They can take a break while they make their grades. Kim Myeonchang says they're really great. Kadlov asks the Korean cuisine team to prepare. Judge Son Yoon Jung thinks that even though she was in control of the cooking process, contestant Jung Il Woo was confident in his actions, so she couldn't object to him. However, when the Italian food team finished cooking, he didn't hear anything from his team, so she should check them out. She's terrified of what she's seen. She asks why they're still in the kitchen. They look disappointed. She asks what's going on with the dishes. 30 minutes ago in the Italian food group, Jung Il Woo yells at everyone to hurry up, they have to serve the dish presentable and hot. He turns around and asks if the tarachic porridge is ready yet. They tell him that they do and they hand him plates and he tries them and yells that why does it taste so rich? Cockroaches are not seasoned like regular porridges and porridge additives are served separately. Depending on the preference, he asks if the cook knew this. Powell says that this is the first time he has cooked this dish. Jung Il Wu comes closer and asks if this gives him the right to ruin the dish. He turns around and asks what the others are doing and why they're all so slow. The party from our hotel has already finished everything for a long time. All you need to do is to preserve it beautifully. Why are they taking so long to do this? One of the chefs takes off his hat, turns around and asks, What's wrong with you, Jung Il Wu? All he could manage was a what? The chef continues that regardless of the fact that Myeongdong Hotel is ranked first among Korean food establishments, why is that so cruel to them? Jung Il Woo asks what the if asterisk asterisk he's talking about, says his mind's gone blank. The chef says that if he didn't look at the dishes, let him pay attention to the team, they could have made the cockroach porridge properly if he let Judge Som Yoon Jung show them how to do it, but he was so confident that he didn't let them interfere with the process. He just stands there silently with a frown on his face. The chef did not stop there and says that he also distributed the dishes among the participants without paying attention to their experience and pretends that he cares about what the team has prepared because he is almost finished with the main dish that he is so sure of. He tells him that's asterisk ka, let him just do what the team leader tells him how many years he has been cooking. The chef replies that it's nine, but he's not the chef of the Myeongdong Hotel, so he doesn't have the right to talk to him like that. Jung Il Woo exhaled and told him to disappear and that he couldn't cook anymore. The cook replies that it's great, he was thinking of leaving this madhouse anyway. The commander's partner says this is too much. Back to reality. The mentor asks the commander what's going on with the dishes. The commander replies that they didn't think they would make a few mistakes, the dessert still needs to be improved. The mentor says that this is hardly the whole reason and why she does not see one cook. The assistant commander says that he went to the bathroom and hasn't returned yet, she doesn't need to worry so much, he asks for another 30 minutes and they will finish everything. The mentor says that they would finish and go out, she just will not leave it. The assistant says that he bought some time and what they will do now. The commander asks what he means by what are we going to do, he suggests that we finish everything together without a team and the rest should carry their dishes to check. Son Yoon Jung looks downcast as the judges ask her that the team isn't ready yet. Kadlov is looking forward to Korean food, he hasn't eaten decent Korean food in a long time. The mentor says that they are not ready yet and is even more tense. The team still exits. Kim Myeongchang says that the preparations have been completed after all. The commander says they're starting as an apparative porridge tarakshak. They can add salt or sugar to it as they see fit. Kim Myeongchang sees the dish and thinks that the color is strange, it seems too watery. Kadlov immediately tastes the porridge, saying that he can finally taste the porridge so he will not add anything. After tasting it, Kim Myeongchang says that as he thought, 
it's too watery and doesn't have a deep, rich taste. Cadlove suggests trying the following dish. In the crowd, they say that if this was the first course, then what can be the next? They present the next dish, Tanhobak pub, pumpkin, and inside it rice, dates and nuts. The commander tells the judges to open the lid and enjoy the dish. As soon as they opened the lid, they immediately frowned. Kim Myung Seok picks up the rice with a spoon and says it's rice porridge or rice for the main course. They should have made sure the dish is ready before submitting it for evaluation. How can they evaluate it if they don't know such basic things? Kadlov says that unfortunately, and with this dish everything is bad, it would be better if they presented it as a main course. The commander suggests that they try the main course, they were responsible for it. Representatives of the Myeongdong Hotel, so it should be normal. Well, what did he say? And Kadlov immediately laughed, he asks if Kim Myeongchong heard it. He also heard this and says that in the task where you had to cook as a whole team, they only took care of themselves. Kadlov says that there is no need to introduce the next dish. Kim Myeongchong agrees with him and says that he probably can already make grades and both simultaneously say that the Korean cuisine team gets zero points. They are the weak link. The Korean cuisine team gets zero points. They are the weak link. The commander asks that they are joking. The judges then ask if they will joke about it. The commander wanted to object to something, but their mentor interrupted him and says that she warned them that she would not leave them alone. She started shouting. She asks what is this attitude to cooking? This is what they call a completed dish. So confident that he didn't even notice when the team member left, he shamed her. Kadlov stopped her by clinging to the fact that there is no one member of the team. They really became one less, where is another one? Song Yoon Jung replies that he had a fight with the team leader and informed the producers that he was leaving the project. Kadlov says that even though they said they were the weak link, only five people were supposed to leave the project initially, right? The second judge answers that it is true, even if one left of his own free will, you need to choose four more. The assistant commander asks what he will do. He answers that four people will leave the show. They should not be among them. He thinks that if the judges had looked at the dishes that were never served, they would have had a chance. He calls the judges and approaches them. He says that even if they gave their team zero points, wouldn't it be better to try the dishes again to choose those who will go to the dropout? Kablov asks what then, if they should try a dish that was never presented. But someone said it wasn't necessary, this is their mentor. She says it's no good giving them a chance, as they said earlier, they're the weak link. She asks that they thought she was just watching from the back, she was watching all their preparations, the team leader was completely oblivious to the other team members and only cared about the contestant from their hotel, the other contestants had no desire to cook, she asked around and found out something. She asked if it bothered the other members that the group leader decided everything for everyone, you know what they said to her. Well, he's the chef of a hotel famous for its Korean cuisine, and he knows what to do. That's what she was told. At what all, without exception, she called the producer with a question she can get rid of not five, but all of them. To resolve this issue, the screenwriter would need to think about it for a while. Moreover, Judge Song Yu Jung is known for her stubbornness, and when she gets angry, she won't go back on her decision at all. Even if they are a candidate for elimination, they could shoot an episode dedicated to the elimination mission in this case, but the screenwriter pulls him out of his thoughts. She says he doesn't have to worry about the number of dropouts, they can shoot a special episode about the remaining hotels after completing the team task. The producer asks if they planned it without him, but she says that she came up with a few topics in a hurry when she was writing the main script. The producer gave permission. After realizing this, the mentor turns to her team and says that they are leaving this project. Out of anger, the commander cursed and threw the hat with all the dope on the floor. The judges abruptly got up from the table and began to say that it was necessary to announce the results. The scriptwriter passed the scores to Kadlov. The third place is already clear to whom it belongs, so it immediately went straight to the winner, and the first place is taken by the French cuisine group with 9.5 points, and the second place goes to Italian cuisine with 8.5 points. The commander of the Italian cuisine turns to his team and apologizes to them, but they say that they don't need to apologize, they are already happy that they were eliminated. He thanks them. On this note, this task ends. 
Sun Kun was about to leave when the girl called out to him. This is Ju Young Ki. She thanks him for the first place. Another chef asks why he works in such a hotel with such skills. The reason is that this is the only hotel that accepted his application and he applied to this chef's hotel as well. Chu Yunki says that if there are any more team tasks, then she will rely on him and she left. Nearby, there is a skirmish between the commanders of Italian and Korean cuisines. Jung Il Woo asks Go Jung Ta that it's him again. He also asks him if he has something to say to him. Jung Il Woo says what he means is, can he swear at the teammates who cheated on me? Go Jung Ta says that he is referring to those he has humiliated and whether he wants to apologize. He's getting angry again. He grabs his uniform and tells him why he should apologize to the trash that caused him to lose. He tells him that the team was eliminated because of him and he shouldn't blame anyone, but whether he has something to say to Sun Hoon, who annoyed him the most. Jun Il Wu asks if he should say anything at all. Go Jun Ta says that he heard something from Sun Hoon that he left the Myung Don Hotel because they bullied him, and today it seems that the reason was revealed. The junior employee was more talented than him, so they belittled him in every possible way, so he should apologize at least for being jealous of his talent. He started to curse at him, and he was about to swing, but a hand was placed on his shoulder, and he was distracted, and Kang Sung Hoon's fist flew into his face. He fell to the floor. Go Jung Ta was very surprised by this, he just froze. Jung Il Woo yells at him about what he's doing. The guy replies that he tried to hit the man, but he didn't let him problems. When he gets up, he asks that the fact that he hit the person thinks it's not a problem. Kang Sung Hoon says that what he means is that he swung his fist in his direction, it's not worth misinterpreting the words. The person who gets up says that he will regret it. He won't let him work in the food service. Go Jung Tai asks how he wants to not give it to him. He says that they will understand everything when the time comes and said goodbye to them. The guy says that he wants to work in the industry for a while, telling the boss of the Myung Dong Hotel Bang Son Yun about it. As the president of the Association of Five Star Hotels, he holds a high position. In addition, he can influence other five star hotels. The abuser turns around and says that in this case, he understands what consequences this will lead to. Kang Sung Hoon says that he feels like nothing will happen to him. From the point of view of the Five Star Hotel Association, Losing to a four-star hotel chef like him is unacceptable. Moreover, it is the head of the association who is involved in the leak of information about the participants, so it can't do that. The problem of leaking information couldn't help but get into the media. He asks him if it will be okay if he tells him. They walk down the hallway and Go Jung Tai thanks him for what happened and he would like to apologize for being one of the people who was leaked the information. The guy says it's fine, he thinks it was because of Goji Sung. He's also impressed that he doesn't want to get an apology from Myung Dong Hotel, so that he should stop feeling sad and cheer up. The scriptwriter is walking down the hall and Kang Sung Hoon called out to her, which scared her. He'd like to talk to her. Sun Mina agrees to talk and doesn't understand what he wants to say in person. She had already thought of something indecent, but he just wanted to ask if he could go to Cheonan for the weekend, which is quite far away, so he decided to ask permission in advance. She replies that it probably won't be a problem. He is happy with this news. Sun Mina asks him that maybe he has another reason, because it might not have been asked in person. He texted and called her, but she didn't answer. She says she's sorry, she must have put her phone on silent while filming. She asks him why he wants to go to Cheonan. Cheonan Memorial Park, Kang Dong Seok's tombstone. Kang Dong Seok's tombstone. Before him are his daughter and son, and their mother. Someone asks from behind that they're late. This is Chief Kadlov and the conductor. My mother greeted the conductor. Sung Hoon asks how he knows him. Mom asks him what he doesn't remember. These two were freeloaders at his dad's restaurant. Sung Hoon had heard that Chief Kadlov was his father's student, but he thought they had met in France but they had known each other before. That's why they've known each other for so long. Kadlov says that 20 years have passed since then. His relationship with the master began 20 years ago. Don restaurant Kang Dong Siok is standing in front of it. A foreigner who looks like Kadlov is lying on the floor nearby. His father will be there and says that he should not sleep in this weather. 
When Katlov awoke, he recognized Master Khan. He stands up and asks to be accepted as a disciple. Kang Dong Suk says that what other Master Kang is, he doesn't know him. Katlov says he saw him on the ship three years ago. He then introduced himself as the hotel's chef. He called him Master Kang Cole. The master says that he long ago gave up the stage name he used while working as a hotel chef, and now he's just Kang Dong Suk. He tells him to go home, he's not going to teach anyone. Kantlov says that the food he ate there was great, he came all the way from France because of these dishes. He asks to be accepted as a student, the master tells him to go back and goes to the restaurant, but Kadlov has nowhere to go. He's sitting on a cardboard box in the street, it started to rain. The girl covered him with an umbrella, this is Sung Hoon's mother, Ji Kyung Suk. She says it won't take long to catch a cold in this weather. She asks him if he has some business with the restaurant owner. He says that he was too mannered, he practiced cooking in France, but did not make any progress, there was a feeling that he was marking time. Then he got a call from Korea, informed about the competition of chefs from hotels, in fact, the competition itself was not interested in him, he just went on a trip. Later, he saw Master Kang's dishes and made crepe. It was a common crepe found on the streets of France, so he ate it without expecting anything from the dish. The crepe turned out to be very tasty, even evoked memories from his childhood. He could not imagine that he could taste such a delicious crepe in Korea and not in his hometown. And then he decided that he would come to South Korea and become the disciple of the person who made this dish. He can't go back until he becomes a disciple. The girl listened to him and said that he would continue to insist on his own since her husband is too soft. Kablov may not know what a spouse means. The girl went into a cafe. The master comes out of the cafe saying how tired he is. It rained all night. He looks around for that foreigner. Kablov is still there, but now with an umbrella. Behind him, his wife asks what he thinks. She told him that he would sit until morning. Little Sung Hoon says his uncle is a foreigner. Kablov has woken up and again asks to be taken as a student. He was told to start by cleaning the restaurant. Clean up while he takes his son to school, and then they'll start cooking. My mother says that's why Kablov became his father's student while working at the restaurant. Now, Sungun wonders what about the conductor. Kablov says that after he became a student, the conductor came to work in a restaurant. The conductor says that he used to be a regular at Master Kang's restaurant, and when he couldn't find a job, he took it on. Mom says they didn't have many customers, but thanks to them, they had fewer guests than staff. Even though she says so, back then, they'd often quarreled with her husband over the restaurant. They had two kids, and the restaurant didn't make much money, so she took Sung Hoon. Maybe that's why he doesn't remember those two. She says that she is guilty before him, but her son reassures her that everything is fine. The conductor says that they would like to pay tribute to Master Kang even though they are late. In that case they leave and these two stay. Both paid their respects to the master. After a while, they started talking about all sorts of things. Sung Hoon thanks Kadlov for his help in the team task and plans to stay as a judge for a while longer. Kadlov says he's going back to France soon, but the contest isn't over yet. He can't quit his job and they just closed the gap. He came to Korea because of his master's anniversary and he wasn't going to stay here for long. Kadlov asks if he remembers what he said when he gave him the business card and if his suggestion is still relevant. He invites him to become his disciple. Of course not for free, he will work in his restaurant. They'll treat him better there and he'll probably have more time for his personal life. He thanks him for the offer but he refuses. If he followed him, he wouldn't be able to take care of his mother. Accepting this, Kadlov remembers something and gives him a notebook. Master Kang entrusted it to him while he was still alive. He said that he would give it to Sung Hoon. He doesn't really understand the meaning of these books. But as the master said, he will understand everything by himself. They say goodbye. After the book, he gave him another envelope of money. It was the conductor's suggestion to give them away. After his death, the only way to repay him is through his family and help with his mother's medical treatment. He asked me not to tell my mother on any account. Sung Hoon returned to the Jewelria Hotel. Kang Sung Hoon is back in Jaria and everyone is happy to see him. Along with him came screenwriter Song Mina. They came to watch Sung Hoon's work. 
They will shoot and all the footage will then go on the air, so if he came back for a while. None of the chefs knew that there was going to be a shoot. The captain didn't specifically mention it. He was afraid they would be nervous, so he deliberately kept quiet. The scriptwriter reassures them that they should worry about it. After saying that, Sun Hoon was immediately told to start sorting and cleaning the vegetables. They filmed him cleaning and cleaning the kitchen. The screenwriter even forgot for a moment that Sun Hoon was the youngest in the kitchen. After wiping the sweat off his face, Sun Hoon says that morning's work is done. The captain calls a 30-minute break. The captain wants to talk to Sun Hoon without a camera. Sun Hoon tells the crew to rest while he walks with the captain. The captain takes Sun Hoon to the headmaster's office, just as he wants to meet Sun Hoon. Sun Hoon asks the captain where his partner is. The captain says he's gone. Sun Hoon thinks that his partner left because of resentment that he dropped out, but in real life, he was fired by the director because of his behavior on camera. At this time, the scriptwriter is sitting with the cameraman. She asks if he's tired. They've been shooting since dawn, but he's fine. He'll be happy if they shoot until late at night. Sun Mina suggests interviewing Sun Hoon after work. The cameraman asks that the idea to visit a restaurant and do a behind-the-scenes shoot is her idea and it is true. He says that this idea is similar to the one written on his lap and he is so enthusiastic. Even if it was assigned to an assistant screenwriter, she would still go on her own. She asks me why. He was about to say something, but the cooks stopped him. They were worried that they might interrupt an important conversation and leave, but they were told that no, it was fine. They wanted to know if Sun Hoon had told them anything about them. She asked why they were asking. They said they wanted to know if he was being inconvenienced by them. The screenwriter says that's why they wanted to gossip and get information out of her. They immediately replied that they weren't that ugly. They wanted to ask if their hotel had become a stumbling block for Sun Hoon. She said that Sun Hoon had once gone to argue with the judges when they started talking about his hotel. They were happy about it and left. The screenwriter on the road told them that they had nothing to worry about. The cameraman wanted to continue, but Sun Mina said that they should not say another word, otherwise she would replace the cameraman and close the book. She wondered what Sun Hoon was doing right now. And he's at the director's now, and he says he's done a good job. The director says he did a great job. Sun Hoon doesn't know what he's talking about. The director already let out a tear. He said for five minutes what a good fellow he was, that he took care of his mother, took his father's burden when he died. And then he gives him the envelope, saying that it's a bonus and let him open it when he gets home, so as not to be disappointed with the amount. He left the office, leaving Chief Du there. There are a lot of bank accounts in the envelope, which is much more than his salary. If you add this and what Katlov gave, you can pay off some of the hospital bills. He's going to the hospital today. Someone is calling him. It turns out to be a screenwriter. He immediately put the envelope behind his back and Mina noticed. She asks him if he's done with the chores and he says yes. Sun Mina wanted to know what they were talking about and he said it was nothing important. She knows he's lying. He asks that she went looking for him because of the filming and she says that is one of the reasons. What she really wanted to do was meet him in person. If she continued like this, she might be left out. She asks if he's busy tonight. He says he can't because of going to the hospital. She took it as if he turned her down. After work, Sun Hoon asks if they're tired, and Sun Mina says no, they did a great job. He is invited to drink, but this time he refuses because of going to the hospital, calling it chores. Sun Mina realizes that he hasn't turned her down after all. Already in the hospital, after giving all the money that was given to him, he could only pay 5 million and there was still 15 million left. After leaving the hospital, he remembered some menu but immediately stopped, thinking that how can you think about love in such a situation, the relationship will only make everything easier.